Today we are going to follow the story of a young man who was neglected by his family and forced to marry the most beautiful girl in town. As much as this is not a bad reward, he ended up going through a lot of humiliation thanks to this. What they did not expect, however, is that he would become one of the most powerful men in the near future. This is part one of this new story, and I hope that if you like my work, I will at least have your like guaranteed. The story begins with our protagonist, Han Sankian receiving a good slap from his beloved wife, who said that it was already enough. To better understand why all this happened, we need to go back three hours into MC's past. We see that the protagonist was being called back to his royal family, but he was telling the butler of the Han family that from the looks of it, even the famous family he had come from was afraid that no one would succeed in their lineage. The reason for MC's rebellion is because three years ago, his grandmother was afraid that he would threaten his brother's place as heir. So she took him out of the family, forcing him into the Zuo Su family. Thanks to them, he has suffered all kinds of cynicism for the past three years, and asked the butler if he simply wanted him to accept a simple apology to return to the family. However, he told the servant to get out of there immediately, and it would do no good if he begged him to come back. Furthermore, the young protagonist told the butler to send a message to his parents, that he, Han Sankian, only wanted to be a coward in peace, and he also wished that no one from his old family would come to bother him. Han Sankian was the son-in-law of the famous Su family in Yuncheng, and the husband of Su Yingxia, the number one woman in Yuncheng. Even though the Su family is second-rate, they are still relatively well-known in the building materials industry in that city. Besides, three years ago when he joined the Zuo Su family, he was a horrible person, and naturally he became part of their family after meeting them at the dinners. The comments people made was that it was a shame that the most beautiful girl in the Su family, and also the most beautiful girl in town, has a burden as a husband. In addition, two months after the wedding, the elder of the Su family, who planned their wedding, passed away from an illness. And since then, why he was chosen as his son-in-law still remains a mystery. When the young protagonist finally arrives at the meeting place. To meet his wife, we see that the rumors that had been going around were actually true. She is indeed very beautiful. Apparently they were going to a celebration party, probably for her grandmother's birthday, and she told them to go to the party right away. But she told him to be careful what he said, because even if her relatives acted sarcastically and ridiculed her, she could still handle it. As soon as she arrived at the salon, some people started to comment that she should have paid more attention not to be late, since it was her grandmother's birthday. Before long people started commenting about her husband, wondering why he didn't have a job yet, since he looked good. But as always, there are some people who end up commenting on unnecessary things, but one of them in particular was that the protagonist was the one doing the housework in his house. Since every man will has to have a cattle manure to slow people down, this man was showed up early apparently, and asked if what MC had in his bag was a present for his grandmother. Humbly, the young man answers yes, and it had been specially picked out from the gift store. But soon the human scum started mocking the protagonist, saying that it was his grandmother's 80th birthday, and asked if he would really give it to her as a present. And it didn't take long for the being that I won't mention the name, to brag that he was giving a much better present to his grandmother. Soon he pulled out an aged pure, saying that it was worth a total of 880,000 yuan, and a pure from what I quickly looked up as a Chinese aged tea or something. Upon hearing the value of it, people started to be impressed, as usual. But soon MC's wife said that it was enough, and there was no need for him to be showing off so much. But the guy from before simply ignored everything MC's wife had said, saying that he was not obligated to be humble in front of a being who was not even usable in society. In addition, she also said that she just didn't think he valued his grandmother's birthday. And she also told the pretty lady that he was just an ignoramus. This left the protagonist with an enormous anger towards the young scum. However, when the non-usable being actually asked if her sense of pride was gone from staying with MC for so long, he quickly decided to act and defend his wife. According to Sankian, the fly's pure was not right. Trying to disguise it, he took the pure away from the protagonist and said that it was a gift from his grandmother, so he wasn't allowed to touch it. Afterwards, Sankian said he remembered that a friend of his once told him that pure were divided into three categories and five types, and the older they were, the more expensive they were. Also, some vendors would just dry the tea and try to make it look old, thus increasing the price of the pure. And you could see that the gift from the tapado from before was already starting to crumble, and this in itself already proved that it was fake. To identify between cooked and raw pure, the tea cake in his hands was more green and darker green, so it meant that it was raw, I. 
E. Fake. This left the scum of society completely speechless, and people started to let out some comments about him this time. The protagonist further adds that, recently brewed tea contains caffeine irritate the stomach. And as tea gets older, its caffeine would naturally decrease as well. But the insect tea cake from before, because it made to look old, had not yet been aged enough, so it would be harmful to the body. Therefore, he would endanger his grandmother's health with a poor quality product, and asked his true intention with this. The previous comments made the fly apprentice angry, and he said that his grandmother stopped drinking tea two years ago, so he had no reason to want to harm her. But MC used this as an opening to create a new misunderstanding, causing this time all the people in the hall to comment on the young slag's despicable attitude. Before things could get any worse for him, he started making a show of saying that Sankian had made the whole thing up, accusing him of even knowing anything about tea. This comment made people really doubt what he had said recently, and we see the divine lady pulling him to say something. She asked him if he really knew something, and he wasn't supposed to cause any trouble. But he told her not to worry, since his friend would not lie to him. Shortly afterwards, the family's grandmother arrives, asking what all the fuss in the hall is about. Sankian's wife then explains the reason, saying that the stale pure cake that the insect had brought to her grandmother was actually from a mass production, according to the protagonist. But since the wrong one in the story refused to assume that it was real, she asked her grandmother to evaluate whether the pure was really real or fake. After that, the lady asked to see her grandson's gift, and as soon as she opened her grandson's gift, she said that the pure was real. But from the scum's face before, you could already tell that his grandmother actually only took his side because he was her grandson, and knew that it was counterfeit. But still, the grandmother asked why Sankian had defamed the insect, saying that it really was an age pure. This left both the scum and the protagonist surprised, and the comments got much worse this time, when Sankian gently asked his grandmother to take a closer look since it was really fake. That's when he got the slap from the beginning of the recap, and his wife saying next that that was enough, and he didn't need to say anything more. And she told her husband to go right away and apologize to the lab rat. When he noticed the stares and comments that people were making about him and his wife, he put his pride as a man aside. And even though he was completely right, and the being that doesn't even deserve to be called an animal was wrong, he still bowed his head and apologized for his attitude recently. The scum then asked if he now understood the situation he was in, since even if his grandmother knew the tea was fake, she would still side with him because he was her grandson. He, on the other hand, was just a burden to the Sioux family. His wife ended up saying that she owed him a slap, so he could hit her back at any time. But he said he knew she just wanted to avoid an even worse situation, and he thanked her for allowing him to come back to reality. This almost made her slap him again, but she held on too tightly not to do it again. As far as I read the manhwa, she is actually a good person, and later on you will see that this is true. The protagonist then asked her if she would like him to change, and said that only she in that world would be able to make him change. I don't know if she said this just because she was in front of everyone, but she said that for him to change, he would have to have capital, and in the Sioux family, unnecessary people would never be the head of the family. This caused Sankian to keep quiet, but in his thoughts he said that the Sioux family was not worth that much for them to talk about capital. Therefore, he would show them what real capital was. Finally they began to prepare for the banquet itself, and a person suddenly entered saying that someone had gone to give a gift to the grandmother. When the old woman asked who exactly this person was, the butler of the Han family appeared. He said that the Han family would like to send a congratulatory gift to the old woman, and began to tell her the list of gifts they had brought. As the butler spoke, the protagonist noticed the comments that people were making, and apparently everyone there greatly admired the renowned Han family, which was the protagonist's original family. The pretty lady eventually let out a comment, wondering if he might be a member of the Han family, since his name was the same. But he soon put that possibility aside. However, he told himself that it had been three years since he had joined the Sioux family, and now he was doing things in the hope of impressing them. But things were already going too far. To finish the list of gifts, the butler said that in that amount of money was an amount of 8.88 million yuan. The old woman, seeing the huge amount of money, asked if all that was payment to marry one of the family's daughters, and also asked which son of the Han family the butler was representing, and if this was really a bride price from the Sioux family. Bride price is when you pay a woman's family because you are marrying her, or something like that. 
However, the butler just says that since they were late, they were only responsible for delivering the gifts and nothing else. Therefore, they wished her blessings from above so that she could live a good life. Some people ended up commenting that now all that remained was to know who that amount of money was for, and also who was the girl who had been blessed to become the new bride. However, a poison rattlesnake then appears, saying that she would be the best suitor, and this treacherous anaconda was none other than the cousin of the protagonist's wife. The girls in the salon ended up being disgusted by this rattlesnake, and the scum from before said that all the girls would have a chance, except for the person who was decorated as the number one beauty in town. In addition, the bug still offended the protagonist, and now she could only look at the others by marrying successful and important people. Unfortunately, she ended up putting up with these comments from the dirty cattle without saying anything, and her cousin complimented them with some comments as well, thanking her for marrying early and leaving the place to her. But when the cattle dung was about to deeply offend our protagonist, the beautiful lady took an attitude that surprised me, and MC as well, thus not allowing them to continue with those nasty remarks about her husband. The grandmother then ordered everyone to be quiet, and that she would personally take care of it, and only when she had determined who all that money was for would she give it to the girl. And the protagonist realized that the grandmother interrupted his wife without giving a damn, perhaps only because she was defending him. This old woman is no flower, either. No wonder she is the leader of the family of toxic people. At that point we get a view of the young beautiful lady's house, and there her mother was saying that she was too blind in the past for letting her daughter marry MC. But she referred to him as an unusable being. Her husband even tried to calm his wife down as well, but to no avail. And she said that if he continued to offend the old woman, they would get nothing from their inheritance. Furthermore, she ordered her husband's cattle to get them divorced immediately. But he replied that this was not an option, and if they did that, it would make them a laughingstock in the whole town again. Meanwhile, the protagonist just listened to everything from behind the door, until the beautiful lady finally said that she would not divorce him. The toxic boa that was her mother asked if she had gone crazy, but she said no, and even if he wasn't promising, he at least worked very hard. And for the last three years, all his homework he did on his own. As much as she despised what he had done in the past, she never hated him. Not to mention that the grandmother would never let them get divorced, not least because the old woman saw that the face of the Sioux family was more important than all of them. The protagonist then decided to take action, and in his thoughts he apologized to his wife for her going through all this. Soon he made a call to his mother about the thing she had sent someone to talk to him about earlier. As soon as he entered his and his wife's room, he realized that something was wrong with her, and she asked why he didn't knock on the door before entering. Just looking at the beautiful face of this young lady broke my heart in half. He then asks his wife if she would like him to change, and she asks what he thought, and also why he didn't understand things. In addition, we see a tear of her falling exactly on the shoes of the protagonist, and she says that he had told her the day before that only she had the ability to make him change. He seriously replied that she was completely right, and she, with a lot of pain in her chest, replied that she no longer wanted to be belittled by people and would like to live a life with dignity. Furthermore, she wanted all the people who looked down on her to repent, asking if her husband understood her pain, but that she deserved to be called a divine lady, and something tells me that in the future she will still be very good to him. So I name her divine lady from now on, and to comfort his dear wife, he just hugged her and said that everything was fine. A few days later, he went to talk to his his mother in person, and ended up releasing a comment that he did not imagine that his youngest son would one day be useful in the Han family again, and apparently not even his mother knew it. She reveals to her son that she was really happy that he had come to visit them, and his grandmother said that she had to take him back, since his father was strictly ill, and his older brother was in jail. For that reason, only he could support the Han family now. Since it had been three years, he was wondering why out of the blue she had remembered him, and asked his mother if finally his brother could no longer keep his mask. With no answer to this question, his mother only answered that she knew what had happened to him in the last three years, and knew that it had not been fair. But this was his grandmother's decision, and there was nothing he could do about it. Outraged by what he had just heard his mother say, he said that his older brother had easily managed to fool them all, and since his childhood, the protagonist always did everything to get his mother's attention for himself. But no matter how good his grades were, he still couldn't do it. According to him, his grandmother was afraid that he would take his older brother's place as heir to the family, and for this reason she left him out of the family, angry at everything. He wondered if his brother hadn't gone to prison, if any of them would at least think of him. 
and if it weren't for the fact that the Han family didn't currently have an heir, he asked again if any of them would remember the person called Han Sankian. Here he ended up saying that her mother didn't deserve to be his grandmother, just as she didn't deserve to be his mother either. But it's not as if he couldn't help his mother, and this made her start to hope for the future of her family. However, he had one condition for this to happen, and she asked him what he would like. Before long we see our protagonist outside the room where he had just talked to his mother, and we see that at the end of their agreement, the grandmother had decided to open a new company in town, completely under his command, and she handed him a card with the initial capital to start the business. He then realized that this was actually a test from his grandmother, to see if he was fit to run the family. But of course he was willing to show her who has the right to be heir to the Han family, and the consequences of having underestimated him, swearing then that whatever the Han family owed him, he would pay back. Three days later, rumors of a big storm approaching the city spread among the elite families of China, and the Yanjing Han family established a company in the city. From people's comments, you could already tell that the Han family was very famous, and apparently known throughout the city. In a kind of meeting with the Divine Lady's family, we see that the girls comment that the bride price given to them two days ago was probably from the Big Han family. And the rattlesnake appears again, saying that she was about to marry into a very rich family. As this was not enough, she started to say a few things in an attempt to provoke the beautiful lady, but this ended up failing completely. Soon the old supreme rattlesnake arrived next at their meeting, and finally she opened up on their real goal, to try to do business with the new company that the Han family had just opened. Since they were in the building materials business, it would be beneficial for both sides if they could make that partnership. The insect from before ended up mentioning that, although they knew how beneficial that partnership would be, all the people sent to talk to them were dismissed and rejected immediately. The bug's father said the same thing too, and besides, they didn't even get a chance to see the head of the company. But the old woman told them to try again, and as long as they hadn't decided on a business partner yet, they still had a chance. Besides, if they didn't get to see the boss, they were supposed to wait in front of their company, and everyone would change shifts waiting. But clearly everyone there thought it was too shameful, waiting in front of their company. The cattle manure then commented something, saying that the divine lady hadn't had much work recently, and so her grandmother should send her to start. Upon hearing this, the beautiful lady ended up not knowing how to react at that moment, and realized that several people thought the same way as the scum of society did. After hearing what people said, the old woman asked if she would like to go, and just as she was about to answer, she received a message on her cell phone. The message was just from her husband, who told her to strive for opportunities and negotiate cooperations with Quan Shui Industries. In her thoughts, she wondered if he was really telling her to take that stupid job, since he didn't even explain the reason for all this. However, in the situation she was in, she could not simply refuse. Not knowing what to do, and still unsure, she swallowed her insecurity and said she would do it, and only this time would she believe the protagonist. After that, she answered her grandmother firmly, saying that she was willing to take that job. The scum from before said he hoped she hadn't made an empty promise, since she shouldn't miss the opportunity to meet with the head of the Kayan industry. The scum's father apparently was exactly the same as her son, and said that it made no sense for them to keep her in the family if she continued to screw things up again. No wonder the insect has someone to pull on, since it seems that everyone in his family is like that. In the Divine Lady's thoughts, she said that the most difficult tasks were always thrown at her, but she replied that they didn't have to worry about that job, and she would make that cooperation happen. The cattle manure ended up wondering if there was something wrong in her head, not least because no one expected her to actually be able to negotiate with them. And according to him, if she could do this, he would personally serve her tea. However, if she couldn't, they would kick her out of the Sioux family, and he asked her if she was okay with that. After this, we see the Divine Lady going home, stunning as always, and we discover that the protagonist was watching her go home, perhaps watching out for her safety. Here he was in an establishment, and an employee arrived to talk to him. He asked if the protagonist was again waiting for his wife to leave work. Even because he had been watching her leave work for two or three years, day or night, rain or clear sky, he was always more consistent than the people punching in for work. He replied gently saying that he was only doing this because he had nothing better to do. But the employee asked when he planned to go out and catch her at work in person, because he couldn't do anything like that just by watching her. But he replies by saying that it was not yet the right time to do this, and we see that the divine lady knew that her husband was always there watching her go home. The official asked MC why he married into the Sioux family, since he didn't seem to be an ordinary person. When Sankian comments that by the looks of it he ended up getting very famous over there, the official just said that he didn't mean it in a bad way. 
but he was just curious since normal people couldn't stand it for long, and asked how he managed to put up with all that injustice. Sankian then replies that because of him, his wife was always made a joke of by the Sioux family. But despite all this, she was hardworking, strong, and she still kept the responsibilities to herself. That being the case, what he suffered, compared to her, was not even worth mentioning. As soon as he arrived home, the Divine Lady's mother was scolding her for having accepted the challenge of the insect that tormented the lives of people in society, even because his objective was precisely to get them out of the Sioux family, so that there will be fewer people to share the family property. Her father apparently was already getting desperate, wondering how they would survive if they were kicked out by the Sioux family. But she just replied that she wouldn't know if she didn't try, and the protagonist as he approached the beautiful lady told her parents to trust more in his wife's abilities, and she would surely be able to do it. However, the old rattlesnake ended up offending Sankian, and told him to do what he should have done already, which was dinner. But as soon as he withdrew, the divine lady also decided to withdraw, and left his mother talking to herself. While he felt a suspicious look from his wife, he continued to make dinner, until she finally plucked up the courage to say something, and asked him if on that particular day he had waited for her to leave work outside the company building again. And from his reaction you could already tell that he did. Since there was no way for him to deny this fact, he assumed that he had been discovered. And she said that from now on, he was no longer to hide and wait in a restaurant. This made him upset, thinking that his wife would now get rid of him as well. But to his happiness, she continued to say what she had not finished yet, and told him to pick her up directly in front of the company, and they would go home together from now on. Surprised by what he had just heard, he asked her what she had said, but she replied that she would not say it again. Sankian happily asked her if she was serious, and she asked if he didn't want that, but of course he replied that he wanted it very much. Although the dinner burned, he told the divine lady not to worry about her meeting the next day, not least because the head of Quan Chui Industries was his colleague, and they were close friends. And once he leaves with a smile on his face, I believe the Divine Lady must have felt a little more confident after this support from him. The next day we see the insect from before talking on the phone with someone who was not important in the story, and we could see that he was working together with the treacherous boa constrictor. She asked her partner what was so funny, and he told her what the beautiful lady had asked her husband recently. That was for him to pick her up every day from now on at her work. This made even the rattlesnake laugh, thinking that she had finally given up once and for all, and couldn't wait for her to be kicked out of the family. But a hint of doubt still rose in her thoughts, and she asked the scum what would happen if by some chance she actually managed to make a deal with Quan Chui Industries and he just told her not to worry, because he had another plan to get her out of the Sioux family, as long as the rattlesnake was totally on his side when it happened. After that, we see the Divine Lady with the protagonist in front of the Quan Chui company, and she was being calmed down by her husband, as she was worried about the future of her family. After a while, she took a deep breath and decided to go headlong into this business, to try to save her dignity, and also that of her family. As soon as she arrived at the reception desk, she couldn't say much, as the receptionist quickly told her that they had been waiting for her for some time, and asked her to proceed to manager Zhang's office. She ended up being completely surprised by what was happening, and as soon as she stepped out of the elevator, there was a huge red carpet laid out just for her. At that moment, all the employees, in unison, welcomed the Divine Lady as if she were really a deity, or something, leaving her not knowing how to act at that moment, completely confused. The general manager of the company came next to introduce himself, and his name was Zhang Lian, and he was the one in charge of the construction of the new district, and also responsible for the negotiations of that company. Then he showed her their proposed contract, and if she wanted to, she could simply sign it immediately, if it was no problem for her. The beautiful lady ended up getting lost here, since everything was happening too fast and, unbelievably, too easy to. She even wondered if she could really sign it, not to mention that there were several other things she still had to ask, and she had no idea why all that showed just to receive her. We continued with Miss Sue being completely confused by all the reception because of her, and the general manager asking if she had any questions to ask. As she ended up staying silent after hearing his question, he decided to explain further what was going on to her. Basically, their boss was involved in a lot of social events, so he usually didn't go there in person. Therefore, if she had any questions, all she had to do was ask him, and he would do his best to answer them. After hearing this, she says that it wasn't a question, but that they haven't even started negotiations yet, and asked if he wasn't making any kind of joke with her. In response, he says no, and he wouldn't joke about something that important. 
They just did their research and were very confident in her abilities, and they believed without a shadow of a doubt that she would never let them down. And finally they signed the contract officially at that moment. After that, the general manager sent a direct message to our protagonist, who could not hide the smile on his face when he saw that everything went as he had planned. As soon as the beautiful lady left the company, he asked how the negotiations had gone, and she happily, with the contract up in celebration, shouted that it was a complete success. Upon hearing this, he gave the idea that they celebrate at dinner that day, and she gave the idea that they have a champagne after that. At that moment, she ended up receiving a sudden message, and in the message it said that an emergency family meeting would take place exactly at that moment. Arriving at the place, some nasty comments already started running around the environment about her. And as usual, the cattle dung from before appeared again, reminding her of what she had said the day before. In reply to the scum, she said he had better not forgotten what he had said the day before too, about personally serving her tea. And then she adds that the negotiations were a complete success, and there was the contract as proof. Even the old woman was surprised, as she wouldn't have thought that she would actually get the contract so easily. The young lady then handed her contract to the toxic old woman, so she could have a look for herself. As the old woman looked at the contract, the scum from before asked how that was possible, since someone like her should not be able to do that, and even accused her of having forged the contract but she told him not to compare her with him, because she would never stoop to such a level as he would, just to get some credit in the family. Besides, she had managed to get them to cooperate with her family without any dirty methods, so now it was time for him to fulfill his promise, to serve the tea he had promised the day before. Trying to evade his obligations, he began to make excuses, saying that she had not even made an effort or anything like that, so it would not count. Then he decided to ask his grandmother what she thought, and the old woman simply replied that he should fulfill what he had previously promised. Finally a moment when this old phony is not siding with her grandson. After that, the society dung decided to serve tea to Miss Sue, but she ignored him completely and went to her grandmother again, telling the old woman that now that they had nothing they needed from her, she would go home to pack the necessary materials for the next day. And so the old woman ended that day's meeting, asking them all to go home and prepare for the next day. As soon as the beautiful lady was leaving, she didn't even look back, while the insect from before just stood there with tea in hand, looking extremely embarrassed in front of everyone there. He then swore that he would take revenge on the beautiful lady. Speaking of her, we see them celebrating at her residence, and even her mother congratulated her on such an important achievement. But the old woman ended up saying that she was lucky to have achieved this. But the protagonist responds by saying that it was not luck, and she had done everything she could to be able to get that contract. But because the toxic old woman is too ignorant, she said that it had nothing to do with him, not least because it was her daughter who won that. Suddenly, the beautiful lady received a call from her grandmother, thus discovering that she had been replaced by the dung of before in order to manage negotiations with the protagonist's company, thus causing our protagonist to start thinking of something to be able to bring down the scum from before. At that moment, the only thing the old woman said to her granddaughter was that they were going to finish this, and then she could take a few days off. But before the beautiful lady could say anything, the old woman hung up the phone without letting her say anything. That is the supremacy of toxicities. An old woman toxic enough to contaminate the entire environment around her. A complete scum, as much as her grandson. And speaking of the insect from before, we see that this was all his plan, that he had convinced his grandmother to do this. He further explains to the old snake why he was doing this, and according to him it was only because she was a woman. And if she ever got power in that company, it would mean that Han Sankian, who was the husband of the beautiful lady, would be in control of their properties. But the supremacy of toxicities stopped him from continuing with those lame excuses, saying that she could clearly see behind his plans, then telling him not to try to trick her in the future, because it was more than obvious that the gift he had given her before, referring to the tea cakes, were fake. So much so that even the pigs hated the tea cakes, and so Dung said he would do things more accurately in the future. After that, she decided to leave and told him to go and rest too, and she would not accept failure as an option at his meeting the next day. Returning to the beautiful lady's home, her mother was disgusted by what the toxic rattlesnake had done, suddenly trading her for cattle dung. But since her husband could not go against his toxic mother, she ended up fighting with him too, wondering how she had the guts to marry someone like him. And meanwhile, we see the beautiful lady and the protagonist leaving the place, and you could already see that she was very sad about what happened. He then asked his dear wife how she was, and she replied that she was fine and was used to it. However, he quickly asked her to stop crying and comforted her that she could rest safe, adding that no one would be able to change her from that job. 
After that, he made a call to the general manager of his company, who asked what had happened. And he replied that the next day there would be another person in charge of representing the enterprise, and that the beautiful lady had been exchanged for her cousin's scum. He then asked if the manager knew what that meant. The next day, the cattle manure was prepared for the meeting at last, and soon the general manager arrived to talk to them. As soon as he went to greet the manager, he already asked where Miss Sue was, and the scum from before loudly called himself responsible for that project, giving the excuse that Miss Sue had fallen ill, so from now on he would be responsible for cooperation with the general manager's company from now on. Or at least that's what he thought, not least because the manager said he would come back when Miss Sue had recovered, not least because he had nothing to deal with toxic beings like himself. After that, the scum started shouting that they were better than Miss Sue in business, and the cooperation between their companies would not be affected. But the manager had heard enough, and he didn't want to hear any more rotten things coming out of his mouth. Besides, there were plenty of companies wanting to cooperate with them, and since the Sue family could be that hypocritical, he would reconsider this matter. And there was no need to lead him out, leaving the dung from before completely on the ground and unresponsive. When he told the toxic old woman what had happened, she asked how it could have gotten to that level, and he said he hadn't said anything to offend them. They just left as soon as they saw that Miss Sue was not at the meeting place. As he had already signed the contract, he asked if he could still go back, and the old woman replied by asking if he didn't know who the head of their company was. She then revealed that it was Yan Jing Han's family. But she wasn't going to worry about that, and he was responsible now. So if the negotiations didn't work out, he would get what he deserved. Next we see the beautiful lady's cell phone ringing, and it was the scum of society telling her to go to the company immediately. But the protagonist replied that she was ill, as he had recently said. And he did the same thing the old lady scum had done earlier, and turned off his cell phone without allowing him to continue talking nonsense. Disgusted that the protagonist had turned off his cell phone to his face, he decided to show up in person to see what would happen. And it didn't take him long to do so, leaving even the protagonist impressed with his speed. As soon as he opened the door, the insect dung was about to strike a blow at Sankian. But he easily dodged and beat back the attack with a nice kick, throwing the scum away, as he truly deserved. The beautiful lady then asked what that noise was and what was going on, but he says it was nothing, that it was just the insect that had just arrived. Completely breathless, he asked the protagonist if he knew the repercussions of his actions, even more so for kicking him. Sankian then said that she had nothing to talk to him about, and that the decision to change people was up to the toxic old woman alone. Therefore, if she had any problems, it was up to her to sort it out herself. After saying this, he shut the door in the scum's face, not allowing him to continue with his words. When she asked what was going on, he revealed that Quan Shui Industries had decided to put her in charge, and they would not work with anyone other than her. He went on to say that the manure was desperate, and had rushed to ask for her help. But as he had said that it was only for the old woman to go there, she wondered if it was even possible for that to happen. But I could tell by his face that everything was fine, and everything was going according to his plans too. When her mother found out what the protagonist had done, she started praising him negatively, saying that there was no way the old woman would go personally to ask Miss Sue to take over the business again. But the beautiful lady finally took the lead and defended her husband, saying he had done it only for her sake, and pulled him aside so they could go somewhere else, away from that toxicity itself. In their room, he thanked her for taking his side, even though he was used to it, so she didn't have to do it anymore. When she heard that, she asked why he was smiling, then said that he was clearly responsible behind the scenes for her getting that contract. She also asked why he didn't say anything, since he was once again humiliated for no reason. But he said that she had been humiliated much more than he had, so he had no right to say anything. With that, he made her speechless and just told them to go to sleep. The next morning, the beautiful lady woke up radiant as always, and right after she finished changing, she woke up our protagonist so that they could do their morning run. But apparently this was not something they did as a routine, so she commented that from that day on, they would do it every day in the morning, together. Therefore, it was no longer for him to just follow her from afar. At that moment, even he was confused, since he thought she didn't know he followed her on her morning walks. A while into their run, they ended up in front of a huge house, and he asked her if she would like to move in. He then commented that he had found out that the house was for sale, and wondered what the inside must look like. She then replies that he could only be joking, not least because that house was valued at around 60 million, so there was no way they could afford to buy it. According to her, those living in that house was a sign of their prosperity, and even the old woman dreamed of moving there one day. 
She even says they could keep talking about it. But moving into that house really was something that could only happen in their dreams. And as they continued with their run, she asked if he really thought the toxic old woman was going to come over to their house. And he says she needed to relax a bit more in the coming days. A while later, we see him meeting with his general manager once again. And he asks the manager to send someone to go to the villa on Yunjing Mountain and buy it. In response, the manager says that the family's money could only be used to further the development of the company, and that was a bit much. However, suddenly the protagonist took out a kind of black card and put it on the table, saying that he heard that the manager was responsible from the Han family for cooperation with the Fankian company. The manager then responds by saying that it was really him who was overseeing everything, and he had been friends with Kin Lin, the boss for many years. But the protagonist replies that Kin Lin was nothing more than a mere image. At this point, the manager began to wonder if the young master in front of him was really the boss behind Fankian. After that, Sankian revealed that he had established his own company since he was 12 years old, just to try and test his skills. He then asked if the manager knew why the company had that name, revealing that it had something to do with always being above the Han family, or something like that. Basically, he meant that he was the one who would be the destroyer of the entire Han family. After this revelation, the protagonist says that that card had the data of his personal earnings, and that village would be bought at all costs, not least because his wife would like to walk through those mountains every day. With nothing else stopping him from going against his boss, the manager told him that he shouldn't worry, and would certainly see to it that the village was bought. He said he would never reveal the secret of the Fankian company. And then we see Sankian swearing that he would give the whole world to his wife if she wanted it, and regardless of what it was, he would find some way to be able to give it to her. After a long time, we continue with Yingxia's father going to answer the door, and his surprise was enormous when he saw that it was his mother, who was even complaining about the elevator that wasn't working. After saying that he would have come for her if she had said she was going to his house, she reveals that she was there to see Yingxia because she had heard that she was ill. When the old snake asked where she was, the mother rattlesnake said that her daughter was afraid of infecting her grandmother, and that's why she was in her room. However, Han Sankian soon said that she wasn't actually ill, making the Sukuri, who is his mother-in-law, angry, and the mummy grandmother asked what he meant when he said she wasn't ill. As she was an old woman with one foot in the grave, she should have known better, according to the protagonist. And it was she who won the cooperation with the Kyanchui Industries, and the person responsible for this project should be her. Su Hei Chao is naturally to blame for replacing the person responsible, but the old woman was certainly wrong too, making this mummy tick by keeping quiet about it, since she only knows how to support her toxic grandson. He went on to say that only Yingxia could take care of this cooperation, and asked if the scum happened to know about it. She soon realized that the protagonist wasn't afraid to bother her, and asked if she, by any chance, should abandon this cooperation in anger and go after him. Although that was also possible, the loss to the Su family would end up being too great, and the tick flea wouldn't do that. Han Sankian just wanted the old woman to pay more attention to Yingxia, and if there was something that made the old woman angry, he would apologize for it, so it was for him to reconsider please, for the Su family. These scum began to wonder which Su family he was talking about, whether it was another family, or whether it was the Su family of Yingxia, until the old woman asked exactly about her granddaughter. Speaking of her, he was soon talking to her on the phone, and she said that she had just spoken to Zhang Liang, and he had agreed to officially start cooperating with the Su family again next Monday which was great, and also the walking mummy was right there in their house, so surely that old woman must have been very happy to hear that. The mummy then spoke to Yingxia, thanking her for her hard work, and she told her granddaughter to come to her house for dinner that weekend, to celebrate her success, and the beautiful lady thanked her for it. The flea soon decided to leave too, and as she was leaving, she told Sankian not to wait three days out of respect, but she gave him a warning, and he'd better not covet the Sioux family in the slightest. But the protagonist only asked the zombie tick to keep her safe, because he had no interest in the Sioux family estate itself. Sunday had arrived, and they were at the Sioux family residence, in the garden, and someone was commenting that this cooperation with Kyanshui Industries had made great contributions to Yingxia. 
The old woman said that her granddaughter would also be in charge of the Western City project that would cooperate with Kayanshui, and that this would be one of their biggest recent projects, and everyone hoped that she would be able to handle it. Clearly, the insect dung, along with another toxic snake, were simply disgusted with the first lady's success, and the mummy told everyone there to enjoy their lunch. However, she told her granddaughter that she was supposed to stay, because we soon see her talking about the first lady and Sankian, and the relationship between husband and wife had been great recently. However, the walking mummy started bad-mouthing the protagonist, saying that he had a different surname, and she was always told to be cautious with him, and to think about the Sioux family's assets, and a defensive heart was indispensable. While the old woman was bad-mouthing him, he was provoked by the first lady's cousin, who was trying to cause a stir at all costs. In Yingxia's mind, she was saying that the old woman didn't know anything, because the man she was bad-mouthing was the one who had helped her in that cooperation. Respond to Mummy Tick, she just said that she would do things herself, and Yingxia's father said that the action to sell the mountain villa was over. On asking who bought it and how much it was sold for, we found out that it was around 100 million, and the protagonist commented that the villa she was after had just been picked up. But she just asked him to stop playing with her, and she was a little curious, because she couldn't imagine who would spend so much money on a residence, and he said that maybe those millions were nothing to him or her. He asked if it could be that snake who was making a name for herself, and the first lady said that she was pretty and always the center of attention. But other than that, she didn't seem to have the ability to be anything else. According to Sankian, the first lady was certainly even more beautiful, and she says that no matter how beautiful she is, she's already been delivered into his hands, and there's no way she can be offered as a bride again. She realized that Sankian had been wearing that suit for a while, and maybe she should give it to him this this time, so she called him over so that she could go shopping with him later. He clearly accepted this offer, and said that he could carry as many bags as his wife wanted to buy, and if that wasn't enough, he would pay the bill too. A while later, we saw the first lady herself, and she had met this girl called Shen Lingyao, and while the divine lady was happy to see her friend again, her friend noticed Sankian's presence. She then pulled the first lady aside and asked her if she had gone mad by taking him to meet them, and began to wonder what had blinded her. That's because according to the first lady's friend, that kind of man wasn't really worth it, and she asked if she was really going to accept him, asking what kind of things he gave her as well. But the first lady just asked her to stop it, and for her friend to stop being annoying, she just said that even if she hadn't accepted him completely, she was trying her best too. In the end, the little snake just told her friend to be happy, but as her best friend, she had an obligation to check whether he was really worthy of the first lady. However, the most important thing now was for them to go shopping, and we soon see them enjoying their shopping routine, while the protagonist just carries the bags. Until, in a store, this snake thought that no man could resist her beauty, and she swore that she would reveal Sankian's true identity. Suddenly, she appeared asking for Sankian's help, and asked him what he thought, and although the guys were in love at first sight, he just said it was fine, and turned his face towards the first lady again. Indignant at this, she pulled someone aside to ask how she was, and when the cattle just stood at her feet, she wondered how Sankian could have just looked the other way. Even so, she wasn't about to give up just yet, so she kept changing her clothes in an attempt to attract the young protagonist's attention, but nothing worked until it was his wife who appeared to ask his opinion, and he quickly turned his attention fully to the first lady, and she, charming as ever, asked him what he thought. Clearly his reaction was very different with his wife, not least because he could be more open with her, and according to him, that outfit was specially made to be able to exalt Inxia's beauty, leaving the girl from before completely floored. Even she didn't believe it, because he was completely indifferent to her, and the first lady thought it best to buy that one then, and the snake from before told Inxia that perhaps her husband didn't really like women. When she asked what her friend was talking about, a toxic anaconda appeared and simply pulled out the dress that the first lady had chosen to buy, saying that she was going to buy it. Then the little snake asked what was wrong with that failed zombie project, 
because it was exactly Inxia who had tried on that dress before. You could see that this was just barbecue meat of the worst quality, and the cattle there were the ones who were unusable and disposable, who were just being dragged into the abyss thanks to the toxic being that was with them. According to this fly tick, the dress the first lady tried on was dirty, and if it happened to be bought by poor people like them, that piece of clothing would surely be nothing more than garbage. In addition, the disgusting woman said a few more things, but it was clear that not one of them was willing to take that lying down, so the Sucurian decided to ask the saleswoman what she thought of it. Unfortunately, this saleswoman wasn't the best of people either, and according to her, if the customer wanted, there were some stores in that area that had a discount so that she could recommend them to the protagonist and his companions. He then asked around and whoever bought the most was sold to him, and the cattle that kept getting gold in the back said that was exactly what it was, and customers were also divided into different categories. When people open their doors for business, whoever buys the most is their customer, and since the fat tick said that, Sankian then said that he wanted all the clothes in that store. This clearly surprised everyone there, and he asked if he could use his card there, and of course he could. But then he remembered that he had given his card to Zhang Liang to buy the villa, and forgot to take it back. When the attendant asked him if he had any problems, he told her to wait a while as he would be making a quick call. The mule fly in the obese tick began to mock the protagonist, and even a customer asked him not to disrupt the store's business. The first lady's friend told them to get out of there as soon as possible, as she didn't want to be humiliated because of the protagonist, and she said that Sankian wasn't the kind of person who boasted out of respect. She then asked him to stop, but he just told her not to worry, as it would only take a second, and suddenly a speeding car pulled up right in front of the store they were in. It was our protagonist's manager who came out of there, and when the attendant went to see him, thinking he was just a customer, she was completely ignored, and soon he handed the card back to its rightful owner. The obese tick just wondered who that guy was, and the protagonist just apologized for the delay, and now they could finally go to the checkout. When he was asked to enter the password, he asked Yangxia to do so, and she could be at ease with it. As she began to type in the password, the tension between everyone there only increased with each beep the machine gave, until at the last beep, the transaction was successfully completed. Basically, it was 400,000 yuan just in clothes, and her friend asked her how she knew the password, and he said it was exactly the date of their wedding anniversary. While the two of them were in a great mood, the little snake from before was left out in the cold, and she even began to pray for a man who would spend so much on her, and envy, jealousy, and hatred were too little for what she was feeling. The tick from before decided to take this opportunity to get out of there, while the failed mummy project just asked if they would just forget what had just happened there. According to her, it was only 400,000, and it wasn't as if they couldn't afford it. But for her to say that, I'm pretty sure there was practically nothing coming out of her pocket. The tick soon said that she really didn't know anything, because the person who went there with that card was the same person who spent 100 million to buy that villa on the mountain, and even he was afraid of discovering the identity of the protagonist. Shortly after buying the clothes, he asked her to take everything that was their size, and the rest wasn't necessary. But the little snake wanted the rest for herself all the same. When the manager asked for the delivery address, he added something, saying that he had discovered that some of the sales clerks were not qualified, and this was not good for her business, and it was good that she dealt with it sooner or later. And soon, we see the manager who belittled the protagonist before being completely fired, and her career in these clothes stores being ruined. At Yingxia's residence, we see her looking at her cell phone after a good shower, and it seems that her friend had left her a voice message. Suddenly, the audio was of her friend screaming, saying that she had fallen in love, and they soon realized that there was a video in that message too. When the first lady comments on a man playing the piano, the protagonist immediately breaks out in a cold sweat, and even though the image in the video is a little blurry, he's still worried. The situation only got worse when the beautiful lady commented that the person playing the piano looked very familiar to her, and he began to see his life flash before his eyes, because the person in the video was precisely him. Back that afternoon, just after leaving the clothing store, the first lady's friend pulled her to go to the restroom and she told Sankian to wait for them a little further along the shopping area. 
The purchases they'd made had already been sent to their home, and when they went out to buy things, a car was really convenient, and it looked like it was time to get a vehicle. Sankian soon noticed the presence of a piano there, and he recognized that it was a good one, wondering how long it had been since that work of art had been played. When he was younger, after each time he was mistreated by his brother and shunned by his family, he would always go to the piano to practice and play for many hours at a time. At the time, he couldn't hide how he really felt, and now that he thinks about it, he really did feel bad about that piano, and we soon see him getting ready so he can try to play. As soon as he started, people quickly began to turn their attention in the direction of the young protagonist, and meanwhile others began to record as well, but it seemed that the young man was only focusing on the music. He didn't even realize that he was surrounded by people, and it seemed that he had even forgotten that the world existed, until suddenly, someone started shouting with happiness at seeing his abilities, and he was paralyzed. When he looked back, people applauded, and let's just say he started to attract more attention than he really should have, as there were a few girls who were even wanting his number, and soon he was running for his life. It took a long time for him to throw everyone off the scent, and he realized that even Ling Yao was acting a little differently, and in the end, it turned out that he was the one playing the piano. Since we're now back to the present, the first lady called for her husband and said she had a small present for him. As soon as he picked it up, she told him it was for him, so he just had to accept it, as the old one was too worn, so it was time to change it. As soon as he opened it, he realized that it was a new dress shirt, which made him very happy, and she asked why he didn't try it on, since visually she didn't know what size was right for him. While he was putting on that new shirt he'd just won, she began to remember the boy playing the piano from the video, and realized that he looked a lot like Sankian. After that, she asked if her husband knew how to play the piano, and he disguised it by asking if she was laughing at him, which made her give up on the idea. When it was finally ready, we see that the first lady ended up being enchanted by her husband. And the next day, during the lunch break, we see the first lady's friend still in awe of the pianist's video. Clearly she was getting in her friend's way, and it was just a view from behind her back. But this comment made Ling Yao angry, because her friend didn't understand anything about it. What's more, if she took a closer look at the videos of the male Ling Yao god, all the videos themselves were in the top searches, and the talented people who had been on site the day before would understand that. Speaking of which, she asked if by any chance the back of the person in the video looked a bit like Sankian's, and when Ling Yao noticed her question, he just laughed and made fun of her theory. That's because, according to her friend, the male god in the video apparently had a good family, a prestigious school record, a mansion and a sports car too. Not to mention that he was nothing like the poor-looking Han Sankian, who rode a small electric motorcycle. Because they were talking a lot about the protagonist, he soon started sneezing, and even he wondered if there was anyone talking about him, and we see him standing in front of a car store. The comments among the staff there weren't the best, and when he was entering the store, they were arguing over who was going to see him, because none of them really wanted to. As the comments went on, he just watched quietly, even when they ended up making fun of him. And when he went to see the A8, they started to get scared about it, as the car was worth over 1 million yuan. When he touched the car, the arrogant attendant said that since he couldn't afford it, he shouldn't touch it. But he just ignored everything, and he was going to buy that car for cash. When they saw that black card, and now the fight was just to see who would get the commission on the car. But he told the beginner to do the procedure for him, while the others were depressed about losing the commission. Suddenly, we see the protagonist arriving at the store where he normally waits for his wife, and we soon see him very different this time. And even the guy who used to talk to him was surprised to see him like that. While serving tea, he congratulated him on the new car, and he had known all along that the young man was no ordinary person, and was like a dragon who finally wanted to fly again. Sankian then asked if it wasn't exactly that young man, who was the boss, and the green-haired one just tried to disguise it, asking what he had specifically to look like. According to him, every family has its own circumstances, and the protagonist was doing this for his wife, just as the green-haired man was. Pleased with the guy's response, the protagonist then commented that now he had mentioned his wife, he presented his new shirt that he had won from his wife. 
The local boss then commented that the shirt was really good and suited him, and once again Sankian said that he had gotten it from his wife, and he finally realized that the young protagonist just wanted to show it to him. Getting into the game too, he decided to show something he had under his shirt, and it was a kind of heart embroidered by the protagonist's sister-in-law, probably referring to his wife, Handmaid. This time, it was the protagonist's turn to realize that he was doing it, because he was showing a great deal of affection for his wife, and the two of them seemed to get along well, and soon someone ended up cutting them off. This was exactly the green-haired man's wife from before, who was telling him to get back to work, and as he ran off, the protagonist was put off by the situation. She then comments that it looks like the two of them were having a lot of fun, and she remarks that his new shirt was very energetic, and his wife had a great view. At the end of that day, we see the first lady in all, because there was Sankian with a brand new car in front of her, and she asked where that car had come from, and the answer was clear, he had bought it with his own money. As soon as she heard this, she realized that he was hiding something that she didn't know about yet, but he only disguised it, and it was precisely her cousin's insect that appeared, jealous of the sight of that car. When he left, he told them not to let the donkey dung get the protagonist in Yinxia, and once home, her parents were amazed, thinking that their daughter was already earning a lot of money. But she said it wasn't her who had done it, and her mother simply took the key from her hands, and told them to go and look at the car straight away. The poisonous snake project says that her daughter was boasting a lot about changing cars now, and asked what she would do if Sankian used the car to cheat other women. Incredibly, the mother ended up taking the protagonist's car, as if it were really hers, while they could have kept the treacherous jellyfish's old car, and if it were me, I'd end that woman's life right then and there. But as this is just a story, Sankian just told Yingxia to forget it, but she said that the car was obviously his, and he would just find a new car. The next day, the boss from before spotted the protagonist with the first lady again, and wondered why the protagonist had switched to the old car once more. At the store he bought the old car again, and when they were about to offer him another vehicle, he just said that it could wait a while, and he would like another A8, and it would be the view again, leaving the attendants impressed by this. After that, the first lady said that her mother wouldn't give the car back so easily, and asked what he was doing with that new car. Trying to disguise it, he said that the car from the day before was on a buy one get one promotion, asking her if she could believe in such a promotion. Inside the car, it was clear that she hadn't believed a word he had said, so she asked if the car had also come wrapped in a ribbon. She then asked him if he thought he was capable of deceiving her, and if he really thought she would believe his lame excuse, and he apologized for buying another one again. Embarrassed by this situation, she grumbled that he was really very rich, and she didn't care how much money he had in his personal account. He should just tell her in advance next time. That was because they were married, and there was no need to keep secrets, and he wasn't supposed to tell her mother that he had bought another car, as it would be complicated to explain everything. During the evening, the young Ling Yao began to tell a list of what had happened to her recently, and the protagonist just watched everything in silence. And when he heard that only a man is worthy of Ling Yao, he had a great idea. We cut to a different setting this time, more precisely this Pearl Tower, and at the top of it was the most famous and luxurious Western Yuncheng restaurant. The restaurant was surrounded by panoramic windows from which you could see all of Yuncheng, and to dine there, you had to book a week in advance, and it wasn't cheap. When the attendant asked if there was anything the protagonist wanted, he immediately took out his black card, and said that that month, on a specific day, he would like to book the entire restaurant, and money was no object for him. At the place where the first lady worked, rumors swirled that someone had booked the entire Pearl Tower restaurant, and legends said that one booking alone cost hundreds of millions, but I don't think it was all that much. The person who booked the whole restaurant two years ago was proposing marriage, and anyone who knows her knows how many women have envied her for that. The snake heard that the reservation was made for the 22nd, which was exactly the first lady's wedding anniversary, and the mocking comments continued. This mummy remnant said that it already had a reservation in the tallest building history has ever seen, for next week, and when the time really came, they would see who was the richest. 
it was clear that Yingxin had had enough of these provocations, and later on the 22nd, she asked her friend to slow down and asked where they were going. But her friend didn't want to answer, and she would know as soon as they got there. And she realized that this was precisely the Pearl Tower, and they were soon greeted and directed to the place they were supposed to go. She then asked why Ling Yao had called her to that place, because that was the day the whole restaurant was booked. And her friend just told her to wait and see, because someone had also called her to be there. And then we see what happened two hours ago, when Ling Yao told her to put on her best dress and follow her. And when she saw her friend in that new dress, she commented that it really suited her. She revealed that she was intending to wear that dress as the first lady's maid of honor, and she never had the chance to actually wear it. And she said it was because her husband never actually proposed a marriage properly. She was already getting anxious, because she couldn't wait to get there, and she wondered how many more floors they would have to climb to actually get there, until they reached floor 49. The attendant said that they had finally arrived at the Crystal Restaurant, and again the first lady asked why they were there, but not even Ling Yao knew. After that, we see the protagonist playing the piano, and as soon as the first lady realized this, she immediately started to get emotional, as she couldn't hold back her tears. You could already see that the young man was looking very handsome, and he quickly went to welcome his dear wife, who was not only amazed by everything, but was also creating a new image of her husband. Even Ling Yao didn't believe all this, and wondered how it could really be happening, and the two of them were standing in front of each other. The first lady's friend just thought that the protagonist was a piece of junk, and wondered why he had let Yinxin suffer for so many years if he had always been so rich. She then asked him why he hadn't told her anything about how well he could play the piano, and he just said that he had made her suffer a lot over the last three years, and from that day on, no one would ever bother his dear wife again. She then wonders if this would happen even if he knew that they called him a wimp behind his back, and also if he knew how uncomfortable she felt after hearing those words. But hugging his wife in order to comfort her, he knew this very well. And in the Yucheng shopping center, we saw the images broadcast throughout the city, and people were amazed to see such a scene with their own eyes. In the hotel lounge, the rattlesnake who was always teasing the first lady couldn't wait to find out who had booked the whole restaurant, and wondered who was with young Master Han. She thought it might be Yingxia, but apparently, she refused to accept that it was really true. And the next day, we see the first lady completely completely happy. The comments apparently continued to flow, but she didn't let them get to her, and as soon as she was near the snake from before, the snake said in its thoughts that the woman in the tower the day before couldn't have been the first lady. Taking the envelope from the rattlesnake's hands, the first lady said that it was now the snake's turn to go to the east side of the city for an inspection, and when it returned, it was to report directly to her. Then the rattlesnake asked what kind of joke that was, and if she happened to know how the restaurant incident the day before had embarrassed the Sioux family, and yet the first lady had the nerve to push it on her. She soon apologized for this, but she was in person at the restaurant itself, and if she didn't want to go, that was fine, she would just have to ask her grandmother to find her a new assistant, and the rattlesnake could go home to rest. In the first lady's thoughts, she told her dear husband that she would never let the Sioux family pull them down again, and the mummy project apparently didn't like what the first lady had said. She commented that if Yingxia's grandmother happened to find out that she was at home and idle, she might well rip the snake's skin off, and asked what Yingxia was really planning. But it was only a run to the construction site, and it wasn't anything too strenuous, and she wore it all day, apart from the extreme heat, sore feet and tiredness, but it still wasn't a big deal. The zombie flea told the first lady to remember that, and when she married into the Han family, she would pay for it for sure. But now the first lady was dying to see that mummy try, if she was able to, of course. In a different location this time, we saw our protagonist arriving at this establishment, until he ended up meeting some guys who worked there, chatting away. Unfortunately, one of them ended up being quite rude to young Han Sankian, saying that they weren't open yet, and he said he was looking for Lin Yang. Poor you. Our boss is a very influential person in the Cloud City area. How could you meet him whenever you wanted? Apparently, the guys thought the protagonist was some kind of bad person, and even he wondered if they thought he was that kind of person. When they found out that his name was Han Sankian, one of them ended up calling the protagonist the worthless Sioux family member, and the others continued to make fun of him too. 
When one of them asked how someone like him could have married Yingxia, he decided to ignore the guys completely. Suddenly, a guy with red hair came running towards the protagonist, and he gave his friend a big hug, leaving the guys from before on their faces, mainly for treating him badly. This young man is called Lin Yang, the owner of the Magic City nightclub and a supporter of Han Sankian too. And after that, he immediately scolded the young people there for not reporting the presence of his dear friend to him. While the protagonist was leaving so that he could reply to his dear wife's messages, he made his other henchmen apologize to Han Sankian on their knees. Yingxia had sent a photo to the protagonist, along with that scum who was always humiliating her, and this was the first person she had vented her anger on, saying that she was going to cook a very large meat for them to celebrate together. After a while, we see the young people apologizing to the protagonist, even asking for his forgiveness, and he comments to Lin that he had a very important deal for him, and would end it as soon soon as possible. Before going to the meeting with the protagonist, Lin told his henchmen that he would sort things out with them later, and then he guided Han Sankian to his office so that they could talk about it in more detail. But it wasn't necessary, and Sankian comments that Lin had said that someone from the Chengxi project wanted to cause trouble, thus attracting young Lin's attention. With that said, then I'd like to change the people in Cloud City. Yangzi, have you wanted Cloud City for a long time? The protagonist asked, leaving the young Lin surprised and wondering what had made Sankian so serious. Leaving there, the young man was completely happy, and all he could think about was the fact that his wife was cooking a big meal that night so that they could celebrate. He was so happy that he ended up completely ignoring the guy he bumped into, who was precisely the most toxic person in this manhua, but he was still completely ignored. This slug said that because Sankian had ignored him, his good morning was over, and he would give the protagonist a surprise. At the Divine Lady's house this time, the protagonist thought that he had bought a new car because he wanted to drive with his wife, and began to wonder what he would do if she got angry. Entering his home glowing, he just thought it best to relax and tell the truth, but unfortunately, things didn't turn out as he had really thought, and he found his wife on the sofa very sad. On asking what happened, we see the sadness on the divine lady's face, and she comments that she had sent her Yehan to inspect the Chengxi project, and she ended up being injured. At this point, the boy wondered if they had started so early, and she said that a group of people had suddenly arrived in the construction area, asking for money, and attacked people on sight. Not only that, but the material transportation channels were also forcibly blocked by them, and these people looked like gorillas, they even closed all the construction routes. He thought that there were a lot of people there, so it couldn't have been people from the Sioux family, which meant that apparently a third party force was in the City of Clouds. Crying this time, she said that in the afternoon, that shrew intimidated the Divine Lady, saying that the incident was caused by her, and that she had embezzled funds from the project to buy a car, and that it was time to move house. Hearing this, he ended up remembering the villa he bought with his own, and that change would happen soon. And the first lady asked him if he was happy about it, and what he found funny to be smiling about. However, he only wanted to tell her that she couldn't talk to fools about weaknesses and strengths, and her own happiness was the most important thing. Holding his dear wife's face, he said, Yingxia, don't worry and let me take care of it because this was probably set up by someone. The Divine Lady responds by saying that Su Hei Chao, being the insect that bumped into the protagonist earlier, found some evidence about it and asked her to meet him the next day so she could negotiate. At the Yuncheng nightclub, there was the insect enjoying the evening, and he was talking to this manure, who said that his staff had already taken care of the matter requested, and he asked if he could really have Yingxia if he followed his instructions. The dung of the Divine Lady's cousin was trying to use her as a bargaining chip, handing her over to a a worthless scumbag, and he said he would take her with him the next day to the Dung's house. Speaking of the manure itself, he wondered if Su Hei Chao was reckless, not least because he was part of the Su family, but was making a secret deal with him right now. With that, the insect tried to disguise itself, and in his thoughts, he knew it wouldn't be easy to fool the dung in front of him, and he said something about Han Sankian having a wedding, but he still couldn't reach Lin Yang, but he was quite wrong about that. The other immediately asked what had happened to Lin Yang, and told Hei Chao that he was doing his best, and surely he was still hiding information. But the story said that it wasn't quite like that, and he only said that Han Sankian left the magic city that very day, and he and Lin Yang were talking and laughing too. The next day in fact, the first lady asked her husband if he really wanted to go as her assistant, and it was definitely the best choice he had ever made in his life. He just said that she had to believe him, and she wondered if she had been deceived, even though she believed in him very much, not to mention that he had also asked her to dress like that, and then he had gone to the beach to meet someone. After everything, she just decided to let things flow, and while the protagonist was getting up, 
he ended up receiving a message saying that everything was ready, helping his wife out of the car. He was determined to let the insects see his love, and in the room itself, they ended up meeting just the insects from before. The divine lady ended up being surprised that just that person was there, and even though Han Sankian was standing right there, the young man who had been fooled asked who that was next to her. Responding by holding her husband's arms, she said it was her husband, and the others there began to badmouth the protagonist as much as they could, as well as humiliating him too. Manure told his henchmen to knock it off, as he was scaring his guest, and he told himself that he could use this chance to test whether Han Sankian was really that rash. The first lady decided to take charge of the situation, and said that she had asked them to talk business, not for him to humiliate her husband, leaving even the protagonist surprised by his wife's attitude. The discard then said that they would stop chasing the protagonist if she gave him a billion, and not only that, no one would cause trouble for the Sioux family in the future, but he would also protect her and asked what she thought of that. She realized that he was talking nonsense, and obviously there would be no conversation there, and Han Sankian said that this matter was complicated, and it was impossible for people like Chen Gang to target the Su family for no reason. She finally decided to speak up, and said that she was being honest with him, so she expected him to be honest with her too, and someone rudely took the contract or something out of her hands. Reading that, the guy ended up saying something he shouldn't have, but of course the divine lady refused his request immediately, and since that was the case, the conversation would end right there. After that, the insect's henchmen went after them, and the guy was thinking that he would get the first lady using force, but little did he know that the protagonist is trained. As soon as the guys came at the young man, he didn't have much trouble dealing with it, and easily parried the insect's blow, as well as knocking it down immediately afterwards, leaving even his dear wife impressed by his skills. Not only was she amazed, but so were the insects that were there, and after that, Sankian said he would give him a chance to explain this matter clearly, and he would also spare the manure's life. The scum asked if Sankian was laughing at him, and it didn't matter if he could fight. Those people around him were all his subordinates. But as soon as he said this, we saw some people enter the room, and it was the young Lin Yang who was there to help the protagonist. The insect said he had supporters, and if they happened to end his life, his supporters would definitely not spare them. And they wouldn't end well either, and the divine lady was getting lost already, and just called for her husband. He told her to wait for him in the car, and he would be there soon, not to mention that she didn't have to worry because because none of them would come after her. Lin Yang handed the protagonist a small knife, and asked if Sankian would really like to take matters into his own hands, but it was more than clear that that was exactly what he would like. At that moment, the Dung was probably watching his life pass before his eyes, and he was going to teach him how to write dead words. The moment he was on his knees on the ground, he was about to stop seeing the colors of life, until Sankian asked if anyone had instructed the Dung to do this. Unfortunately, the guy didn't want to cooperate with the protagonist peacefully, and he still insisted that he he'd kill him if Sankian was really capable of doing it, and tired of that game. He told Lin Yang to do everything he could to make him tell. The beating was then severe, and he continued to be beaten non-stop until he actually decided to say something. And finally he decided to tell everything, and said that it was the Su family, and it was Su Hei Chao's idea and he had gone to the dung heap. He wanted the young man on his knees to have a relationship with Yingxia, and also expose the matter in Yuncheng. He wanted to use this to expel Su Yingxia from the Su family. Even the protagonist was surprised by how far Hei Chao was able to go just to harm his wife, and Sankian said that if it were only for the Chengxi project, he would still let Hei Chao go. But he transformed this idea so that he could attack Su Yingxia, and now he would be sentenced to death for it. And returning to the car, the divine lady asked how he was, and if he was alright, as well as asking if the problem with the Chengxi project had been solved. He said yes, and thought they'd better go home now, and she commented that the guy from before wasn't a good person, so she wanted to know how it was resolved so easily. Besides, she wanted to know who those people were who had suddenly appeared, and he just said that the next day she would tell her grandmother's snake that the problem had been solved, and he would take care of the rest. The next morning, we see the room where the Sioux family held their meetings, and the toxic snake wonders why Yingxia hasn't been there yet. The being that doesn't even deserve to be called an animal soon began to make up a story about the first lady, and said that he had heard that Su Yingxia hadn't come home the night before. When the old woman asked what he was talking about, he said that he had investigated and found out that it was precisely Cheng Gang who had messed with their family. What's more, he spent a lot of money to get past Cheng Gang and asked Su Yingxia to go to Gang Farm to reconcile, and as expected, she didn't return last night. 
Cheng Gang was a gangster from the gray area, and Su Yingxia actually stayed on his farm, so it's clear what might have happened. But of course it was all just a made-up story on the fly's part. People asked him if he had any proof of this, because he couldn't just go around spouting such nonsense, since the Su family's reputation was at stake. The old woman asked him if he was sure, and he replied that he didn't know exactly what she had gone to do on the farm, but she hadn't returned last night and was still with someone like Chen Gang. With that, the old woman said that if she really did something like that, she would never forgive the first lady, and people hoped that Yingxia hadn't really gone down that road. Although the guys continued to blame the loss of the Su family's reputation on the Divine Lady, she arrived shortly afterwards and said that Zong had asked her to sort out some documents and she had just sent them, which was why she was late. The old woman immediately asked if the problem had been solved, and she said yes, and the manure asked how much it cost to solve it, and she said that it wasn't solved with money, and since this incident was solved precisely by her husband, she had no idea how it really happened, and if it wasn't with money, the old woman asked how this problem was really solved solved. The rattlesnake asked a different question, and the first lady wondered why the queen of the Najas was asking the divine lady that question, because she wasn't that kind of person. But in the back of her mind, she wondered what the misunderstanding was. But if she said that Han Sankian had taken it upon herself to solve the problem, no one would believe her either. Suddenly, Lin Yang burst in, saying that there was a present for that broken down old snake, and Dung asked who he was, and how he dared to go to Su's family home to cause trouble. But he was completely ignored, so Lai Yang introduced himself to the snake, and said that he had helped the Su family solve a big problem, and had gone there to receive the money for the service. Lin Yang's fame was not small, and people commented that he was no ordinary extra, and there was no way such a person would go to the Su family's house just to cause trouble. The old woman said that if he really helped the Su family for nothing, she would ensure that his efforts would not be in vain, and he told her that she should make the money count, and took the bag off the Dung's head, telling him to tell her everything he knew. Clearly, Dung had already started to get scared, and he said that it was Su Hei Chao who had asked him to do such things, but he pretended that he didn't even know Chen Gang, and if it hadn't been for Su Hei Chao, Chen Gang would have had no reason to attack the Su family. Manure told her not to listen to that nonsense, and it had nothing to do with him, and he didn't know anything, at least those were the excuses he gave the old woman. But he not only asked the Chen Gang to attack Yingxia, but also to expose the matter in Yuncheng to take Yunxia away from the family and also disgrace the Su family. The comments were that Hei Chao had overstepped all boundaries, and they wondered how he could do something so despicable, and also how he could harm the first lady since she was also part of the Su family. The insect was kneeling on the ground after being kneed, and he swore that he didn't know anything, and insisted that this matter had nothing to do with him. I don't know if this was Dung's father, but I think so, and he said that this matter was too confusing for Hei Chao, and it wasn't for the aged snake to blame his son, and he would educate him again. The old woman simply ignored everyone there, and told Lin that since this was an internal matter for the Su family, she was grateful that he was helping them, and also wanted to know how much he would like to receive. And taking the dung with him, he said that since she was so correct, he wasn't an ignorant person either, and when this problem was solved, he would come back again. As soon as they left, the manure began to shake, and she told Yingxia that since he wanted to harm her, she would decide how to deal with it. Unfortunately, however, the first lady thought that if the grandmother really wanted to punish Hei Chao, it wouldn't be Yingxia who would take such a decision, as that would be cruel, and to our sorrow, she ended up missing the opportunity to teach the insect a lesson. She then said that it was up to his grandmother to make that decision, and since that was the case, the toxic old woman just told him that he was forbidden to go with her during that time, and that he should just go home and think about it. That was all the Dung wanted to hear, but it certainly wasn't what the Divine Lady would have liked, but it was her fault for not really making a decision. The old woman said that no one was allowed to mention this subject again, and apparently people could only speak well of Hei Chao so as not to irritate that disposable old woman. The good thing is that I know how it will end, and I guarantee that she will get what she deserves when the time comes. The insect asked Yingxia if she was angry because the disposable old woman was on his side, and because he was more important than Yingxia, that was the main difference between the two of them. He went on to humiliate the first lady, saying that she was just a tool of the Su family, and if she hadn't arranged cooperation with the Kyanshi Corporation, she wouldn't even be eligible to enter the conference room. 
Returning to Sankian, he was on the phone, and someone told him that the owner of that store had asked to see if someone called Mo Yang worked there, and Sankian realized that this name was somewhat familiar. He discovered that Mo Yang was the number one and strongest boss in Yuncheng five years ago, and exactly five years ago, he suddenly disappeared, the number one gangster in Cloud City collapsed overnight, and nobody knows what happened. In his thoughts, he said that unexpectedly the owner of a small store was actually a hero of a powerful generation, and he wondered if it was because of his wife that he had abandoned everything, and to leave it all because of a woman was to be admired. The person on the phone said that they had found new news about Mo Yang, and someone had seen him in an underground casino in the Changbin area, and Sankian said that they would meet that night at that location then. This was because Sankian and Mo Yang had a three-year friendship, and he couldn't just ignore him now, and the person said that Chang Bin wasn't someone easy to deal with. Although he is not well known in Yuncheng, the person on the phone heard that he had some deep friendships with great people, and in this matter, he believed it best not to interfere. However, Sankian asked when the decision was his, and that person was Lin Yang, who apologized for his recent attitude, and the protagonist told him to call him back when he was ready. Then the Divine Lady arrived, who apparently wasn't in a good mood, and he asked why she was so angry, since the problem had been solved, and also asked if her grandmother hadn't complimented her. But she said that Lin Yang took Cheng Gang public to expose what Hei Chao did, but the snake just let him go home to reflect, and she knew that the grandmother favored Hei Chao, but wondered why why she had to be demoted. The bastard Su Hei Chao treated her that way, but the grandmother, she never considered the divine lady's feelings at all, and Sankian swore that she would make that old, washed up snake regret her wrong decision. She then commented that she knew that the person from the day before was Lin Yang, and asked why someone like him helped her, and the protagonist said that he paid him and asked Lin Yang to introduce himself. When she asked how much it cost, he just said that it was around 100,000 or so, and she scowled at that, since that was her annual salary. But in the back of his mind, he wondered what this trivial amount of money was, and if he let Yingxia know the total amount of money on his card, she would definitely have a heart attack. At the Divine Lady's house, he told her that he had to go out that night, and she wondered if he couldn't have gone to see another woman. And although it had been three years since they had become husband and wife, it didn't really feel like a real marriage. She still told herself that she wasn't qualified to ask about the protagonist's private life, and for the first year, she slept with the scissors every night. But this was somewhat pointless, as Sankian showed she had no such intentions, so she gradually relaxed her vigilance. But the scissors were always hidden under her pillow. She thought it was time to put those scissors away, and wondered how a guy like him could resist a beauty like her. In a different place this time, more precisely in this casino, the protagonist was earning a lot of money, and Lin Yang wondered what Sankian had in mind, and wondered where he got the courage to go there without any bodyguards. Not to mention that he didn't know how the protagonist had won so many times in a row, and in the case of Chang Bing, the way he was obstinate, he wouldn't let them get out of there alive. On the cameras, we see that the two of them were being watched the whole time, and this guy was the owner of the establishment, who ordered his security guards to invite the protagonist into the private room. This was only so that he could show him the two methods he had, and we see that the protagonist's friend, who by the way was Mo Yang, together with his wife, were being taken prisoner by this dung. After putting out a cigarette on Mo Yang, he said that back then, when they were fighting together, Mo Yang would never have dreamed that this would happen one day, and his wife was worried about her husband. Unfortunately, she ended up taking a blow, and it was all because of her, according to the insect, and he asked Mo Yang if he knew how hard he had worked for the two of them to work together. However, because of that woman, and for her sake, he said that they would stick together, and despite this, he had abandoned his companions in the past, and the guy wouldn't forgive Mo Yang, striking him a blow, causing him to fall to the ground. After that, he promised to stand up and become the strongest, even stronger than Mo Yang had been in the past, and it had been three years, but he had done everything he could to find Mo Yang. But now that he had finally found him, he wasn't happy, because now Mo Yang was just a disposable being these days, and he could end his life with just one finger. Someone appeared in the room, saying that the two guests he had mentioned had already arrived in the private room, and the insect said it would play with those two first, and then they would continue with Mo Yang. In the VIP lounge itself, he recognized Lin Yang's presence and asked if he had come to his small house to relax, and asked who he was with. Since Lin Yang was standing, the guy sitting down was certainly not a simple figure. 
figure, until the protagonist decided to introduce himself as well. The manure commented that his name was identical to that of the famous son-in-law of the Sioux family, and asked if by any chance he had misunderstood the protagonist's name. But that was exactly what it was, according to the protagonist. The guy from before was surprised that he was really who he thought he was, and that he hadn't expected it. In the end he was just a little idiot, and he didn't really know what the protagonist had offered Lin Yang to make him go there. Then the Dung asked what he was doing there, and immediately the protagonist asked if he had captured Mo Yang, leaving the guy surprised. After that, he asked if Sankian had only come there because of Mo Yang, and he was right, and he had captured Mo Yang, and asked why the protagonist wanted to save him. Sankian then asked if the scum would let his friend go if he set a condition, and he replied that with such a threatening tone, normally people would dare to run, and he was there so he could ask them something. By asking his question, he wanted to know who the protagonist thought he was, and if he was someone who had no money, and he wanted to use the Sioux family to be able to crush him, and it was only for Sankian to try. And Chang Bin would have no regard for the Su family. Rising from his chair, Sankian said that the Su family had no way of stopping him, but he, Han Sankian, was more than enough to deal with that insect. Just you. You really know how to make jokes. I don't mind that Lin Yang has joined the Su family, but it's not a wise move to remove the shields here. Finish quickly, give brother Yang a chance, and break his legs and throw this insect in the trash. That's what the dung from before said. But from the look on Lin Yang's face, that wasn't how things would really turn out. And the insects wondered how the protagonist had dared to act as the bogeyman, and if he was really making fun of them. He told Lin Yang that now was the time for him to save his skin, and if he happened to show up there again, he would break more than just a leg, but it was precisely one of his henchmen who was thrown away. He even crashed into the wall in front of the scum, leaving him startled by the protagonist's strength. And when he looked back, he realized that all his henchmen had fallen to the ground, and the next one would apparently be him. Grabbing the scum by the scruff of the neck, Sankian ordered him to take him to Mo Yang, otherwise he would surely never see the sun rise again. But the Dung still decided to play hard to get and said that the entire Su family would fall into ruin. He still said that Sankian should release him first, until when he realized that he was in no position to demand anything. He said with great difficulty that he would take the protagonist there. After that, we see just the couple from before, and people were surprised to see their boss tied up there, and apparently even Mo Yang and his wife were surprised to see the protagonist right there. He immediately ordered Lin Yang to close the door, and as soon as he did, we saw the scum taking a beating, until he was kissing the floor, as he was feeling very needy. Mo Yang asked why the young protagonist had come there, and he said that seeing as he hadn't opened the restaurant door for a long time, he was afraid to buy fake cigarettes elsewhere, so he found them. The insect still told Sankian to let him go, because he was courting death, and he wouldn't let the protagonist get away with it. But at no point did Sigma let the fly buzz, and made him fall silent again. Suddenly, Mo Young caused his wife to lose consciousness, and Sankian just stayed silent, until the young man asked Lin Yang to hold her for a while. As he held Mo Yang's wife, he said that some things should be resolved cleanly, and he wouldn't want her to see him like that. Referring to Chang, they should also settle their accounts, and realizing that his life was at risk, Dung asked if Mo Yang knew the chain reaction that his death would cause. Not to mention that when the time came, Mo Yang would teach him about the future, and Lin Yang tried to calm the green-haired boy down, saying that his death wouldn't benefit them. However, the protagonist said he was going to cover for him, and it was only for him to do as he pleased, so he decided to do exactly as Sankian said, and the insect's face of despair was the best before his last breath. When the scum had finally left, Sankian asked Lin Yang if his subordinates should have arrived by now, and speaking of them, they said they were surrounded now. I confess that I didn't quite understand what this scene was about, but I think that the guys who were surrounded were actually the henchmen of the young man who was recently cradled, and the others must be Lin Yang's henchmen. At least I think so. Leaving the place, Sankian commented that he had always been curious, and asked why, five years ago, he had suddenly given up his status as Cloud City's number one gangster and gone to live as an ordinary person. According to him, eight years ago, she said she wanted to see how beautiful the city of clouds was, and he spent three years by her side. And five years ago, she said she was tired and wanted to rest, so he threw everything up and firmly accompanied her. 
and in the past, he had told her that if she wanted a city of clouds, he would give it to her, and if she wanted to live an ordinary life, he would give her his position too. Sankian was amazed that he would give up everything for love, but he still said that he couldn't protect his most precious possession. Yet the protagonist said that he had done absolutely everything for his beloved. Returning to the Divine Lady's house, it was already 11 o'clock and Sankian still hadn't returned home, and as incredible as it seemed, the First Lady wondered if her husband was really with another woman. She wondered if she should make a call, and although she and Sankian were married, it wasn't a real marriage, and she wondered if she was too embarrassed to ask something like that, if he had another woman. Until suddenly, she realized that the protagonist had finally arrived home, and she turned over to pretend to be asleep, and Sankian was slowing down so as not to wake his wife, although he still asked if she was asleep. As she didn't answer anything, he thought that she did, and he spoke to himself in a low voice, saying that it was incredible that Mo Yang's attitude, since for a woman, he had really given up everything, and Sankian thought he was really powerful. But he also said that he wasn't strong enough, and Sankian wondered how he could protect his beloved. The Divine Lady was completely happy to hear what her husband had said, because in order to protect her, he wants to become as strong as possible. The next morning, we see these insects, and it turns out they were relatives of the protagonist, and they wanted to know why his father and mother hadn't come to pick him up in person. But he gave the excuse that they were busy, and he was going to take them himself that day. Unfortunately, this gentleman's wife was apparently a snake, and said some things to him that she shouldn't have, until she commented that his sister apparently didn't take him seriously anymore, and he asked Sankian if he had come to pick them up with a cab, but he had actually driven his own car all the way here, and when he saw that it was an Audi, the guy was impressed, while the snake thought that he got that luxury car only because of his wife. Her insect of a son said he was going to drive that car, taking the lead, and asked what qualifications the protagonist had to drive a good car like that. As I said earlier, this family had nothing but insects, and the old man said that his son could drive that car, not least because it wasn't Sankian's car either. When the snake said that he was also in the spotlight, and asked if he hadn't gone to pick them up, how could John Lan have given the protagonist a good car, referring to his parents? However, this left the protagonist completely disgusted, and the insect was just taking pictures in the car, pretending that it was his, until they soon left. After the boy took control of the protagonist's car without his permission, the insect still managed to crash Sankian's car, and his mother's viper ordered him to switch with the protagonist. As the insect had nothing to do, he asked his mother's viper what he should do now, and if she would pay him. But the snake only said that they would talk about it at his uncle's house. When they finally arrived at the site, the protagonist told them that he was going to pick up Yingxia from work, so it was up to them to go up on their own. His uncle, who isn't really an uncle at all, but just the uncle of the protagonist's wife, asked if this was the way to receive guests. But if it were me, I'm sure the three of them would have had a very humiliating time. The jellyfish pretended that everything was fine and told the protagonist to hurry up, until the husband asked what she was doing, and even referred to the protagonist as disposable garbage, asking why she didn't let him take them upstairs. But the rattlesnake was planning to do something in order to harm the protagonist, and I've never seen a man who in my life with so many toxic beings in society. When they went upstairs, the poison anaconda told her husband not to say anything and to leave everything to her, and we soon saw one of the most poisonous caterpillars in the book, which was precisely the first lady's mother. As soon as they entered the rattlesnake's lair, the jellyfish told the first lady's mother that she had already told her not to let the protagonist drive that car, since it was the protagonist himself who bought all three of the cars they owned. The rest of the mummy still blamed the car crash on Sankian, saying that it was a waste of money to let it happen, and unfortunately the tick centipede still believed what his sister-in-law had said. Her son contributed even more, saying that Sankian should only drive an old electric motorcycle, and the scum's father even said that Sankian was useless, and asked how she had the courage to let him drive an Audi. I can't wait to see these insect manures pay dearly for everything they're doing now, and the Jararaka even said that when he came back, she would confront him, and he would pay the bill if he wanted to drive her car again. Dude, this insignificant being just stole the protagonist's car, saying it was hers, and she still thinks she really owns it. That's all the insects would really like to see happen. And after a while, we see the protagonist with his car parked, until some people show up, offending him because he's the Sioux family's son-in-law. These insects also said that he was a disgrace to men, and they complained that he had married Yingxia, who was practically the most beautiful girl in town. 
tired of all this, he simply asked those corpse beetles to tell him what they wanted, because his patience was wearing thin. Apparently the guys didn't like what he'd said very much, and the blonde ordered his brothers to finish him off. But unfortunately for the three of them, they took a beating, and Sankian said that the next time they tried something, the consequences wouldn't be so simple. As soon as they left the scene, the first lady showed up asking why the front of the car was smashed, and the protagonist told her the truth, that her cousin's insect had hit the car while driving. The first lady thought her mother would do something when she found out, but little did she know that the snake had already been tricked by her brother and sister-in-law. Returning home, we saw just the insects from before, and the first lady asked why they were all there, and her father said that given the size of the crash, it couldn't even be called a new car. The snake then simply took the keys from the protagonist's hand again, and even said that since he didn't know how to handle the car, she wouldn't allow him to drive it anymore, even if he touched the car, there was no point in driving it. The insect next to her even asked if he thought that just because Yinxia could make money now, how was he going to solve this? Not to mention that repairs to an Audi were quite expensive. The first lady didn't understand anything that was going on there, and the viper said that he had warned her not to let Sankian drive a good car, and since she didn't listen, now she would know the consequences. The first lady was even going to say something about the car being Sankian's, but she soon realized that this was all just a bunch of crap. Zombies Project even said that if Yinxia tried to speak for the protagonist again, she would make the first lady divorce him now, and the insects tried to ensnare the first lady by bad-mouthing her husband. She was even going to say something to these insects, but the young protagonist simply pulled her close to him, and her mother said that now Yingxia was the support of their family, and Sankian no longer needed to pick her up from work from now on. The viper told the first lady to invite her uncle to dinner that night, so she wouldn't have to go with a nobody, referring directly to the protagonist. What I find incredible is how this girl is completely lacking in attitude to actually defend her husband against her parents so I withdraw her title of first lady. That's because a person who puts the protagonist, who by the way was her husband, below her own parents, she doesn't even deserve to be put first in his life either, it's just a shame that he's such a cattle prod, unfortunately. Sankian said that she had some things to do that evening, so she should really go, and the Supreme Dung commented that the boy was being clever, knowing that he shouldn't show up at the party, so he didn't need to embarrass himself by making excuses. Sankian again asked Yingxia to go to the party and have fun, and on the way to their house, the insect said that her mother was really amazing, since Sankian didn't even contradict a word they said. This piece of sewage even said that Sankian didn't even deserve any position in the Sioux family, so he had no authority to say anything, and her son should be careful not to crash the car again, as he would have no excuse this time to help him. According to the rest of the feces, everything was under control now, and she said that since the Lang family had bought two cars, that meant they must have made a lot of money, and he had to find a way to borrow some. But by borrowed, she meant taking money and not giving it back, and he said that his sister was now well off, so so it was only natural that she should help him, since he was her older brother, and he was going to ask for a total of 200,000 at dinner that day. The rattlesnake said that if she wanted to lend him a note, he could give it to her and get the money first, and he said that now his sister was very rich, and it would be pointless for her to ask for it back, and after all, he was her older brother. During the dinner itself, which was more like lunch as it was still daylight, Dung said that he had recently been going through some problems and would like to borrow some money. Yingxia's mother then asked how much he would like, and raising only two fingers, she thought he would like 2,000, until he said he would like 200,000, leaving her and the rest of the pig surprised. He just asked her to sit down and let him finish talking, and even commented that her family's two cars cost more than a million, which wasn't very much at all, and the snake once again helped to ensnare the rest of the feces. The Red Viper said that Yingix's mother was now a very rich madam, and it all cost a few million, asking if she was hesitant to give them a mere 200,000. The Cobra also said that their parents' relatives said that she was married to a fake rich man, so her brother and she spoke for her, and she could give 200,000 this time, after which none of those relatives would be able to say that she had nothing. After a while in silence, the Poison Viper asked if it was only 200,000, and she would give them the amount, given that this insignificant being didn't even have a hard place to fall, and even said that she would give such a sum. Both Yingxia's father and Yingxia herself are surprised that the rattlesnake would agree to this donation, and suddenly we see the supreme insect getting its ass kicked live. When the manure was completely on the ground, the big man realized that there he was quite excited by the look of it, and the snake asked what was going on, and as he had said he was going to the bathroom, she wanted to know why he was being beaten. 
The walking mummy asked who those guys were and how they dared to touch her son. But the big man commented that her idiot son simply wanted to bother his wife, so it was only natural that the dung should get a beating. When she asked if this was true, the dung said no, and apparently this unnecessary rattlesnake in the story believed his son's version, and commented on the clothes his wife was wearing, saying that she was the one who wanted to seduce her son. This made the big man completely angry and stressed, and he said that even if his wife wasn't wearing that dress, her son had no right to harass his wife, and he even punched the snake in the face twice before. Although that's still not enough for what this rattlesnake really deserved. Unfortunately I'll have to settle for this, and then the insect's father just kept quiet. When the manure was about to continue being beaten relentlessly, the big man said that he really was a good person, and the person who had upset his wife would pay hundreds of thousands. And if by any chance he wasn't able to pay it, he would certainly pay with his own life. And the dung said he didn't have any money, but he did have a car. He could take the car and let the insect go, but Yingixa was upset this time, and decided to speak out, saying that the car was hers, and he didn't even have the right to give it to the fat man, and he should sort it out for himself, and not involve her. The whale out of the water became interested in Yingxia, and told her that he had a lot of money, and as it was only a broken Audi, he wouldn't really take her car. However, she was certainly against it, and he said she wasn't qualified to say anything, and none of the women he wanted could actually run away. Then the snake said that she was from the Sioux family, and the Sioux family would never let him have Yingxia, and from the look on the fat man's face, the Sioux family didn't have a good reputation with him. The snake was the one who got hit this time, and he says that just saying something about the Sioux family couldn't even help them in this situation. Besides, the Sioux family had no power now, and no one was really afraid of them. Trembling completely this time, the protagonist's wife said she was warning him not to cause any more trouble, or he might regret it bitterly. The fat man got even more excited, and said that he liked strong girls like her, but she shouldn't worry, as he still had some guests, and would come back for her when he'd finished his business. He left two guards there so that no one could escape, so they stood guard, and this time, the snake asked what they would do now, and told them to call her grandmother and ask the elders to come there, and maybe they would sort it out. However, the jellyfish's husband said that his mother would never intervene in anything, and that fat guy was definitely not so easy to deal with. Outraged, his wife asked what he was talking about, and if he really wanted their daughter to go with that pig, until Yingxia herself asked if she didn't know what kind of person her grandmother was. She was only strong in the Sioux family, and she could never offend those people for Yingxia, and she said that he was the only one who could really save her, and when her parents asked who it was, she said that it was Sankian. The funny thing is that when the chips were down, she wanted to call the protagonist to help her, but when it came to defending him from her toxic parents and relatives, she was the first to hesitate and keep quiet. If it were up to me, I'm sure this girl would have been alone a long time ago, regardless of whether she was beautiful or not, because the law of gravity applies to everyone, and everything that is firm one day ends up on the ground and becomes old and wrinkled, if you know what I mean. The viper asked if her daughter was going crazy, or if she wanted a coin to tear up, and if she was really hoping that Sankian would be able to help her. The insect also said that Yingxia was insulting him, and she herself asked him to help her solve the problem. And if he didn't want to help, she should just tell him, and she didn't need to humiliate him. She immediately ordered the manure to shut up, and told him to stop being an idiot, because if it wasn't for him involving her in this, she wouldn't have to worry about him. After that, she called the cattle, and the cattle answered immediately, and when she asked where he was, we saw him at home having his meal. Yingxia told the cattle that she was in trouble, and asked if he could come and help her, and the little dog, without thinking twice, told his owner that he would be there in a few moments, making her very happy. Her mother told her to call her grandmother again, and asked her how she had been able to bet everything on the Sankian. But the young woman believed in her husband, not least because the ownerless puppy would definitely follow her orders. Yes, I'm disgusted with this girl, not least because the guy does everything for her, and she's not even capable of recognizing and defending him from his toxic relatives. In the room next to the one they were in, the fat man was telling Yang that he was a fan of his, and hoped to get on well with him, and even Chen Gang was nothing compared to him, and that Cloud City was now his. Yang said that if he had the chance, he should treat the fat man like a brother, and he thought that last time it was because of Chang Bin, and Bro Han was very disappointed with Yang's performance. Besides, if Mo Yang wants to return to the underworld, how could he be ready to compete with him for the City of Clouds? And suddenly, someone burst down the door of that place, and it was precisely the protagonist cattle, 
And yes, I'm disgusted with him too. When Yang saw him there, he asked why the boy was there, and the fat man asked if Yang really called that guy his brother, and he told the fat man to shut up, as he was in no position to say anything. Sankian asked if that guy was a friend of Yang's, and he said he was just a drinking buddy, and the protagonist asked how he dared to touch his wife. After that, Yang smashed the bottle of booze over the fat man's head, and in his thoughts, he said that that whale out of the water made Sankian even more disappointed in him. Without understanding anything, the giant insect asked why Yang had done it, and Yang asked if he had eaten feces, then asked what he had in mind to touch Sankian's wife. Leaving, Sankian asked if Yang could take care of it, and he said yes, and returning to the next room. The snake said that Sankian couldn't be trusted, and there wasn't even a cab outside. So he must have been hiding at home and didn't have the courage to come out, and asked how his daughter could trust him. And the snake said that only she believed in the protagonist, but offended him, as always. She also told her sister-in-law about her incompetence in finding a way out of the situation, and that her son was seriously injured, so he needed to go to hospital. Ingixia just listened to them quietly for a while, until just as she was about to finally open her mouth, the door opened, and they went into shock thinking it might be the fat man from before. But it was just Sankian, making Inxia happy, and he immediately told them to leave. And the tick, who doesn't value his own life, asked which house Sankian was returning to, as if it was really any of his business. He also said that the fat man was outside with several guards, and once inside, he would never be able to get out. But let's just say that the protagonist played along. Ignoring the insect completely, they were soon outside, and the manure realized that the guys weren't there to end his life. Until suddenly, he noticed something different, they were kneeling on the ground, even all those who were helping the fat man himself, until at one point, Yingxia asked the cattle what had happened, and why they were kneeling there. According to the protagonist, looking at the fat man, he said that they might have fallen there accidentally, wanting the fat man to confirm his story, and when the insect was wondering if he would agree, he was intimidated only by the protagonist aura. As he was now too terrified to refuse anything, he simply said yes and the ground there was very slippery, so they fell. The big man wasn't lying, though, because they got into a fight and Sankian once again called his wife to leave, and it was clear that she would never believe such an act. Leaving, she wondered what Sankian had done, and surely he must have told someone to finish them off, but that didn't matter much since he did it exactly because of her. At Yingxia's house again, we see Yingxia's snake of a mother complaining to her husband for daring to scold her, and he asks her who told her to promise to give 200,000 to her own brother. She went on to say that Yingxia could make more money in the company, and 200,000 wasn't much, but he clearly said that this was embezzlement of public funds, and from the look on her face, even she didn't care about Yingxia's safety. Incredibly, this unusable mummy threw herself on the floor like an annoying child, saying that she didn't want to live anymore, and wondered why she had married such a useless person about giving up living. I can't wait for her to actually do it, and I think she forgot that her husband wasn't the only useless one in the story, since she's nothing but a bloodsucker. She even had the courage to ask her husband that if it weren't for him, she would be so ashamed of her family, and even her family trash talked them in secret. According to this viper with crocodile tears, she was also fighting for his reputation, and he was throwing a thousand knives and still accusing her, and if there's one thing this one doesn't know how to do, it's act well. She went on to say that they were going to collect the money the next day, and asked what they were going to do now, and she didn't want to live anymore, because being alive at the moment was useless, and her whole life had been for nothing. I think someone has forgotten that once you're nothing more than a parasite who only cares about taking money even from your own daughter, you usually can't expect a truly prosperous future. Yingxia told her mother to stop crying, making her finally shut her damn mouth, and she said she would get the money for her mother. On her way out, she ran into Sankian, and he asked her if her uncle wanted to borrow money again. So she decided to play dirty with him, immediately giving him a hug, and with tears in her eyes, asked if he could help her again. Since the guy is too much of a cattle prod and doesn't know how to put limits on his own wife, of course he was going to help, and he asked her if her uncle wanted the 200,000, and she said yes. But Sankian didn't have to worry, because she would pay the 200,000 back, and let's say he doubted it, and she said that if he didn't believe her, she would write a loan receipt. She promised for her honor and her pride that she would return the 200,000 to her husband. But he said that his money was her money, and it didn't make any difference whether it was 200,000 or 2 million, as long as it was for her. 
and kissing her on the forehead as a form of supreme respect for her. He asked her how she had the courage to use the word loan to speak to him. However, she refused to accept it that easily, and she insisted on writing out a loan receipt. And suddenly, she asked if he had just recently said two million, asking how much money he had. And according to him, it was a little over two million only, and in a very different place this time. We see the protagonist complaining about having to give advance notice if he wanted to withdraw an amount over 100,000, and he wasn't supposed to need notice with that card. The unintelligent attendant asked if he really thought he still had any privileges with that car, and she told him that she had been working there for almost six months and had never seen that kind of bank card, wondering if he had gone to the wrong bank. Sankian then said that it wasn't really a privilege, but if her president saw him, he would certainly help count the ballots himself, and she said that her window wasn't a place for him to brag, so it wasn't for him to hold up other people's business. As she was doubting this, he asked if she could call her president now, so she could see that he really wasn't just bragging. Disgusted, she asked why her president was going to see just him, and she was warning him to get out of there while it was still possible, otherwise she would call security. Suddenly someone came up and asked what was going on and it was the director of that bank. And the clerk, with a lack of intelligence, said that the person wanted to withdraw 200,000, and she told him to give notice, but he was still there. The director was very kind to the protagonist, and told him that if he needed to give notice to withdraw more than 100,000 yuan, if he wanted to withdraw 200,000, he would have to wait until the next day. Showing her his card, he commented that perhaps she could change her thoughts after looking at it, and as soon as she saw it, she was impressed and initially speechless. Running out of there as soon as she spotted that card, she was soon in front of the protagonist, but very breathless from running, and she said that his business could definitely be settled at that very moment. He then asked when he could withdraw the money, and she said that she could withdraw it right now, and told him to go to the VIP room, and she could withdraw the money for him, and apologize for what had happened before, and hoped that the boy could forgive her. What's more, the director immediately ordered the attendant to apologize to the gentleman, and if she delayed things, she would no longer be able to keep her job. As soon as she apologized, people wondered who that young man was, and he really did look incredible. And it seemed that this young master wanted to withdraw the money discreetly, but he didn't expect to be treated like this by the officials. People even said it was time for that rattlesnake attendant to drop her snobbery, and she got nothing more than she really deserved, showing us that she really was worthless. After a while, the principal said goodbye to the young protagonist, and in her thoughts, she said that he was very handsome and rich, and it was very likely that he was a young Yun Chang master. Come to think of it, she was beautiful, physically attractive and mature, and he didn't even have any interest in her, giving us the look of someone who really wasn't happy about it. After that, she immediately told her attendant to go home and wait for news, and the snobbish girl asked her principal what she had done wrong, and if he had asked her to reprimand her. The director then asked how she could serve someone like him, and she was suspended because she didn't have the basic knowledge of a bank, and asked what qualifications she had for that job. The girl didn't understand anything, so the principal decided to draw it for her to understand better, and the bank card in his hand was an exclusive customization of the bank, exclusive for those who deposited more than 10 billion. The girl certainly didn't know where to put her face now, and once back at home, the protagonist said that he had brought that money for Yingxia. But immediately the treacherous viper took the bag full of money, opened it just to check that it really wasn't any trolling, and said that they still had some things to do, so they had to leave first. She said that Sankian would accompany them, and her husband was thinking to himself, indignant at what she had done and lending him 200,000, not to mention the fact that they didn't even say thank you, and just took the money and left. He still wondered how she could think that they would actually return anything, and on the way, the insect told his mother not to get too tired, and that she should let him hold the money too. But if he slept while they were in the car, she wouldn't know what to do if he happened to lose the money, and the boy wanted to take a look, since he had never seen so much money in his life. As Sankian watched everything through the car's rearview mirror, Dung asked what he was looking at, and if by any chance he had never seen so much money in his life. The protagonist then pretended that he had never really seen so much money, and he commented to his aunt that he had heard there were a lot of bus thieves these days, and she could end up losing the money. The jellyfish asked how he could dare threaten her like that, and when they got to the bus stop, the protagonist decided to make a call, and the person on the phone said that the person he had asked to meet had already been found. 
With everything ready, he thought it was a real shame that he wouldn't be able to see this show in person. And on the bus itself, we saw the insects there, in the background, until at a specific stop, we saw these gentlemen getting on. The driver also commented that he was really greedy, because even outside the bus stop people were still getting on. And after that, when the bus finally started, the guy from before practically fell on the dung. The viper was outraged by what he did, even though the guy apologized for it, and he just said that he was holding on tight when the bus started moving fast, and again apologized for it. After that, someone else helped him up, and after saying goodbye and apologizing, the viper glared at the gentleman, and she didn't even let go of the bag for a second. However, when they reached their destination, she began to wonder where her money was, leaving everyone there with their feet in the grave afterwards. Returning to Sankian, the person on the phone had said that the money had arrived, and he would send it to the protagonist the next day. And the protagonist thought that it really was time to teach the insects a lesson, and his money wasn't so easy to take. After this whole situation was resolved, Yingxia said they were going out to eat that night, and he asked her why she wanted to eat out all of a sudden and she said it was to thank him for lending her the money. She also said that she had booked all the rooms in the Grand Hyatt Hotel in the UFO building, and in the building itself, she was complaining that her booking was made for half past five in the afternoon, and it was already half past five, and the place was still completely full. The guy only apologized to her, and she could only book the place when no one was there. But it was currently full, and if she wanted to wait, she should please go to the restroom. Otherwise, she was simply asked to leave, and he had no shortage of guests like her, and she said that it was more than clear that she had booked the table there, and now he was simply asking her to leave. She refused to leave, and asked what he could do with her, and if she was really looking for trouble, he would call security so he could get her out. Now she started to drop the ball, and again it was up to the protagonist to take control of the situation. But this time I support what he did, since she had actually made the reservations. Sankian asked if the insect had said that they were causing trouble out of the blue, and according to the young man, that was exactly it. And even if he had booked that place, if Hitler's mustache hadn't come to meet them, they would have had to wait there. So they were supposed to leave if they didn't want to accept what he, the Hitler mustache, had offered. And that got Sankian a bit excited, and he said he would let him see how unreasonable that kind of harassment really was. The unjust manure told his henchmen to get those two people out of there who were causing trouble, and the first one was intent on hurting the protagonist. But he dodged easily, and by the time he hit back, the guy easily lost his heart. As soon as one of the dungmen was kneeling on the ground, Yingixa began to stare at him in awe, wondering if he was really the Sankian she knew. He referred to everyone there, and said that this was just beginning. And then the manure told the two who were left to attack the boy at the same time. But with just a swing of his arm, he finished them both off. Now the insect started to get scared, and asked the protagonist not to come any closer, because if he dared to cause trouble, he wouldn't do well in the great Hyatt court. The young man immediately told the manure to call his boss, and suddenly, someone gave an order for everyone to leave, leaving the insect surprised, and that redhead was precisely his boss. Manure told his boss that that explosive kid had caused trouble and hurt the security guards, and when he realized that Sankian had defeated the three of them with his bare hands, he took an interest in the protagonist. He even said that since he could handle those three security guards, he was just perfect, and if he's interested in following him, he'd give him 30,000 yuan a month. But Sankian asked who the insect thought he really was. Clearly, this made him completely indignant at the protagonist's comment. He said that he was a very talented and caring person, but now he didn't care about the protagonist anymore. So he was supposed to kneel down right away and apologize to him, and then he could just pretend that none of this had happened. But Sankian said that it was his people who had told him that his wife was causing problems. So basically, he just showed them what the problems were, and the right thing to do was for them to get down on their knees, so that the protagonist could think about whether he was really going to forgive them. Again, Yingxia was in awe of her husband, and she was enjoying the feeling of seeing an overbearing CEO. But on the redhead's side, he didn't like what the boy had said at all, so she asked Sankian to just let them go. But he told her not to be afraid, because no one would hurt her while she was with him. And that made the guy from before completely disgusted with this attitude. Not to mention that he was completely ignored too. After that, he ordered the guy from before to finish off the protagonist, and he wanted to see how much he could really fight. 
and we see that this guy was indeed quite big. We also discovered that this Dung follower used to be the fighting champion among the special forces, so it was for Sankian to prepare to meet heaven. The guy even admired the protagonist's courage, but Sankian just told him to fight if he wanted to, and asked if he hadn't been polished yet, by which he meant that he would finish off the extra. After that, he quickly went after Sankian, and when his blow was about to hit him, the red-haired man thought that he had even dared to provoke the big man, and it seemed that the protagonist really didn't want to go on living. But the protagonist quickly dodged the guy's blow, and using his legs to propel himself forward, he landed a single knee to the guy's chin, causing him to black out completely. When he was completely down, the redhead was amazed that the protagonist had finished off that giant with just one blow too, and the protagonist prepared to teach the redhead a lesson now. He even said that the insect could call more people if he wanted to, and he would certainly finish them all off, and since he was so arrogant, he would certainly pay for it, according to the insect. The person he was going to call now was not someone he could really face, and he should prepare to get down on his knees and beg for mercy. Meanwhile, Yingxia was simply in awe of her husband, saying that he really was very powerful. And after a while, we see Yang arriving on the scene, along with his henchmen too. He wondered what had happened to make the chief law officer so desperate to go after him, and whether it was really that urgent. Arriving at the venue, he was greeted by the redhead, who said that the child had definitely messed up his place, beaten up his security guards and bodyguards, and arrogantly made him shout. That's why he had invited Yang there and he knew that he hated those kinds of powerful people. And as soon as Yang saw the protagonist with his wife, the young man was simply speechless. With that, all the henchmen went towards the protagonist, and the red-haired man thought that now there would definitely be a great show there. But they all bowed to the protagonist, leaving the manure from before completely unresponsive. The protagonist asked Yang if that insect had called him out of the blue, and it was exactly that. And with that, Sankian asked if Yang knew what he should do then. He called those insects a bunch of idiots, and told his brothers to put some sense into that manure, so they began to teach the scum a lesson. After the beating the redhead had received, he asked why they were beating him, and after a while, the beating was finally stopped. Sankian then asked him if he was satisfied with such reasonable problems, and he said yes, he was satisfied, and asked the guy from before if there was any room left for him and his wife to have dinner. After seeing everyone take a beating, and the size of the protagonist's influence, the guy definitely quickly arranged arranged a place for the two of them to have dinner, and so Sankian left with his wife. As the redhead wondered who the boy was, he asked Yang what that was exactly, and he told the redhead that he would tell him just one thing. He was definitely looking at death, and he began to wonder who it was that he had provoked, for the number one of the Yuncheng gang to fear him so much. We continue with the protagonist's friend telling the insect to admit his mistakes if he didn't want to be deleted from the story right then and there, and perhaps Sankian could forgive him for what happened that day. Although he was initially too surprised to really say anything, he began to beg Sankian to forgive him, causing his employee not to believe what he was seeing with his own eyes. Yingxia then asked Sankian who he really was since he had defeated a bodyguard with a single blow, and Lin Yang had sent people to help him teach Lei Chuan a lesson, and now Lei Chuan was on his knees begging for his forgiveness. But as to what kind of person he really was, she would only know in the future, and she wondered if he wasn't planning to spend a lot of money again, and even how much it would cost to pay Lin Yang and that large group of people as well. But even if he did spend money, it was simply impossible for people like Lei Chuan to apologize to him, even more so in public. He then asked his wife if the person couldn't stand up to him, if it wasn't normal to simply admit defeat. But she still didn't believe it, and even if Lei Chuan couldn't stand up to him, he wouldn't bang his head on the ground to apologize. She then said that she hadn't imagined that her husband had such a masculine side, since he always listened more to things and humiliated her by keeping quiet. After saying something in Yingxia's ear, she ended up getting embarrassed and immediately pushed him away, after which she asked why he was making such a fuss that day. And according to him, it was because they said his wife was causing unnecessary problems, so he showed the insects what an unnecessary problem it really was. Yingxia asked if one day she became too eccentric, would he still be like that with her too? And he said yes, since he is a cattle, and no matter how eccentric she was, he would always protect her. You're nothing but cattle. In a different location this time. We see him reunited with his in-laws, who weren't even worth the last meal I made, and the envious snake was immediately jealous to see a huge
huge house, apparently the same as one of her husband's friends. All the houses in that condominium were huge, and they were also very expensive, not to mention that the price of a house there was around 21,000 per square meter, and she said that his friend had only called him there to show off. She also said that Tang's eldest son even chased Yingxia once, and this time, she shouldn't have taken the protagonist there. And on top of that, she called him miserable and worthless, and guess what? Yingxia just kept quiet while her mother humiliated her husband again. I really like to know what this cattle is still doing with a person who has always put him second in her life. Apparently this protagonist has no self-respect. Inside the other insect's house too, we see him announcing that his friend has arrived. And according to the patriarch of the Su family, he commented that his friend's life was really great now. But Dung said he was just blessed, and his son was in a Kyanshui industry, with an annual salary of a million. And when he spotted the protagonist, he asked his friend if he regretted it now. This was because if they had become in-laws at the beginning, Yingxia could be living happily now. And some comments began to be made that Lao Su, who was Yingxia's father, couldn't prevent this from happening. This was because he didn't know how to make decisions. Otherwise Yingxia wouldn't have suffered so much, while others wondered if his son-in-law was still washing dishes and cooking in his house. As they mocked the Su family, the two of them were disgusted, and in Yingxia's thoughts she commented that they were all adults, yet they continued to ridicule the younger ones. This time it was the protagonist who decided to speak out, saying that their new house was currently being renovated, and when it was ready, he would also send him an invitation to visit their new home. When Yingxia heard this, she was apparently quite surprised, and the Supreme Snake said that no one would treat him like an idiot if he didn't open his mouth. He then said that he had bought a new house a while ago, but he planned to surprise her, and he wasn't going to reveal everything now, and on the 15th of next month, she was supposed to invite the insect out front to play in her new house. Meanwhile, the rumors seemed to have died down a bit, but in the back of his mind, he was saying that he knew Sankian was just trying to show off, and besides his family being small, he still bought a new house. Afterwards, the insect said that he would definitely check it out in person on the 15th of next month, but that everyone who was there should go there too. The comments continued after the insect's pronouncement, leaving Yingxia's parents silent for a while. But Sankian told them not to worry, as they certainly wouldn't be disappointed. A while later, while Sankian was running with Yingxia, they spotted the house she would like to renovate, and she commented that since that mountainside cottage was bought, nothing had happened so far. He then asked why they had suddenly started rebuilding even earlier that day, and the protagonist commented that perhaps they were anxious to move. After that, Yingxia said that her mother had treated him very badly the day before, and apologized for it, and saying that, even more so in front of Tang Chang'ai, who was her father's friend, was very complicated for sure. According to her, she knew that yesterday he had done it for their own good, but her mother acted contemptuous again, asking if he had gone mad or was just an idiot. She also said that they were already too embarrassed, and asked if he couldn't see that Tang was just trying to hit them, and the rattlesnake asked how they were going to move into a new house on the 15th. The humiliations continued, and she said that she was really blind, and should have left a great man like the son of Dung from before for her daughter, but out of stupidity, she married her daughter off to a loser like the protagonist. And yes, once again Yingxia hasn't moved a straw to be able to defend her real husband and go against her mother. And what makes me most angry is that this protagonist is so stupid as to stay with someone like that. But since the cattle were professional cattle, he simply pulled his wife close to him and said that there was no point in her apologizing so early in the morning. And over the last three years, he had gotten used to it, so what she said simply didn't matter. What's more, he hadn't lied about the house, he'd actually bought a used house, and excited about it, she asked where it was. Pointing to a spot nearby, he said that it was in a place where she would be able to have the best view of the sky, and be very close to nature, and she would be able to see this every day. And the house he was referring to was precisely the one she had shown interest in a few chapters ago. And although it was her dream, she definitely didn't believe him. Yingxia added that she hadn't expected his lying skills to grow so much in recent days, and perhaps even the ghosts might end up believing his nonsense. Running away, she called him to come home soon, as someone was waiting for her to go shopping, and he said that on the 15th she would definitely know everything, and he hoped she would really like the surprise he had prepared. At the entrance to the village itself, where the protagonist bought his house, he was stopped by this guard, who said that his car wasn't registered, so he simply couldn't enter. When Sankian realized that he 
had forgotten. He said that if the guard didn't remind him, he would forget completely. And soon we see someone honking several times at the protagonists. This manure in a Lamborghini complimented the protagonist's car negatively, and still dared to run around the grounds of the country house, until the insect decided to get out of the car and head straight for the protagonist. The guard only asked him not to get angry, as he would have sank Ian out of the way soon, and he went on to talk about the protagonist's car, telling him to get that old can out of his way right away. Sankian then said that the donkey dung accidentally kicked his car, and it ended up breaking down, so he would definitely have to pay for it. Disgusted, the insect said, Looking at you, you must be the head of a small company, right? Believe it or not, I'll make you unable to blend into Yun Cheng with a single word. It's just a broken car, what can you do if I break it even more? When Sankian asked him what he would do if he said that he was the owner of the place, the dung began to laugh at the protagonist's face. And if he was the owner of the place, then the dung there was the head of the Cloud City. With that said, Sankian just smiled, and the guard spoke kindly to the protagonist, saying that he hadn't received a message to allow Sankian to enter. He then kindly asked him to at least move the car out of the way, which he did, while the fly from earlier offended the protagonist as he went through the gate. While the guard was just observing the situation, he received a call from his captain, and apparently he was going to allow the protagonist to enter. Running towards Sankian, he said that just now the captain had called him and allowed him to enter, after which he apologized for offending the young protagonist recently. But he said it was okay, because he was just following the rules, and the guard commented to him that he was scared, and it was really unbelievable that he was the mystery buyer of the villa on the mountain that was bought for almost 100 million. A while later, we saw the fly from before with his companion, and she said that it was an excellent place to live, and he commented that his village wasn't too bad either. If she'd like to visit now, it would definitely be a great idea, and the protagonist immediately interrupted them, saying that they would need his permission. Sankian then asked how the fly had dared to enter his property, and reminded Dung that it was he who owned the place before. Although he looked surprised at first, he quickly changed to a laughing face, not believing that he was actually the owner of that mountain villa, since it was worth almost 100 million and he was driving a broken down Audi. Sankian commented that he had heard that the Yunding villa on the side of the mountain had strict rules, and the area around each villa was private. Trespassing was strictly forbidden and violators would be severely punished. The insect Dung even had the audacity to tell Sankian Sankian not to think that the owner of the mountain village was actually decorating that house because he was going to live there, and he then acted very rudely towards the owner of the place itself. But before the situation could get any worse, someone interrupted the fight that was about to break out, and the captain of the guards asked what was going on there. The insect from before said that it had caught the protagonist trying to pretend to be the owner of that village, so it was supposed to take him away. And as soon as the captain saw who it was, he simply couldn't believe his eyes. The captain immediately bowed respectfully to Sankian, asking if the insect next door was invading his area, and threatening the protagonist's life. Sankian could be sure that the people who sneaked under the area of the mountain villages would definitely be punished, causing the insect to become petrified. So frightened was it by the way the captain spoke to Sankian. He asked the cattle master if he really owned that village, and how it was possible, since he drove a broken down car, and yet qualified to live there. The protagonist only answered with another question, saying that if he wasn't the owner of that village, who else would be? When the captain saw that the fly dung from before was familiar, he asked him if he was from the Kong family. And as the Kong family had lived there for a long time, the captain asked him if he didn't know the rules yet, and he would go with the guards immediately. Dung, realizing he was in a tricky situation, thought he was ruined, and the property in the Yunding village district next to the mountain was also owned by Tianjia, the richest man in Yunchen, and was not something he could afford. He immediately said to himself that he had provoked the wrong person, and the person who could spend 100 million to buy that mountain villa, he really didn't know who was behind it. He not only invaded his private property, but also insulted him like a dog, and he began to wonder what he should do to get out of this situation. At a certain point, he realized that there was only one real way to resolve the whole mess, and he was soon on his knees on the ground begging the protagonist for his forgiveness. But apparently, he wouldn't get out of this situation so easily if it weren't for the guards, and Sankian commented that he had just moved in, so he didn't want to have a bad relationship with his neighbors. He was just misinterpreting the insect from before, and asked 
asked the captain to allow the fly to be freed, and since it was precisely Sankian who was asking, the captain decided to drop the matter, but the dung was supposed to take it as a lesson. The unusable being even got teary-eyed and thanked the protagonist immediately, saying that if he didn't show mercy, it would definitely be a very unhappy day. He introduced himself as Kong Wu, and if there was anything he could do for the protagonist in the future, he shouldn't hesitate to call him, as he would immediately go to Sankian's rescue. Outside the house of the Supreme Rattlesnake, who was that toxic old woman, Yingxia's mother said that that day was the Su family dinner, and he'd better be an idiot for her and not talk nonsense. And although it's nothing new, Yingxia simply said that Sankian already knew all this, instead of actually defending her husband. Can anyone tell me how such a person could still deserve to be loved by the protagonist? And how come this guy hasn't become a man and left this toxic family? Honestly, I don't understand it, but let's get on with the story. Yingxia's cousin was the one who welcomed them, and he had heard that cooperation with the Kayanshui industry had been fine recently, and he didn't expect it to really be at peace. She retorted immediately, saying that without him, it would have really improved a lot, and the other said that it was really a shame, and no matter how much she did, it was simply useless. Even if he didn't do anything at home, the president's position would remain his in the future. But if she couldn't get the president's job, she would still earn enough. Just a few days after she became responsible, she actually bought a car and a house, and even said that her hands and feet were dirty, asking if she wasn't afraid that her grandmother would check up on her in the future. With that, she ignored the insect, and told it to let her grandmother check who really had dirty hands and feet in that family. At the dinner table itself, the same dung as before told Yingxia, that her family had bought two cars, and asked if she wasn't planning to talk to her grandmother about it, as if that broken down old woman really needed to know anything. The rest of the mummy next to him even made an envious comment, because it didn't take her long to buy two cars after she rose through the ranks. The old woman who was already in her grave asked if her granddaughter had really bought two cars, and she said yes, and that her father drove one while Sankian drove the other so that he could work. But she just forgot to say that the protagonist was the one who bought the cars, since she didn't even have the money to buy a set of wheels for the car her father drives. Vigneur then said that she had bought an Audi on her way to and from work, and she was the person responsible, not a little figure, but she immediately told her grandmother that she had bought the car with her own money, not the company's. The bugs kept prodding Yingxia, doubting her ability to really afford a million dollar car, and others started commenting on that too, as well as other things, like her breaking the rules and things like that. The insect also said that there was something else too, and not only had she bought two cars, but he had heard that she had recently moved house, and that she would be living in a new house on the 15th of next month. They weren't notified of this matter, and they didn't know if it was because of a guilty conscience, and the comments only got worse about the person with no attitude, and yes, I'm referring to Yingxia. Incredibly, the old rattlesnake from before simply said that Yingxia would have to give her a perfect explanation, but this useless being forgot that she has no right to have a say in anyone's life but her own. Someone needs to remind this old woman that she's nothing more than an unusable character in this story. And to continue, Yingxia said that if she thought she received money from the company, she could simply check the company's accounts herself, or she herself should go back now and get the records. And she even asked, probably to her insect of a cousin, if he really had the courage to confront her. Apparently he was embarrassed, and asked her if that was really necessary, then said, who doesn't know your family's situation? Suddenly you have the money to buy a car and a house, could could it be that the money just fell out of the sky? Finally the cattle decided to act, and getting up, he said that the money was all his to buy a car, and a house, then asked if he really had a problem with it. Although the two pigs from before were initially surprised by Sankian's attitude, they immediately began to mock him, as well as saying various things that greatly offended the young protagonist. In addition to them, the other people who were there also started talking badly about the protagonist, and the useless rattlesnake asked who it was that gave him permission to speak, and he was supposed to shut up immediately, but she said it in a much ruder way. Yingxia's cousin even said that Sankian only wanted to pretend to be a rich master, and she shouldn't worry about getting the protagonist to shut up. Besides, looking at him, he was smiling, and had really convinced her, and he asked Sankian why he didn't go to the battlefield to block some bullets. The young cattle, this time with a look of contempt, said that the insect there was just a joke in his eyes too, making him angry, and was still about to strike the protagonist. Sankian wondered if that pig would really want to fight him again, and commented that it was a real shame that he really wasn't a worthy opponent. 
leaving a little leftover swill disgusted with life. The old woman, who was about to be buried alive, ordered the insect to stop and sit down, which it did, but she asked her grandmother if it wasn't obvious that Yingxia had embezzled large sums of money. If she let Yingxia go this time, he asked how she would be able to control other people in the future, and she immediately told him to shut up. The old woman commented that he wanted her to get everyone's account records, and asked if he thought she was stupid not to see what they were secretly doing, and apparently the others started to sound cold after that. Leaving there, the zombie dung said that they could eat without her, and the two commented to each other that Yingxia had put them in a complicated situation while her cousin said that she used a method that even her grandmother had to let go of, and the snake said that Yingixa couldn't stay there for long. If that happened, she would certainly use other methods to be able to deal with them in the future, and the disposable piece of garbage told her not to worry, and he could go back to the company the following month and make her be embarrassed for good. One of the insects there asked Yingxia's father why he wasn't talking about their new house, and when he was actually going to invite them. While others said that as his brother and sister, they had to congratulate him on his new home, and he finally got out of that miserable house, so everyone would be able to see his new home. The rest of the pigs still said that he had allowed them to know the location, while this dung leader said that such a mysterious secret was probably fear of embarrassment in talking about it. Sankian interrupted the nasty comments immediately, and said that there would be a car to pick them up at the right time, so they would naturally know where it was. But about the place, it's very special, and ordinary cars don't get in. And the dung king asked if he meant that their cars were ordinary, and Sankian asked Yingxia if she wanted to invite the old woman too. Meanwhile, the rest of the wash said that he had been in the Sioux family home for three years, and asked if he even understood one little rule of the scrawny old woman. Only wealthy families went to the area of the villas on Yunding Mountain, and he asked if he could really go and buy a house there, and apparently Yingix's mother was disgusted by what Sankian was saying. Completely disgusted this time, she said that Sankian talked too much, and asked if his mouth was panicking, but he said that he only thought it necessary to inform that old woman, and if she didn't go, she would surely regret it. But Dung immediately said that Sankian's invitation wasn't really necessary, and he rejected the invitation for the old mummy. And finally, we got a cut to the house of Yingxia again. Unfortunately, it seemed that a very big argument was taking place there, and the snake from before asked Sankian if he was really enjoying himself that day, and if he couldn't even control his own mouth. If he didn't speak, no one would treat them like idiots, and originally, she had hoped to rent a decent second-hand house to fool Tang Cheng. But now, everyone in the Su family thinks they're going to buy a house in the mountain alley. She told her attitudeless daughter to divorce Sankian immediately, otherwise she wouldn't even have to call her mother anymore. And finally, she decided to take action, and said that she was the one who was married to Sankian, and wouldn't divorce him just because of her. Clearly this comment made the protagonist happy, but apparently the snake from before didn't like it very much, and she asked what he had done with her daughter. She still ordered him to leave, and she didn't want to see him again and he wasn't to expect to live in the Sioux family just yet, and Yingxia said that what she and Sankian had said that day was only true. The car was bought by Sankian, and even the 200,000 lent to her uncle was hand Sankian's money, and now she simply wanted to take it away. The snake then asked what her daughter was talking about, and asked if her daughter would really lie to her just to help her husband. The shrew even told Sankian that this was all his problem, and she didn't care what method he actually used, regardless of the rent or the issue to be resolved. If he didn't solve this problem, she would definitely make Yingxia divorce him. But I believe that this snake would only be doing the protagonist a favor, since his wife is good for nothing but keeping quiet while people humiliate him. In a different place this time, Yingxia asked her husband why he was inviting her to dinner, and if it was some kind of special occasion or something. He just said that the next day was the 15th, and and he was supposed to let her take him to her new house that night. And she asked where the new house was, since her parents were going crazy, and he wasn't looking forward to it at all. He asked if he hadn't shown it to her last time, and she asked if he was referring to the villa on the side of the mountain in the Yunding Mountain Villa area. She also said that it was too late for him to be joking about such things, not to mention that her classmates and her parents, as well as her relatives, would be there the next day, but he still didn't want to talk to her. He only said that what he had said was true, but she simply didn't believe anything he had said, until suddenly, someone apparently recognized Yingxia standing there. 
This insect was the son of Yingxia's father's friend, if I'm not mistaken, who was interested in the protagonist's wife in the past. He also commented that he hadn't expected to find them there, and Yingxia confirmed my suspicions from before. And he really was the son of her father's friend, and the snake next to him asked if it was her who was Su Yingxia. Clearly she was silent after that question, and she was grateful that Yingxia was no longer with Tang Long, otherwise she could never have found a boyfriend as good as him. He even aggrandized himself only because of his annual salary of 1 million, and said that he wasn't considered excellent because of that, and was far from his goals really. Noticing the presence of the protagonist there too, Sankian only said that it was a pity he hadn't taken a pen with him, so he could give an autograph to the scum from before. But he said he didn't want an autograph from the Su family's useless first son-in-law, and he really admired the protagonist, because it was embarrassing to be scolded by all of Yun Cheng, and even have the courage to leave the house. Yingixa said that if the rest of the wash had nothing more to talk about, then he should just get out of there and not disturb their dinner. He asked Yingxia if she really didn't feel ashamed while she was with Sankian, and she only said that she could eat with whoever she loved, and it was none of his business. He only said that he was now employed on the estate of the first emperor, and he would still have the opportunity to negotiate with her in the future, and if she upset him, the Su family's cooperation would definitely no longer exist. She was even frightened after that, and he added that at that point, she would simply have to cry and beg him, and the protagonist thought that this guy should accept Zhang Liang's invitation. But he was only running to meet his death, so Sankian couldn't avoid it. And with that, Yingixa asked if he had really finished, and was he supposed to leave if he had already done so. Clearly he was annoyed by this, and as he left, he said that he would also go and see their new house with his father the next day, and it should certainly be better than the house he had given his father. He also said that he had prepared a present for Yingxia, and she said that he would certainly be welcome to visit her house, but if she wanted to show off, she simply couldn't help it. This time, he was even more annoyed, and began to wonder if her new house had an elevator, since his girlfriend didn't like going up the stairs. And in a few years' time, it looks like his girlfriend will have her joints all at atrophied and worn out, since she didn't even exercise to take care of herself, it seems. Finally, they burst out laughing, and Yingixa was even a little annoyed by this, but Sankian said that unexpectedly, he could work on the emperor's estate, but she didn't need to worry. That's because with him by her side, the insect would never be able to really create problems for her, and she asked if there really was an elevator in their new house, and if it was also better than the manure house from before. That's because she didn't want to see that bastard showing off in front of her. But in this case, all she had to do was turn her back and ignore the insect, and she said she didn't want to be knocked down by Tan Long and his family the next day. But he told her not to worry, and to sit down and eat first, and then they would go to the new house, and those who were laughing at them would definitely be defeated this time. After that, we see them going to the new house, and Yingxia kept asking her husband where they were going, and he said that it was more than clear that they were going to their new house. She told him to stop, as unregistered vehicles in the mountainous area of Yunding Villa were strictly forbidden to enter, and the closer they got, the more she despaired of this. When they were about to go inside, she asked him if he didn't think that being snubbed wasn't enough, and running there to find more hassles was already too much. However, she noticed something different there, because the guards simply greeted the protagonist, and cleared the way for them to pass, making her not understand anything at first. She asked if he was greeting Sankian, and if he'd really allowed him in, and then she wanted to know when he'd bought the security guard for the village area, making him feel awkward about her recent comment. In front of the new house itself, he told her that they had finally arrived home, and let's just say that she was simply paralyzed by the sight, and she heard that each villa, the villa area, was a private area. In other words, it was strictly forbidden to enter without the owner's permission, and he answered back saying that that was her door, and asked if she didn't want to get out of the car to have a good look. Leaving in astonishment for the moment, she still hadn't digested her husband's words, and she thought to herself how this was really possible, and whether this would really be their home from now on. If she really didn't believe him, all she had to do was try to open their home, and trembling completely, she asked him if he wasn't going to lie to her. That's because he knew very well that if anyone found out about them trespassing there, the consequences would definitely be serious, and he knew that very well, but the owner was definitely there, so there could be no consequences as she said. As soon as she put the key in the lock, he realized that the key really did open the door of the house, and soon they were inside, and finally, he welcomed his dear wife into their new home. The moment she saw their wedding picture, she realized that he had actually put it there so that she could always see it, and she commented that it was her grand 
grandmother who had forced them to take that wedding picture. And it's been three years, and she thought that photo had disappeared a long time ago, and he said it was more than clear that he would keep it. After all, it was their wedding photo. She then immediately asked him to take it down, and he asked why, since the picture was supposed to have been hung in his house three years ago, and had been in the dust for many years. She then asked him if he could see that her face lacked will in the photo, and asked him why he still treated her so well, and honestly, Yingxia, I'd like to know that too, since you never defended him tooth and nail against his relatives. But the cattle were still very kind, and told her that it was because she was his dear wife, so she finally hugged him, and she said that she didn't want to see that photo, and that he should throw it away and burn it, because she wanted to redo that photo with him. And so, after three years of marriage, they finally kissed their husband for the first time, meaning that they hadn't even kissed on their wedding day, and I wondered how they had actually managed to do it. With this unexpected attitude from Yingxia, their relationship was finally reaching a different level this time, and let's just say that she ended up being embarrassed by her attitude. He told his dear wife that it was his first kiss, and apparently it was her first kiss too, so they were on the same level. When he said something to his dear wife, apparently it wasn't a good idea, as he was quickly kicked away, and she ran off in shame. He then asked her if she was planning on hiding there all her life, and if she wouldn't like to see what their new home looked like. Once inside the bathroom, she told herself that she was in trouble, because normally, it was the men who should take action in this kind of thing. But she had never given him the chance to do so, so there was no way he could take action like that. She even thought that his image of her in his heart was definitely ruined. But little did she know that with this, he was now even more in her hands, since he was content with little. He then asked what brand her lipstick was, because it was indeed very tasty, leaving her simply embarrassed, realizing that he was definitely joking with her. Suddenly, she got a call, and apparently it was her mother, asking why she hadn't gone yet and the waste had already gone there. And the next day was the 15th, and they still didn't know where the new house was. She was told to go home soon, and if they arrived late, she would simply let the protagonist sleep on the street. And he was already a dead man anyway, but of course, she said it in a very rude way. And again, she didn't say anything to defend her husband, she just said that she had worked overtime at the company, and Sang Yin was waiting to leave work, and they would be back soon. She just said it was better not to let her mother's old lady know about it now, and it was better to surprise her the next day. And since when does that toxic snake really deserve to live in a mansion like that? Man, I think the author of this man who could definitely make the protagonist take a man's attitude and completely discard this young woman's exploitative parents. She went on to say that the people waiting to laugh the next day had better get ready to be slapped in the face by her. But in reality, it's not for you, it's for your husband. You've done practically nothing in this story so far, at least not positively. And finally we have a cut to a different place this time, where some people were gathered so they could be picked up to go to Sankian and Yingxia's new house. As the area where the people were now was relatively noble, the insect's father asked if his friend wasn't too poor to be able to buy a house in that area. He went on to say that his friend was like his son-in-law's unusable being, and wasn't looked after by the Sioux family and couldn't afford a house there. And the insect's son said that if his friend wanted to buy a house there, he could definitely move it for his father. That's because they couldn't be neighbors with such influential people, and the boy's father said he'd better start saving some money. Because living there was more than a million a year, but he couldn't spend it casually like that. People said that his father was really lucky to have a son like him, unlike the one in their house, as well as other unnecessary comments, which only magnified this insect even more. He then commented that he had recently been preparing changes at another company, and after his plans were successful, he would definitely tell everyone. People were very impressed by this, because he was already earning a million a year, and still intended to move to another company, and he said that this was nothing, and he would soon be working at the Cayenne Shoe Station. He also asked if they happened to know who the backer of the station itself was, and the Cayenne Shoe Station was a sub-company of the Han family's Yan Jing, which just happened to be the richest family of all. Clearly, the surprise on everyone's faces was evident, until finally the bus that would pick them up to visit the protagonist's house arrived. And this gentleman asked if everyone there wanted to go to young Sankian's house. So they were supposed to get on the bus as it was going to take them there. And apparently the boy's father was surprised as it was definitely a luxury bus that ordinary people couldn't afford. Meanwhile, in Dung's thoughts, he was saying that he had heard that Yingxia had become the person in charge of the Cheng Zai project wondering if it was possible that she had actually taken over an oil mine. But he dismissed the possibility out of hand. After all, she had only been in office for a few days, and even if she really won, she wouldn't dare show off. 
His father then asked him if he hadn't said that his friend's house wasn't better than theirs, and the insect replied that it was impossible. That's because the new property he had bought was first rate in Cloud City, unless he could afford to live in the village areas in the mountains. At the entrance to the village itself, we see the remains of the toxic family admiring the luxury bus that had come to pick them up. And the old man said that he had been entrusted by Sankian to take them to his new home, and it was for the dung to get on the bus. Someone asked where his friend had bought a house that they had to take a specific bus to get to, and it turned out that Yingxia really didn't make any money from the company, and she was so brave that she made millions in one go. We spotted what appears to be the Su family's toxic insect memoirs, where it was said that if the owners of the Yunding Mountain Village area have a large number of relatives who wish to enter the community, they must inform the administration department. Department. The property department itself sends the bus to pick up and drop off to avoid congestion in the village area caused by too many private cars. He was simply disgusted, not believing that it was really possible for Yingxia to have a house right there. And the snake from before said that he had to find a way to correct Yingxia, and he couldn't let her stay like this. Again, he asked her not to worry, and since he's back with the company now, she won't even take any money from the company really. However, they had to be honest with him too, otherwise they couldn't blame him for being dragged into the mud. And in his thoughts, he said that he had apparently worried too much without needing to. This kind of place was definitely not something Sankian could really go to, and they soon realized that this path was actually the way to the area of Yunding's mountain village. People even asked the guide if they were going to the wrong place, and the guide asked if they didn't know they were going to the area of the mountain village of Yunding. Clearly, people didn't believe it, and others asked if the guide had by chance chosen the wrong people. But it wasn't that, and asked if they were from the Sioux family. And he was right, they were going to Sankian's new residence. After that, the guide asked everyone to take their seats, until they had finally arrived at the most expensive village in the place. Some said that it was the most luxurious place in Cloud City, with a bidding price of 100 million. And the mysterious gold master, who had spent a lot of money, hadn't even shown his appearance yet. The snake from before asked what was going on there, and why the guide had stopped them right there. Not to mention that this place was the location of the mountain village of Yunding. He even began to wonder if Yingxia couldn't just set them up on purpose, and he said that he knew there was a rule there, and the area surrounding the villa was the private property of the owner. The consequences of trespassing without permission were definitely serious, and someone commented to the insect that they should get out of there immediately, and it turned out that they were just the rattlesnake from before until he suddenly realized that precisely Yingxia was arriving on the scene, along with her toxic parents and the protagonist's cattle. He asked his unusable cousin if he was thinking of coming back, and now that they were all at the door, they should just go in. The insect asked Sankian what his family wanted to do, and if he wanted to end everyone's life there. Meanwhile, the snake complained to Yingxia, saying that they would be punished for her taking them there. The protagonist then simply immobilized the fly's arm from before, and could take this opportunity to break it. But unfortunately he's not the man for it. He only asked the parasite why he was so nervous, and why their house was bigger if he was afraid of losing the bet, and the dung said that if his grandmother found out, he would definitely be a dead man. The other insect asked Yingxia's father what his family intended to do, and if he couldn't live alone, whether he intended to hurt everyone. Yingxia then said that she was returning to her own home, and asked why he thought they were embarrassing their own family members. The Jararaka from before said that she was going too far, since that mountain village definitely couldn't be home to someone like Yingxia. And as soon as she showed the key to the house, she immediately shut up, and she asked the snake from before if that wasn't her house, then if it was the snake's house. The worst specimen of an unusable being even asked if Yingxia had finished pretending, and told her to really open the door if she was capable of doing so. And so she did, leaving everyone behind. And as soon as she opened the lock, she ordered that Shrew to keep her eyes wide open, leaving everyone there silent as soon as the door was opened. She then welcomed the dregs of society, and she couldn't believe what she was seeing. Even if she was now responsible for the Cheng 11 project, she would never have the financial resources to buy that house. Even the secondary people in the family were delighted and incredulous that they lived in such a noble house, while others even wanted to live there too. Dung's girlfriend from before asked him if he hadn't said recently that she wouldn't have the money to actually buy a house, and he said that maybe she had borrowed that house temporarily. 
it was abundantly clear that there was no way they could borrow a house like that out of the blue, and a third-rate family like the Su family should never be able to do that. Dung began to wonder if it was Sankian who was the gold master, and he thought that was simply impossible, as he was nothing more than a useless being well-known in Cloud City. It wasn't possible that he could spend a billion to buy a villa, but the value was actually 100 million and apparently someone ran away from school. Watching Yingxia there, he was indignant at how lucky she was, since she could actually live in a mountain village, and he thought he could take advantage of the position when he entered the Kayan Shu station. He didn't expect her to be able to live in a mountain villa worth hundreds of millions of dollars, showing that his plan was a complete failure. The snake from before asked what they were doing in a daze, and they were supposed to go into her new house and have a look. But this unusable being had apparently forgotten that it was actually Sankian's house not hers. Finally, the people decided to come in, and the snake from before asked the manure what was going on, then asked how Yingxia was really able to pay for a villa there. He didn't know much about it, but he also wondered how she could have so much money, and with you, he said that if she moved into a high-rise apartment, he could slander her for taking the company's money. However, that was the most expensive mountain villa in the Yunding mountain region, and even if she emptied the Su family's assets, she couldn't simply pay for it. She then commented that it was Sankian, as their grandfather used to refer to marriage, and they had no idea that Sankian could be the son of a wealthy family. But the manure said that was just a guess, and before he saw Sankian, in the last three years, he asked if she hadn't recognized him, and he was just an unusable being, according to this disposable manure. She only said that rich kids who can afford a villa in the mountains, it didn't make sense for him to be humiliated in the residence for three long years if he had that much money. Some people started praising Yingxia's father a lot for his new house, and he was simply embarrassed when, in fact, they had simply done nothing to get it. It's at these times that the protagonist could simply end the show there, and make each of those who humiliated him pay bitterly for everything they put him through. When the snake realized that its brother was there, it started to get even more excited, and said that they were planning to let the old snake come and visit them too, but he refused to let it go, asking if he remembered that. If the broken old woman blamed her brother for it, it wasn't for him to blame her, and he immediately went in the direction of the weaker one, who was precisely her attitudeless husband. He asked how it was that Yingxia's father had bought that villa, and he recalled that it was up for auction, and the mysterious buyer bought it with a large bid, and no matter how you looked at it, he definitely wasn't like the original buyer of the house. The shrew asked what he was doing, and it was clear that they had bought that villa with real money, and if he really had a problem with it. The cousin then asked his aunt if they really had that much money, and although she looked at the pro protagonist with a look of complete contempt, she told them not to look down on people. That's because even if they had some money, they didn't have to tell the insects, and one of the strangers asked them if they weren't doing anything illegal, and it wasn't for them to involve everyone in the Sioux family in the illegal business they had. After hearing this, the snake became indignant and said that the dung shouldn't think he could be exalted in her residence just because she called him her older brother. The snake then asked where so much money had come from to buy that house, and so much money couldn't just fall out of the sky. And after that, this insignificant being asked if it was because Yingxia had been negotiating with some people in exchange for money. And this guy definitely deserves to have the worst ending of all in this work, just like everyone else too. After they heard the completely unnecessary comment from the scum from before, Sankian apparently couldn't wait to take the life of the insignificant scum, and the one who decided to speak out was Yingxia's mother. Clearly she was defending her daughter, and he then challenged her to tell him where the money had come from for them to buy that huge mansion. The moment she looked at the protagonist in silence, she began to speak up, saying that she wasn't afraid of being sued by that insect, and the money actually came from the old man who compensated her husband, perhaps referring to his father. Yingxia couldn't believe that her mother would go to such lengths just to avoid telling people that it was Sankian who had bought that house, while the cattle just watched in silence as well. People wondered how it would be possible for the old man to compensate Guo Yao, who was the snake's husband from before, since he had passed away many years ago. Someone asked if it was possible that Guo Yao had discovered the old man's little treasure, and the other descendants began to say that they too were entitled to a share of the inheritance itself. From the looks of it, the two stooges from before were delighted to hear this, but on the Jararaka's side, she wasn't too happy about it, and said that they had no heart, since that money had nothing to do with them. According to her, the old man felt very sorry for Yingxia for allowing Sankian to join her family, so he left this amount of money to them as compensation, and again, Yingxia remained silent, along with Sankian. 
The snake continued, saying, Because father has regulations, the money must be used after three years. That's why we worked so hard for three years. Bullshit. She's just a lazy woman who doesn't even work. Just lives at home doing absolutely nothing. Being supported by her husband, while taking practically everything he had, along with Yingxia's things too. Toxic snake. Meanwhile, from what I understand here, Su Guo Yao's brother began to think to himself, saying that when the old man was alive, although he was undisputedly with Su Guo Yao, it was him whom the old man loved the most. That is, Yingxia's father. Besides, it wasn't impossible to force Yingxia to marry Han Sankian and leave a fortune to his family as compensation. And he asked his brother how much the old man had really left him. It was the rest of the mummy who spoke up again and said that he had left around 100 million, leaving everyone stunned by this absurd figure. Otherwise, Su Guo Yao would never have had enough money to actually buy that villa, and he did it to prove himself in front of Su's family. Han Sankian and Yingxia have just had their third wedding anniversary, so they can buy cards and change houses. And over the last three years, although their family has become the laughing stock of Yun Cheng, they have controlled their anger. Speaking of the girl with no attitude, she just looked at Sankian. And the toxic snake from before went on to say that it was a pity the broken old woman hadn't come, otherwise her old man would have been very happy. She originally planned to live a good life on millions of yuan, but she also wanted to spare the old woman a bit of face, so she thought about buying the mountain village, leaving her husband's brother disgusted by her recent comment. As he left, he disguised it by saying he was going to the toilet, and in her thoughts, she had already understood that he actually wanted to call the old jellyfish. Meanwhile, Yingxia asked how Sankian could allow the situation to get to this level, since he was the one who bought that residence, and he just said it didn't matter, since he's also a cattle with no attitude whatsoever. Still, he was wronged again, and that matter should have been entirely his credit, and it was only her mother who was taking credit for it. According to Sankian, he said that this was also a good thing and no one could believe that he bought it, and the treacherous viper's explanation ended up helping him to reduce a lot of problems. Therefore, Yingxia said that she could only apologize on behalf of her mother then, and he said that if she really felt guilty about it, there was another way to resolve it, leaving her a little confused about it, until he said he could at least start sleeping in his bed, which was only fair, since it was his house, and he was still forced to sleep on the floor. This is definitely a cattle protagonist. Honestly, I think he's the worst cattle I've seen so far, second only to the cattle in an anime I saw a while ago. Yingxia then commented that the room was also quite large, so it would clearly be very comfortable for our protagonist. And if it were me in his situation, I would have kicked her out of the house a long time ago, and only bought the mansion after divorcing a being like her. The cattle just told her to treat him as if he had never said anything. And finally, the manure from before came back saying that the old lady would soon be here, and she would like to know what was really going on. The viper just said that it was the old man's money, so she had no reason to be afraid, and replied back, not everyone can come to the Yunding Mountain Village area, go to the door to get mommy. If she was stopped at the door, wouldn't that embarrass your old man? Meanwhile, in her husband's thoughts, he was probably saying that the house had nothing to do with them, since they weren't the rightful owners, and the security guard at the door couldn't let the jellyfish in because he had opened the door for the lady. Clearly the wife was just taking advantage of the situation to get the upper hand, and she ordered Sankian to fetch the rest of the mummy from the gatehouse, and it was more than clear that the young man with no attitude was going to fetch it, since he rarely has an opinion of his own. At the gate of Yunding's mountain village area, the rest of the mummy had just arrived and Yingxia pretended to be happy that that scum was there in her residence. The old woman asked where her father was and why no one had invited her to the opening ceremony in the mountain village, and the young woman said that her father simply didn't want to say anything. That's because many of his classmates came to the house and could leave, so they let Yingxia and Sankian take the finished mummy instead. But it was clear that if it wasn't for Sankian, the old woman would never have gotten in there. Thanks to Yingxia's mother's useless snake, the old woman told her granddaughter not to forget that the money used to buy that villa belonged to the Su family. Although the old man was dead, his money was also her money, and Sankian thought that that broken down old woman was apparently trying to take the mountain village for herself, but he only gave the village to Yingxia, and no one deserved to have it but her. The scum of humanity asked Sankian if he was blind in the ears, and if he couldn't see that it was inconvenient for her to walk all that way, then he had to carry her on his back. Although Yingxia tried to talk him out of it, he only said that it was alright, and they should respect older people. However, respect is one thing. This is simply abuse, and he should make this old woman roll all the way back down, so she can get a taste of asphalt and gain some protein. I'm sure she'd learn to walk very quickly with that. 
Finally, the cattle only prepared themselves so that they could carry the finished old woman on their backs, and she began to complain to him, saying that the consequences if he let her fall would be serious, and that he should go faster too, asking if he wasn't eating properly. While he was losing patience, Yingxia was also planning to do what should have been done a long time ago, and with her she said that that old woman was definitely planning something, and the village was bought by Sankian. In other words, it was too daring of that leftover mummy to think that the money was really hers, and after a while, they had finally arrived at the village itself, until they were greeted by Dung and his father. When Medusa saw that huge mansion, she said she didn't know how to thank her late husband, thinking that she was actually entitled to something there. She went on to say that without her old man, she would never have been able to visit that place, and asked why her late husband only gave the money to Su Guo Yao. After entering the residence itself, she asked Guo Yao if he could allow those irrelevant people to leave, and when the others realized that she was talking about them, the people soon began to leave. The father of the arrogant boy from before said that the old woman was indeed a very annoying person, as well as despicable, and his son commented that if there was a chance in the future, he would make life difficult for that remnant of a mummy. What's more, it wasn't for his father to forget that the young man was working for a less influential water company, and the boy's father commented that the old man left a lot of money to Guo Yao, and he was definitely very lucky. But Dung then said that it didn't matter, asking his father how long he thought Yingxia's toxic parents could keep the money for his family. He was sure they would spend it all sooner or later, now about Sankian, who can live in that mountain village even eating soft rice. That definitely bothered the arrogant boy. However, he commented that he was now working for the Han family of Yanjing, and he would continue to use them to make his name big in Cloud City. But little did he know that the Han family was precisely the protagonist's original family. And finally, the old woman asked her son what was going on there, and if he could explain the situation better. It was precisely the toxicity project that decided to speak, but the jellyfish immediately made her shut up, saying that she would never be qualified to speak to the old woman. Finally, she kept quiet, and agreeing with what his wife had recently said, the other supreme cattle, without any attitude, said that his father had actually left him 100 million. He was worried that Sankian would become useless, so this was to compensate for Yingxia, and this whole situation wasn't that complicated, and the father just wanted them to have a better life. Other disposable scum said that it was just a fact that Sankian wasn't promising at all, and asked why the old man really needed to worry about that, and he thought that Guo Yao had poured some poison into the deceased old man's soup. Finished Fly said that since that money belonged to the old man, then that village didn't belong to Guo Yao, and Yingxia's mother said that the old man left the money to them, and she used it to buy the village and to respect Finish Fly at the same time. She even asked if the scum who could barely walk wanted to divide up the village for everyone, and that wasn't a cake she could just cut into pieces and give to everyone. The scum then told the snake from before to just shut up, as there was no place for her in his family, and Sankian commented that the old woman must know the rules of the village of Yunding. If she wanted everyone in the Su family to live there, he wouldn't really have any objections. But she had to ask Tanjia for permission, and she commented that Sankian had been very brave recently, and asked if he wanted to teach her how to do things. But he just said, I don't dare, I just don't want Tianjia to embarrass his old man, and it won't be good for the Su family if the Tianjia family doesn't want to talk to you. Besides, there are so many rules in the Yunding Mountain Village area, if someone accidentally breaks them, the result would definitely be very serious. Decomposed mummy, can you guarantee that everyone can really follow the rules? While some remained silent at Sankian's question, others simply, like the insect here, began to tell Sankian to shut up, as there was no place for him in the family. He went on to say that Sankian didn't even know his position in the Su family, and yet he dared to pry, asking if he really thought he would have a position after eating soft rice and living in the mountain village. Eating soft rice, according to the translators, meant that you were a person who only depended on your wife or girlfriend to be able to feed you. The old woman was also disgusted by what Sankian said, and she commented that she never said she would let everyone live there, but she asked why she should share the place. Although the old man had given them money, that money still belonged to Sue's family, and he asked if anyone could deny it, leaving the scum from before in complete silence after that, since it was her fault. Sankian again decided to speak up, and asked the rest of the mummy what qualifications it had to actually live there, leaving everyone there simply amazed at Sankian's attitude, including the disposable dung from before. The dung's father immediately ordered Sankian to shut up, and the insect picked up the pace, asking if the protagonist had taken the wrong medicine that day, and since the money came from his grandfather, it was only natural that the old woman lived there. 
Even Deng's cousin said that it was natural for this to happen, since she was the head of the Su family. And the old woman only told Deng to leave Sankian alone. She asked the protagonist immediately after hearing that, why she wasn't qualified to actually live there. And he asked back, why don't you ask yourself how you've treated Yingxia over the last three years? For the past three years, you've protected Su Hai Kao, the turtle beetle, and treated Yingxia like a mere stranger in the family. And even though the turtle beetle plotted against Yingxia, and almost made her fall into the hands of the Chen gang. You still didn't hold him responsible. You haven't considered Yingxia's feelings at all at any time, and that's why you don't deserve to live here, you failed mummy project. Even more disgusted by what the protagonist had said, the others just watched in silence to see what the old scum's reaction would be, and Yingxia watched her husband weep with joy for defending her tooth and nail. Meanwhile, this person who's making me so angry could learn from the protagonist, since she's never moved a straw to actually defend her husband. The old woman told Sankian not to think that she really cared about respecting his family, just letting him do as he pleased, and whether he believed it or not, she could kick him out of his family right now. The secondary relatives, who would never have a place in history, began to ask why Yingxia hadn't divorced that kind of person yet, and the viper told the finished old woman to tell Yingxia to divorce Sankian. Since he didn't put the old woman in his eyes at all, he would continue to do so in the future, but Yingxia said that she was the one who married him, and no one could force her to divorce him. The old woman still insisted, saying that she wanted her granddaughter to divorce him immediately, and even asked if she dared not do so. Holding her husband's hands this time, she said she would never do that, making the old woman even more angry with life, and said that now they have both apparently become adults, since they dared to go against her. Then she called the beetle to get out of there, and he said that Yingxia really didn't know right from wrong, and he had said a long time ago that Sankian would probably covet the Su family estate. Looking at Yingxia's attitude now, the Su family would definitely be strangers there, and she said that Yingxia would never become president of their company, and ordered the beetle to contact Zhang Liang immediately for her. Clearly he was excited to do this, and in his thoughts, he said that Yingxia would finally fall. And returning to the mansion itself, the snake told his daughter that she and her father had already taken a room. The room they wanted to stay in was precisely one of the main suites, leaving Yingxia delighted with the place, but then asking where she wanted Yingxia and Sankian to sleep if she took precisely the main suite. But as there were so many rooms there, her daughter could take any room that wasn't the main one, and so she pulled her husband aside to get their things so they could move in that very day. The dung heap said to his daughter, asking why she wanted to steal her old man's room because they were already old and needed more space to bump into each other. But if he wanted that, all he had to do was lose a bit of weight. She even commented that their old house was so small before, and she'd never seen them bump into each other. And this thing that doesn't even have the attitude to go against its parents still told Sankian that they hadn't done anything wrong. Someone needs to remind this unusable character that her parents have only humiliated the protagonist for three years, and until the day before they were still humiliating the protagonist. Could she really see that? But calm down, the cattle without the attitude to throw Yingxia out only said that it didn't matter where he slept, as long as he was with her. Now that's being a professional cattle, and not having any self-respect. After he said that, she quickly scolded him, and then she wanted to ask Sankian something, and ask how much money he really had, since he had managed to buy that villa worth 100 million. But he answered, and asked if he said that buying that villa was just a small allowance for him. Would she really believe him? And she said that he was just an airhead, because no one could buy a house like that with an allowance. The worst thing was that he revealed the amount of money he had. Even though he didn't say it directly to her, at least in my opinion, he still insisted that what he had said was really true, and he couldn't do anything about it. And she said that since he had bought that house with all his money, if he ran out of money in the future, she would support him. The dog, who didn't value himself, immediately thanked her for it, and I'm indignant to see this protagonist's attitude towards his wife, man, really. He went on to say that she was now the person in charge of the Ching 11 project, so he was counting on her to be able to feed him, and she scolded him again. However, with regard to her grandmother's attitude that day, she knew that the broken old woman would definitely not let Yingxia get away with this, and she didn't know how much longer her responsibility for the project itself would last. But Sankian told his wife not to worry, and whatever happened, the company's weak waters would only work with her, not the Sioux family itself, and the old woman could never deprive her of her status. At the sight of the weak water company itself, the Dung from before went to talk to Boss Zhang, and he said that the old woman was well-mannered, 
and if she would like to see him, even if he didn't have time, he would arrange to see her. He then asked what he could do for them, and why they were looking for him, leaving the two slags simply amazed at what he had just said. The successful disposable mummy project said it wanted to discuss their cooperation, and she believed that Yingxi's ability was definitely limited, so she was afraid that the Changzai project would be delayed. He commented that her skills weren't as strong as he thought, but her learning ability was certainly very strong, and she had improved recently, and was an extremely responsible person too. The poison jellyfish then said that she was really responsible and did everything she could, but human abilities were limited, and no matter how much she learned, there were still limits. So that they could cooperate better, she intended to change the person in charge, and Dung said that although he hadn't been involved in the project, he knew the specific issues of the project very well, and he could liaise perfectly. Besides, in the Su family, he had higher rights and a deeper understanding, and he could definitely do better than Yingxia, and the boss up front would never have to worry about problems. He then asked if they meant that Yingxia had little power in the company and couldn't make the final decision, and standing up, he commented that he thought Yingxia could speak for the Su family, but he didn't expect her to have no rights. It seems that he really should consider meeting the Su family's demands regarding their cooperation. And while the cattle were happy about it, the old woman asked what he meant by that. He then told the truth for the mummy project, and no matter where the project was, the weak water company would never change the person in charge. And that's what his boss meant, and he didn't want to change the person in charge of that project. The old woman then said that she didn't mean it like that, she was just worried about Yingix's lack of skill, and he shouldn't think about looking for another supplier. Outraged, the boss there said that she would never put her boss and the weak water company in the Sioux family's knots, and asked what the point was of having cooperation between the weak water company itself and the Sioux family. He also said that she wanted to change the person responsible for the dung beetle, but he had done a bit of research on that insect, and he was just an idiot. At that moment, the old woman began to tremble completely, and she asked the beetle why he wasn't apologizing to Chief Zhang yet, and quickly the scum from before was on his knees. He apologized right away, and said that the problem was the Sioux family's fault, and they would never change the person in charge again, asking him to please give the Sioux family another chance. Zhang asked what the attitude was to changing his mind, and Yingxia doesn't speak for the company, and her low status was also delaying cooperation, and now the old woman began to get lost in what she had just done. She told the boss not to worry, as she would give all the rights to Yingxia, and she could make any decision regarding the Chang 11 project. And from now on, she didn't need to report to anyone, not even that finished mummy. But boss Zhang said that this was simply pointless, and only his boss could really decide on this matter, and leaving there. He said that the two of them should leave immediately, and by the look on his face, everything was going as the protagonist would have liked. The scum asked her grandmother what they were going to do now, and the Sioux family would be completely finished if that cooperation ended, so she asked what else she could do, apart from letting Yingxia go in there and solve the problem. The funny thing is that when it came to trying to harm her, that fly didn't think about his selfish attitudes, and she even told the beetle to stop being an idiot and start learning how to do business, or he could forget about becoming president. Back in the protagonist's room, he asked Zhang how they reacted, and he said that Hai Kao knelt down and begged for mercy, and the old woman decided to give Yingxia all the rights. Sankian commented that it was a shame the old woman hadn't knelt down, and from now on, it was for Zhang to take the time to let them know how important Yingxia really was. While the guy still did everything he could to help his wife, his wife still didn't take any action to really appreciate the husband she had, and I hope she wakes up to life before it's too late at least. In the Sioux family building, people wondered why she hadn't discussed it with them in advance, and Zhang's attitude last time was simply obvious. Besides, cooperation for them was very important, and Yingxia had done an excellent job so far, and asked why she had to let the beetle be involved in this. If their cooperation ended, they would certainly end up being very badly affected, and they asked the rest of the mule if she really thought that her grandson's insect would be able to shoulder that responsibility. Meanwhile, the two dung heaps simply kept quiet and she sighed and said that she hadn't thought it through and now had to wait for news from Yingxia. Speaking of her, she soon arrived in the meeting room, and the old woman asked how her conversation with Boss Zhang went, and others asked if the weak water company had promised to continue with them. She then commented that she had tried to call him many times, and she even went to the weak water company again, but he didn't answer her calls and also refused to see her. The old woman then asked why this was happening, and also whether Yingixa hadn't done her best or if she hadn't shown enough 
sincerity, but it seemed that she was suffering from memory loss, since it was because of this useless old woman that all this was happening. Outraged, Yingxia threw her purse aside and said that she had called him countless times, but he still refused to answer, and she even went to the company in person and waited for eight hours, until she was finally expelled from the company in weak waters. Now, the disposable thing was simply telling Yingxia that she simply hadn't been honest enough and hadn't done her best. She went on to say that this had certainly happened because of her and Su Hai Kao, so they should just sort it out for themselves, since they had been responsible enough to destroy their cooperation. No one there believed what Yingxia had just said, not even the old woman herself, and she said that her granddaughter had to think of a way, because the life and death of the Su family depended solely on Yingxia now. On Yingxia's side, she only said that she was also from the Su family, so she would certainly do her best to keep the Su family to herself, and the scum said that if she saved the Su family that time, Yingxia would become fully responsible for the Chang 11 project in the future. The finished old woman said that everyone there would obey Yingxia's demands, asking if anyone by any chance had any objections, and the insect said no, along with his father, and he only hoped that she would be able to solve this problem as quickly as possible. However, in a private room, this was certainly not how the beetle thought, and he was angry, thinking that he had to think of a way out of the dilemma. His father said that Yingxia not only lived in the mountain village, but also managed to control the company, which was really annoying to deal with. The scum then asked their father for a little help, so that they could find a way to recover High Kao's rights. Besides, they could only be people with little say in front of Yingxia. However, Dung's father said that he had gone to his son so that he could remind him that he wasn't supposed to make trouble during this turbulent time, and asked if he thought about the consequences of causing trouble for Yingxia. If the Su family went bankrupt, they would simply be lost, and the Finnish skeleton refused to accept all of this, until suddenly, the treacherous viper appeared, and said that they had another way to solve it really. He asked her if she really had another solution, and she said yes, and the person who gave her the bridal gift, if he could help her find it, only he could change the status of the Su family itself. If a more powerful person could cooperate with the Su family's business, then they would no longer have to be subject to problems with the weak water company. Hai Kao ended up agreeing with her, because this mysterious rich man could indeed be their way out. And among the younger women in the Su En family, Yingxia was the only married one, which meant that the gift was for other women. With that, he would let people investigate this matter thoroughly, and even if this mysterious person didn't value Su Yi Han, as long as he was willing to invest in the Su family, he could stand above Yingxia and not let her get away with it. After that, we saw her getting into the protagonist's car, and he asked her who was in Su's family, which upset her again. Answering, she said that it was just the old woman and Hai Kao, and they did something stupid again. And they went to Zhang and asked to change the person in charge once again and offended Zhang because of it. Now, Zhang wouldn't even answer her calls and he even refused to see her. And now the cooperation was broken. And the protagonist said that this was really problematic, because his old classmate was out of town now, and he couldn't get in touch with him. Even though this was no longer a surprise, Yingxia again asked if Sankian could help, looking like a dog without an owner. And he even tried to refuse, saying that it would be a bit difficult this time until she said she would allow him to sleep in the bed, and he quickly stopped the car, saying he would help her right away, showing us that this guy is definitely content with little, since it was his house and he could sleep wherever he wanted. Yingxia ended up not understanding much because of Sankian's reaction, and quarreled with him because he had just said that his friend was out of town and so it would be difficult for him to help now. But he said he also had to work hard to help with his wife's problems, and she said she thought he had done it on purpose, hoping she would be embarrassed. At the house itself, they found something they didn't like when they entered the house, and it was a lot of old things that her mother had put there. This unusable being even had the nerve to ask what they thought of the new decoration, and thought it was even better than before, thanks to her exquisite taste. Yingxia then asked where the snake had gotten all those rags, and the viper said she had bought them all with her own money. Incredulous, she asked her mother if she had been joking and it was just a bunch of cheap things worth tens of dollars, and put them inside a villa worth tens of millions. What's more, the house now simply looked like a junkyard, and since it seemed so cheap then, her daughter was supposed to simply give her the money and she would buy much more expensive things. In other words, she did it on purpose to get money out of her daughter. 
Disgusted, she simply left, and the snake even had the nerve to say that this was her new home, so she had the right to decorate it however she wanted. She then asked Sankian how the house looked now, and if it didn't look good the way it was, but he couldn't answer that question. She also said that it wasn't for him to think that he could always call the security guards just because he bought that villa. And the Sioux family had been humiliated for three long years, and they were affected by it too, so it was natural to make up for it. Manure told his wife that she should keep quiet now, since that house had been bought by Sankian for $100 million, and she asked why she should really keep quiet. She said she didn't know where he had gotten that money, but now he owed them even more money, and from now on, he would give them $100 a month for expenses. But he finally decided to act, and said that if she really wanted to live there, he wouldn't stop her, and would let it go only for Yingxia's sake. But that didn't mean she would be able to control him from now on. Since she wanted his money, he feared that she wouldn't even get a single penny from him, leaving both the scum and the dung surprised by the protagonist's attitude. Leaving there, she said that his attitudes were getting even bolder and she wanted to see how she would deal with him in the future, and suddenly, someone came ringing the doorbell. When she answered, she began to ask who those people were and what exactly they wanted, and they were more precisely from the property department of the Yunding Mountain Village District. The guard immediately ordered his men to take all those worthless things out of the house, leaving her simply outraged, asking who it was that asked them to take her things out of there. When she tried to stop one of them, the guard was kind and just asked her not to get in the way of their work, so she stayed in her place. Sankian just watched from above, and she asked him to stop them, because this was daylight robbery, and she had bought all those things with her own money. However, he said that it was he who had called the guys, and she asked if he despised the things she had bought so much. And that was exactly it, he simply despised everything she had bought. Again, she told him to order the guards to take the things for her right away, and he asked what she was going to do then, and if she was going to throw him out of the house. From now on, if she dared to move even a straw in that house, she couldn't blame him for being rude to her, and referring to the unusable pig, Sankian ordered him to take care of his wife. They weren't supposed to forget that this was his house, and no one was allowed to simply move anything without his permission, causing the lab pig to shut up immediately. The viper even offended the protagonist, saying that just because he had bought that villa, he acted all haughty and powerful, finding Sankian's attitude simply pathetic. She even ordered the pig to help her teach the protagonist a lesson, telling him to show Sankian who was really in charge of that family, and the pig asked if his wife could stop being irrational. This was because her stupid attitude would only lead to even more problems for them, and she asked if her husband dared to say that she was making trouble for no apparent reason. Outraged, she started hitting him, saying that she was older than Sankian, so he didn't have the qualifications to talk to her like that. But he said that the house belonged to Sankian, and he had bought it with his own money. Holding her arms this time, he asked the viper if she really still thought she could take advantage of him, and if she was blind, since it was clear that Sankian was not the same as before. She only said that he was still a complete waste to the family, and waste or not, it was precisely the waste that she was harassing who bought that villa. That was Sankian's house, and if he wanted to kick her out, she simply couldn't do anything to stop him, and it wasn't her name on the village deed. So she had an idea to get Sankian to put the deed to the house in Yingxia's name, so that she could take advantage of him again. The snake still thought she had the last word in the house, when she wasn't even worth the last thing I left in the bathroom when I went there the last time. And the husband thought his wife was really no good, wondering why he was still defending her. Sankian began to think that he had to get a maid, as he now lived in a mountain village, and the house was simply too big for them to look after. At the place where these people were, someone called them over to see what was going on, and a woman was said to be a thief. That's because the person asked her to clean her house and all the gold and silver jewelry, worth tens of thousands, disappeared after the maid had left. It was this insignificant being who was complaining, and she was saying that the cleaning company hadn't taken responsibility for her, so that woman had simply stolen all her jewelry and didn't want to admit it. Sankian immediately told that scum that if she didn't behave, whether she believed it or not, he'd have his way with her, and she asked who he thought she really was, and her status as an old lady wasn't something that inferior beings could imagine. He just ignored that viper and said that the lady could believe him, and she could say whatever she wanted, leaving the snake from before completely disgusted at being ignored by him. Just as she was about to strike the protagonist in the back, he simply fought back, and the treacherous viper began to perform in her theater, asking how he dared to hit her, but she certainly deserved much more than that. The young lady said that he should leave, as she didn't want him to get hurt, and he said that he had gone there that day to look for someone to hire as a domestic servant. 
If, by any chance, she could prove her innocence, he was willing to hire her, causing the lady to think for a while, while the snake continued to offend the protagonist. She said she would make Sankian kneel down and beg for mercy, and all he had to do was wait for his time to come, and let's just say he was looking forward to seeing it actually happen. Since he was feeling well that day, he would wait to see how she would make him really apologize, and ten minutes later, we see some bullies approaching the place. This insect in blue was precisely the snake's husband, and she told him that the young boy had beaten her up, greatly increasing what had really happened. The insect immediately asked if the protagonist was daydreaming by chance to do this, and if he was tired of living. And from people's reactions, that guy was someone that an ordinary person really shouldn't dare to provoke. The viper even told the protagonist to get down on his knees and apologize, and he was supposed to lick her shoes until they were really clean, and she would never let him get away with that so easily. Dung asked if Sankian had by any chance heard what his wife had said recently, and if he didn't do what his wife had ordered, he wouldn't be able to leave. Although the lady behind him said that it was none of his business, Sankian just asked if that was really all they wanted. Then he kicked the foot of the jellyfish from before, and now she could say that he had really assaulted her, although she still deserved much more than that. As if that wasn't enough, he kicked the manure from before as well, leaving the manure on the ground now. And from the looks of it, no one there was really believing what they were witnessing. The insect's henchman asked if the protagonist was courting death by any chance, until it was the young man from the snack bar, a friend of the protagonist's, who was saved by Sankian along with his wife, who arrived to help Sankian. And as soon as he spotted the young protagonist, he thought it was a huge coincidence to find the boy there, and even the protagonist asked him what he was doing there, and it was indeed a great coincidence that they should meet. He had gone to talk about something, but his subordinates said there was something fun going on there, so they simply came to join in the fun, and he didn't expect it to be the insect that was lying on the ground. The dung said that the protagonist had dared to hit him, and the green-haired young man, whose name I can no longer remember, was supposed to punish the boy, but he ordered his henchmen to finish off the insect that was on the ground. This clearly surprised him, and as he was beaten relentlessly, there came a time when he began to beg Yang to order his men to stop beating him. He even asked when he had provoked Yang, and he replied that the boy he was looking for trouble with was his brother, and yet he had dared to provoke him. Surprised by what he had just heard, he immediately knelt down in front of Sankian, and began to apologize, as he had no idea that he was Yang's brother. He kept begging for forgiveness, and the young man introduced his friends to the lady, and they were better than the guy from before, and that woman had slandered the lady. So if she hadn't really done what that scum had said, or if there had been some misunderstanding, she could tell the truth now. That's because with him around, no one would dare try to embarrass her again. But the snake still dared to speak out, saying that she had done nothing wrong, and it was all the maid's fault. However, her husband immediately ordered her to be quiet, and she said that she saw the viper take a young boy to her house, and it was he who stole the gold and silver jewelry she had, and when she went to clean it up, she saw him leaving in a panic. The snake was disgusted at having her secrets exposed, and she thought to herself that she had paid that man to take him out of the club, and she didn't expect him to steal anything from her. With that said, she was the one who got caught this time, and he wondered if that disposable prey simply dared to steal him behind his back. Now the situation seemed to have become more complicated for her, and she still said that she hadn't stolen anything from her husband. But the more she said it, the more she was beaten, and he asked her how she could dare to cheat on him after everything he had done for her. He earned money to support her, but she still used his money to go out with a young man, and she was nothing more than a disposable being who deserved to be completely erased from history. After that, Sankian asked if she hadn't had enough, and if it wasn't time to make it up to that lady for all that mess. The insect who had been betrayed agreed with what the protagonist said, and he ordered his wife to kneel down and apologize to the lady immediately. With that, she finally apologized to her, and she was really sorry, because she shouldn't have accused that hard-working young woman. And the lady thanked the protagonist, and if it hadn't been for him, she wouldn't have been able to clear her name. According to Sankian, it wasn't really her fault, and there was no need for her to thank him. And there's also a reason why he helped her. He was looking for a housekeeper, and if she liked it, she could come to his house and work with him, and she immediately accepted the boy's generous offer. The young young said that he still had some things to do, and asked what he would like him to do about the insect that had dared to offend his brother. But Sankian only asked him to forget about it, and he wasn't supposed to worry about the person wearing a green hat. 
And finally, we see the protagonist returning home. When she saw that this was the mountain village of Yun Ding, she asked him if Sankian lived there. And he just asked her to call him Sankian, not boss, as he wasn't used to that. When she heard his name, she wondered if it was him who was the boy called Han Sankian. And he hadn't imagined that his name could be so popular in Yun Cheng. And even she knew his name. She immediately apologized to him, as she was just a bit excited about it. And he said it was fine, as he was used to it. If she called him boss again, he wouldn't know how he was really going to treat her. And entering the house itself, the snake appeared straight away, asking who that lady was. And he said that it was he who had invited her, and she would help them cook and clean in the future. In other words, she was the housekeeper of that house, leaving the viper indignant at hearing this. She then asked the protagonist if he really had tough wings now, and he didn't even bother to ask about those things. And if he didn't want to cook for them anymore, she could make the food herself. He then told the housekeeper that now she had someone to cook for, she could just take care of cleaning the house in the future. And she said that the housekeeper wasn't qualified to eat her food. She even asked how much he was paying the lady there each month, and if he was using the family's money. But he told her not to worry, because he wouldn't allow that viper to take another penny from him. With that said, you could see that she was really disgusted with the protagonist, and he referred to the young governess as Auntie He, and he said that that would be her room from now on. Indignant, the viper still insisted on getting into trouble, and said she was just a housekeeper, asking how he could really give her a guest room, and asked where the other future guests would be staying. She also told Auntie He to stay in the utility room, but he told Auntie He that he was the owner of that house, and as long as he was there, she could use that room, so she was entitled to that room. What's more, if there was anyone in the family who was making things difficult for her, she could tell him immediately, and he would find a way to resolve the situation. And finally, he left and said goodbye to the housekeeper. Keeper. But you could already see that the successful Feces project was going to do everything it could to get the housekeeper out of that house. After the shrew no longer had anything to do with her life, having been completely put in her place by Sankian, she immediately started doing everything she could to provoke the new housekeeper. She kept teasing the housekeeper in every way, so much so that she had just spat out the watermelon lumps and asked why the housekeeper wasn't cleaning it up. As she shouted more and more, the housekeeper didn't know how to handle it, since she wasn't the type of person who liked fights and things like that. As the day went on, at one point the rattlesnake commented that people like the housekeeper didn't know what kind of luck they really had, since they could live in the mountain village. The snake even warned the housekeeper that if she did anything wrong, she would let her daughter fire the housekeeper herself, and she even had the nerve to say that Sankian was not the head of that house. As the young lady was very kind, she just asked the anaconda not to worry, as she would definitely work hard, and the viper could always call on her when it needed her. However, the intriguing thing, which I don't even know what to call anymore, asked if Auntie didn't have her own eyes, wondering why she still had to call her. Anyway, this snake didn't know how to say anything but things to humiliate the housekeeper, and finally she said she was leaving, but not without saying something stupid so that she could leave the housekeeper even more humiliated than before. In a different place this time, the viper's friends praised her, saying that she was now a rich woman who lived in the mountain village, while others said they were jealous of her because of this. The snake then answered her friends, saying that to be honest, the place was really spacious, and in fact really big too, living there was still a bit uncomfortable, and looking after the village was also relatively difficult. As if this useless thing really did anything in that place, and she even dared to say that she had hired a housekeeper, and was now paying her a thousand yuan a month. As the viper's friends had nothing to do either, they just praised the viper, as she now lived in a village of 100 million, and a few thousand yuan a month was just a small amount of money for her. Suddenly, a woman appeared with her bodyguards, and her friends were apparently even more amazed, since she was rich enough to have so many guards with her. This lady, in fact, fixed her gaze precisely on the treacherous jellyfish from before, until they realized that the rich woman was looking right at them. In front of the snake itself, she asked if she was the one who was Jiang Lan, and when she answered yes, asking who that woman was, she was quickly slapped in the face, and this scene deserved to be hung in the giant painting in the living room of their house. Even the snake's friends were completely freaked out by what they were witnessing, and the poisonous thing asked why that woman had hit her, since she didn't even know the rich woman. However, she took another good slap to wake up to life, making me happy, and now this viper, who doesn't even deserve to be called an animal, was completely on the ground. She asked who the rich woman was, and she only answered so that Yingxia's mother would remember her name, which was Shizu, and it wasn't for the viper to stand out too much from now on. 
If she bothered him again, she would completely regret having been born, referring more precisely to the protagonist. And finally, they left the place. Her friends then asked who that woman was, why she had hit the viper, and even asked if her family hadn't provoked someone powerful. This thing didn't even have any arguments at that moment, and could only say that it wasn't for Shizu, who was the rich woman, not to let this snake have the opportunity to slap her, since it would give her more than twice as much as she actually took. At the mansion itself, she was humiliating Aunt He even more, saying that she had told her that she didn't want to see any dirt when she got back, and she was supposed to get the hell out of that house, calling her a phony on top of that. However, Auntie He had already cleaned it several times during the day, but it still didn't seem to be enough for her, and the snake even began to push Auntie He, taking out the humiliation she had recently suffered, but definitely on the wrong person. She told the housekeeper to get out of there immediately, and for her to disappear from her house, while Auntie He just asked for one more chance, until suddenly, the supreme cattle manure appeared wondering who that woman was. He then asked what had happened to his wife's face, and if it was that woman who had hurt her, and she said that it was precisely that maid that Sankian had hired, and no one in that family could be capable of doing that. However, this time the insect who wanted to be a man decided to assault Aunt He, pretending that he really cared about his toxic wife, and he ordered her to leave the house immediately. I didn't do anything. Why did you slander me, Sister Jiang? Asked the young lady governess. Do you think I'm stupid enough to believe that she could hurt herself? The Supreme Cattle replied. The Viper then said that Auntie could simply leave if she couldn't stand it any longer, since that family no longer needed her services. Pushing the housekeeper this time, the unusable being who deserved to be deleted from history along with his wife, told the young lady to get out of there immediately. So she got up and apologized, and was leaving now, and as she left, he said that the act was indeed shameful, since she had hurt her own master. Suddenly, it was the owner of the house who arrived, and he asked where Auntie he was, until the cattle, who weren't even good enough to be donkey scum, said that the servant Sankian had hired was really audacious, since she had dared to assault his mother-in-law. Clearly, Sankian already realized that there was something wrong with the situation, and when she saw the housekeeper, she told him that she was leaving because she didn't want to bother them anymore, but she was still very grateful that he was helping her. Holding her arms, he asked her if she remembered the last time they met at the market, and if it wasn't really her fault, and she didn't stand up for herself, how could he really help her? Sankian asked. She ended up being surprised and a little confused about what to do now, and he kept asking, and where are you staying? What about your daughter's needs? Will anyone hire you after you leave here? Just tell me the truth. Although she was afraid to speak, she began to tell the truth and said that she really didn't know what had happened. And when the snake arrived that afternoon, her face was already bruised. With that, Sankian asked if it happened that she hurt her own face on the way home, or if she was hurt outside the house and then blamed someone else when she arrived. However, Sankian ordered his mother-in-law not to dare test his patience, and standing up, she asked him how he could dare call her by her name, since she was his mother-in-law. Yingxia asked who it was that had hit her, and why she was blaming Auntie for it, and even the fat cattle from before asked who on earth it was that had really hurt his wife. Tantruming like a child this time, she asked why everyone didn't believe her, and why they would rather believe that servant who had just arrived than even really believe her, and asked if they weren't even aware of it. Sankian replied, All right, if you don't want to admit it, I'll ask the property management department to show me the video recorded from their security camera and see if you were really hurt inside the house. That will prove whether you're telling the truth or not. But he didn't even need to pursue it, as she quickly admitted that she hadn't been hurt by Auntie, but by someone outside the house, asking if Sankian was going to hit her too. I'd really like that to happen, but he doesn't have the attitude for it, unfortunately. The fat cattle didn't even know what to say to his wife now, and she told him that if he really thought he was capable of anything, he should go out and get revenge for her. However, Sankian was already losing patience with those two, and he ordered them both to apologize to Aunt He. Are you kidding me? Why should I apologize to a servant? Sankian, do you still have respect for your mother-in-law? Asked the viper who didn't even deserve to be born. If you don't want to apologize, then you can leave my house immediately. Get out of my house now, Sankian ordered. Everyone there was surprised by the protagonist's attitude, and he proposed something to them. If she apologized to Aunt He, he would find the person who hit her and make them apologize to Sankian. As he asked her how she felt about it, she began to think that the woman who had assaulted her had a dozen bodyguard, wondering if he really wanted her to trust him to avenge her. But there was no point in carrying on, and it wouldn't be much of a loss if she apologized, and the fact that he owned that house, and she didn't want to sleep on the street 
street if he decided to kick them out. With that, she finally decided to apologize to the housekeeper, and the fat cattle also apologized, since they had been too reckless and impulsive. And Auntie was super polite, and told them not to worry about it, since it had all just been a misunderstanding. Finally sitting down, Sankian wondered who it was that really hit his mother-in-law, since he was the one who should have done it a long time ago. I don't know her, I've never seen her before, but she told me her name was Shi Jing, replied the viper. But I thought her name was Shi Zhu, maybe I got it wrong then, or maybe it's a translation error. Sankian was completely surprised to hear this, and wondered what that woman could really be like. And apparently she was really proud to be the Han family's daughter-in-law. In his thoughts, he was still saying that he had been completely despised by the Han family, and he swallowed all the anger he had at the Su family, and wondered if she really believed that he was so useless as to need her help. The Viper asked if he happened to know that woman, and if he could really avenge her, and she would definitely treat him well in the future if he was able to do so. However, Sankian immediately said that he couldn't help her with that, and she immediately said that she knew he was really just useless, since he couldn't even help her with that little problem, and yet he dared to boast in front of her. But he immediately retorted, saying, she always brings her 12 bodyguards with her every time she travels. These bodyguards are not normal, but they are all retired from the special forces, and they are not someone an ordinary person could provoke. Even Yingxia was surprised that she always went out with 12 bodyguards, and asked what kind of influential person she really was, and he said that not even the Tian family would dare to provoke her. The two pigs started to get completely scared now, and the fat man asked her what her problem was, and how she could provoke such such a powerful person. But she just said that she really had no idea, and she had never seen that woman before in her life. But Sankian told her mother-in-law not to worry. Since that woman dared to hurt her, then that matter should have been resolved by now. And with her ability, she could destroy the Sioux family overnight. The Viper said that the suspicious woman had also told her not to stand out too much so as not to embarrass her. But she didn't understand what the suspicious lady meant by that. He then decided to leave for a while, and Yingxia asked him to be careful. And at the Peninsula Hotel itself, some guards noticed Sankian's presence there. They referred to the protagonist as the young master, and even apologized because they couldn't let him in, and their boss hadn't informed them that Sankian would be visiting. But he said he would still go in, asking if they would dare to stop him, and they continued to ask him nicely not to make things difficult for them. If he still insisted on entering, he couldn't blame them if they were rude, and in anger this time, he ordered her servants to show him everything they had. Apologizing for offending the young master, they went after the protagonist, but it didn't seem to be a problem for Sankian, as he quickly managed to hit one of the bodyguard, and went on to finish off the other as well. With that done, they were surprised that two people had been knocked down with just one blow, and they wondered when Sankian had gotten so strong. But that didn't matter, and they weren't supposed to let Sankian pass until their boss told them to do so, and this time they all went after the young master. But they still had a hard time, and Sankian had finished with all of them by the time he finally reached the door where Shi Jing was standing. She immediately told Sankian that the old Yan in front of her had once mentioned that his talent was really exceptional, and it seemed to be true. He just stayed silent for a moment, and asked why she was looking for Jiang Lan, who was precisely his mother-in-law, and she said that she had looked down on her son, and she asked her to have a better memory. In other words, this woman is apparently Sankian's mother, and he said he didn't need her intervention, and he hoped she wouldn't meet him again in the future. With that said, she replied, you're numb in your own right now, but in the old lady's eyes, that's useless, if you're strong, you have to show it, make others know you, and then you'll be recognized. I'm not here to listen to you talk about these great things, I advise you to return to Yanjing as soon as possible, because Yuncheng is a small place and can't accommodate your greatness, Sankian replied back. She told him that after he saw her that day, she would go away, and he could play with Yun Chang as much as he liked, but he had to remember that no one would hide their strength. And he responded by saying that a businessman would hide the gun in his own body, and move only when it was the right move. And finally, he left the place completely. In her thoughts, she said, hidden in the body, wait for the moment to act. Not even the Han family possessed the momentum to swallow the mountains and rivers, but where you came from. He's just trusting you to take care of all those Han family tricks. My little son, don't think things are that simple. And if it weren't for me, who gave you the opportunity to lead the Weakwater Real Estate Company? The old lady will definitely send you to jail instead of Han Jun.
After all, you're the Lai Sheng brothers. You basically look the same, and outsiders wouldn't be able to tell you apart. Returning to the protagonist's house, the Viper asked his daughter if that villa had her name on the certificate of ownership, and she replied that it didn't, asking back what was wrong with that. She then asked her daughter what she could do without her name, and could she find the time to let Han Sankian take care of it, and was it better for her daughter to transfer the village to her name? She asked her mother what was really the need to transfer that villa into her name, and recently she was bothered enough to cooperate with the weak water real estate agency and asked how she could take care of these things. Shouting this time, the viper said that the house was not named after Yingxia, and if she divorced Sankian, she had to give herself some protection. She even asked if Yingxia had seen his attitude towards the viper that day, and that was surely only because his name was the only one on the property certificate. Getting up now, Yingxia said that everything that day was precisely her mother's fault, and she had no right to blaspheme Sankian. So she she shouldn't mention the house insurance issue to the insurance company, because she wouldn't do that. That villa had been bought by Sankian, so it definitely had to be in his name, and she called her daughter stupid, wondering if she could really guarantee that Sankian would be the same forever, and she'd better think straight before it was too late. However, this made Yingxia angry, and she said that her mother wanted her to divorce Sankian later so that she could just keep the village itself, and she didn't care if he changed his heart. But even so, the viper wanted her daughter to divorce him and that was absurdly impossible. And the snake said something that I didn't quite understand, but it seems that she would turn to someone else to help her. Back in the room, Yingxia wondered if Sankian had managed to get in touch with his classmate, and recently, their trucks couldn't even enter the construction area, and all transportation of building materials had stopped. If it went on like this, she was worried that things might get even worse, and he said that they hadn't yet, but she shouldn't worry, because he would be able to sort it out. Sighing worriedly, she said that she hoped that after this time, the project could continue smoothly, and she also said that she had been very tired over the last few days, and a foot massage could relieve a lot of the fatigue. He then asked her what she thought about him giving her this massage, and it was clear that she would accept it, and from the looks of it, she was enjoying it. As he continued with his treatment, she apparently became embarrassed and finally took him away from her immediately due to the embarrassment she had just experienced. As he went to bed, she told him to go to bed early, as he would have to work the next day. And in his thoughts, the cattle said that she was really cute, and he would like to hear more of her voice, but he would have to make do with that. The next morning, while they were running, they stopped to watch the sunrise for a while, and she said that she had dreamed of doing a morning run on the Yunding Mountain countless times, and hadn't expected that it would actually happen. Sankian only responded to his wife by saying, saying that if she was happy, then that was enough to make him happy too, until he realized that his wife was really beautiful, and even told her so. With that, she asked him since when he had become so gallant, and he only said that he had told the truth, and she finally asked him how beautiful he thought she really was. He then said that she was more beautiful than rivers, mountains, and more dazzling than the moon and the stars, and she asked him to stop saying those words, because they were really embarrassing and gave her the creeps. Eventually, they started running again, and he thought thought that sometimes, he really did think about not chasing fame and fortune, and with his current financial resources, it would be enough to have a carefree and happy life with Yingxia. But such an idea could never be feasible today, because if he stopped there, then he would only become a stepping stone for others and that would end up affecting his wife as well. That was precisely why he had to become stronger in order to protect her. And in the Su family building itself, the scum were the ones who received Yingxia along with her cousin. He wondered how she had not yet resolved the issue of collaboration with the weak water company, and if she was going through difficulties, not to mention that the old woman had high expectations of her, then it was not for her to disappoint the old mummy. And Yingxia asked the rest of the hogwash if he had forgotten why they were in their current situation. And the viper said that the old woman would consider changing the person in charge if they didn't lack skills. She didn't know what kind of method Yingxia had used to seduce the owner of the weak water company. But a woman had several ways of going about it. Yingxia retorted to the rest of the zombie, asking if she thought she was capable of managing the company's current affairs. And asked if she was spending so much time paying attention to the engagement gift and trusting a man who never actually showed up. The snake only said that when she married someone from a wealthy family, she wouldn't even look at the Su family with her eyes, and asked what Yingxia considered to be a mere person in charge. In reply, she said that the snake was still her assistant, and she was still obliged to listen to Yingxia, and it was better to pray that that man would show up soon, so that she could be dismissed.
dismissed. Leaving the room, Yingxia told them not to stand there, but to go to the meeting room. She had an important announcement to make in 15 minutes. The rest of the watch was disgusted with his cousin, and the Viper asked him how his investigation was going, and if he had any information. But it was a bit difficult, according to him, but he didn't need to worry, as he was already doing his best to find him for real, and he suspected that the person who gave her the engagement present might be someone from the Han family. If this really is true, then she should definitely be very lucky. And she commented that this was clear, as she had the looks to marry someone from a wealthy family herself, and she swore that when she got married, she would step into Yingxia. In the meeting room itself, the manure said that Yingxia insisted on organizing an urgent meeting at a time when their family was facing problems. Therefore, it was better for her to give good news of the weak water company, and if it was too much pressure on her, it was for her to let them find a solution for her. And the snake said that it wasn't their responsibility, and the old woman was the only one responsible for this matter herself, and they couldn't help her, so she should think of a way for herself. However, she said that she had already solved their problem, and the reason she had set up that meeting was precisely to inform them all, and Manure asked how she had done that, and she had said the day before that it hadn't been solved yet. Even the rattlesnake told Inxia not to joke about it, and she said that Boss Zhang had called her that morning and told her that he wanted to continue with the project himself, and if they didn't believe her, they could call Boss Zhang themselves. She asked if she still needed to let them all know how she really did things, and she had already told the old mummy that, and asked if they really thought she had time to spend fooling around. The people there praised her for her great work, and she really hadn't let them down, with some commenting that they would finally be able to breathe now. Dung, in his thoughts, said that Yingixa was really cheeky, and she shouldn't have deliberately told them when they went to work that morning. She just wanted to see him in the Viper from before so that she could make fools of them. And Yingxia said that two people must always be present at the construction site from the next day onwards, so she assigned the insect and his cousin to that. Not liking what she said, he commented that he was the senior manager of the company, and asked why she had appointed him to go there, saying that he wouldn't go straight away. Even the Viper said she wouldn't go either, and Yingxia should go alone, and since they put it that way, she said she would go to the old mummy and let her decide what to do about this matter herself. That said, they had apparently realized what their place was, and she asked him if, when he had asked her to go to the construction site earlier, she had said that it was too much for her. If he wasn't satisfied with her decision, he was welcome to lodge a complaint with the old woman, leaving the pig manure completely disgusted and not knowing how to act. Despite his anger, he still said he would go to the place she had asked for, and then she asked what the rattlesnake that was there was going to do too, and she said she would go too. But it wasn't for Yingxia to get overconfident, or she'd end up regretting it in the future, and leaving this time, the young woman said that she was looking forward to this day for real, putting an end to that meeting. In a different location, we see this young man talking to Brother Yang, saying that there were three million inside that suitcase, and there was one person he wanted Yang to take care of, and he asked what kind of deep hatred he had for this person. This was because he was willing to spend a huge amount of money, and the young insect said that he would like this person to kneel before him, and for him to return obediently, and he would like the young man's wife to belong to him. Suddenly, someone arrived on the scene, and it was Sankian, who was welcomed by Yang, and you could see that Sankian Yin was welcomed there by all the members present. Incredibly, the young protagonist ended up recognizing the boy who was hiring Yang's services, and apparently the boy was completely startled to see him there. Although the young man couldn't believe what he was seeing, there was no turning back now, and he told Yang that Sankian was the guy he wanted Yang to teach a lesson. Upon realizing the young boy's idiotic attitude, Yang ordered him to take his money and leave, until Sankian asked who it was that would have his leg broken for only three million. As soon as Sankian gave a command to Yang, he quickly passed the order on to his henchmen, and in a matter of seconds, the Dung was asking what Yang was doing, since he had paid three million to be able to break Sankian's leg. As the young henchman of the protagonist's friend taught this insect a lesson, it must finally have learned a lesson. And Sankian said that it didn't matter what he had done in his past life, but that didn't mean he would allow the insect to cause trouble. From now on, his broken leg would be a lesson to him, and if he wanted to go on living, he'd better stay far away from Yingxia. The boy still had the courage to tell Sankian to be careful, because he was going to pay back double what he had put the young insect through that day, and apparently he still had other bones he wanted to break. So that was the protagonist's last warning, and he'd better make sure there wasn't a next time, or the whole young family would be buried with him. After that, he threw the manure out as it was making the place stink, and referring to Yang Yang, he commented that on the phone, he had said something that had happened to Mo Yang, 
asking what specifically had really happened to him. Responding, Young said, Boss Mo recently came to the bar with people from the underground boxing ring. Sin said that he suffered and was seriously injured. Underground Boxing Arena Ife is the boss of the Yuncheng Underground Boxing Arena, right? Sankian asked, Yuncheng currently has three underground boxing arenas, all under the name of Ife, according to Yang. He also told Sankian that he had heard that Fei didn't like Boss Mo leaving the cave, so he wanted to use any means to interrupt Boss Mo's movement. If that's what it is, get Mo Yang to come here and I'll help you sort it out, Sankian said to his friend. When Chief Mo was already on the scene, Sankian commented to him that he had heard about the underground boxing arena. And about this, he asked if Mo Yang needed a helper. Responding, he said, Can you help me find some masters? Do you need to spend money for that? Unfortunately, several of his subordinates have been injured and hospitalized recently, and their hands are tied. However, Sankian said that he was a master, and wouldn't change a penny if Mo Yang left. But Mo Yang told Sankian to let it go, as his arms and legs were quite small. He was afraid that Sankian would be completely beaten up by the others, leaving the young protagonist somewhat disgruntled that his friend had underestimated him. Now, they were to go to the boxing arena itself, and it would allow Mo Yang to really see what the young Sankian was capable of. And soon after, they were watching the fights from the arena itself. This extra was talking to a guy called Fei, who was in charge of the place, if I'm not mistaken, and he said that almost half of the garbage under Mai Yang went to the hospital, and it looked like that round of fights should pass. This Chief Dung then said that the City of Clouds is apparently very different from the old days, and people like him who can't keep up with the times don't honestly like being at home without going out to wave the flag. In other words, those who don't adapt are left behind and have to surrender by raising the white flag, which is a sign of surrender. And suddenly someone appeared telling their boss that Mo Yang was there again. This made the boss very angry, apparently, and even he couldn't believe that Mo Yang had come there again just to make trouble. The young man said that no matter how he looked at him, it didn't seem like he was really there to make trouble, as he was just watching the fight from the audience. Mocking Mo Yang, this Dung wondered if he was there so he could steal the techniques and learn the martial arts, and he told his servants to let him watch his men. Besides, it was for his subordinates to calmly observe young Mo Yang. And speaking of him, they realized that Sankian hadn't come back from the bathroom for quite a while, and Yang said that he wasn't the kind of person to sneak around like that. After that, it was announced to the people watching the fights that a special round would take place that night, and he asked who would like to get up on stage and experience the sensation of fighting a professional boxer. They could rest assured that the boxers would ensure people's safety, but it seemed that no one really dared to face the thug except for the protagonist, who was now wearing a mask and a very different outfit. Apparently, the masked spectator was brave enough, so he was asked to take the stage. And in no time at all, Sankian was already inside the arena. With such incredible jumping ability, he must not have been an ordinary person, and asked the boxer to be careful not to lose the reputation he had built up. Since those guys were apparently there to make trouble, the boxer didn't have to take it easy, and he told his superior not to worry, because with his opponent's small arms and legs, he could send Sankian to the hospital with one blow. Mo Yang and Young Yang commented that the appearance of the masked fighter was somewhat familiar, until Yang realized that he was precisely the young protagonist, and Mo Yang began to wonder if he wasn't going to die inside the arena. At the sound of the bell, the boxer told the protagonist to be careful not to be pushed around by him until the end of his life, as the big man's attacks were no joke, and the protagonist asked why he was talking such nonsense. As soon as the big man came at him, Sankian quickly dodged and struck back, causing him to lose his balance and finally crash into the wall, fainting completely soon after. The people in the audience began to be amazed by Sankian's skills, as that boxer was easily defeated by the young masked protagonist. While Mo Yang tried to hold back his surprise. The young young said that this wasn't fair, since Sankian was handsome, rich and also had enormous combat skills. Quickly, the young masked man asked them to bring in another fighter, and no matter how many new fighters arrived, Sankian quickly finished them all off, regardless of their size. The two of them didn't even know where to put their faces, so surprised were they by the young protagonist. And once again he had taken down another big man in just a second. The young even asked if he really planned to knock out the entire boxing ring by himself. Himself, but the young said no, and that was definitely impossible, as he phase boxers weren't easy to beat like that. 
but he still doubted that they could stop him. Mo Young even asked if Young Young really believed that Yi Fei's boxers couldn't be stopped, since they were both boxers. But the protagonist finished them off without allowing them a chance to really fight back. He really didn't understand why such a powerful person was willing to join the Su family and suffer to be treated like a worthless person by the whole of Yun Cheng. And the Young Young commented that perhaps it was because the young hand sank in is just like Mo Young, and he would be willing to give up everything for his wife. The presenter then asked if the young master would like to continue yet, and he said that if there was all that kind of garbage, then he wouldn't waste his time there. With that, the presenter said that he didn't need to worry, and they would definitely let the strongest person in the boxing arena perform this time, and they definitely wouldn't let the young protagonist down. He then ordered them to call a fighter called Blade 12, causing the young young to be surprised to hear this name, and the young Mo Young to ask if this Blade 12 was really that strong. Blade's fight record was very poor, and he was currently the only one capable of holding on to a complete victory, and he was merciless right from the start. His opponent, the luckier one, was sent to hospital to lie down for half a month, and we soon spotted a spot in the arena still there, and it turned out to be Blade 12 himself. The young man told him that the referee was calling him, so that he could go on stage, and he rudely said that on that very day, there was no fight for him really. Responding, the little young man said that someone was smashing up the entire boxing ring and knocked them both down, and he worked for the boxing ring when it had difficulties, and it needed him now, making the young man ask him to please go and sort it all out. Holding the boy by the collar, he told the young man not to talk like that to Blade 12 about the main reasons, and he was only there to make money, if he didn't have money then he wouldn't lift a finger. When he said that the referee had told him that that fight would be worth twice as much as his fight, and that the money would certainly be given to him. Blade 12 quickly threw the boy to the ground as if he were nothing, and he finally went into the arena. Shortly afterwards, there he was, and the referee asked him to give the young protagonist a good lesson, who didn't know the difference in height between heaven and earth. He then quickly asked the protagonist if it was he who had smashed up the place, and gave Sankian a suggestion, saying that the city hospital was good, and he would like to see the young protagonist use it later. In response, Sankian told the Blade to watch that place carefully, as it would definitely be his grave, and as soon as the bell rang, the order was given for them to start fighting. He challenged Sankian to make him take even one step backwards, because no matter how hard he tried, it would be completely in vain, and this made the young man relatively excited indeed. As the conversation had become too boring, they decided to move on to the most important action, making their fists clash against each other. Although nothing had happened with the first attack, the Blade wondered who the young protagonist really was, since there was no one who could stand up to him in that entire boxing ring. Excited, he continued to attack Sankian non-stop, and initially, the young protagonist could only hold off the big man's blows by defending himself, causing him to be praised by the big man afterwards. But he wasn't going to stop there, as the fight had only just begun, and when one of his blows hit Sankian, Mo Yang became worried, as the blade's strength was almost double that of the masked man. Yang also commented that Sankian had taken several blows from the blade, and he had only thrown one punch, and Mo Yang said that Sankian, depending on the situation, situation, wasn't that good, and they should be the only ones there to really help him. As they ran, Yang said that even if he lost his temper with Yi Fei, he shouldn't leave Sankian in danger, and Blade told the protagonist that he had already punched the boy several times, but he still hadn't fallen, being the first to stay on his feet for so long. Sankian responded by saying, a good person like you chooses to come here to make money, but your talent is buried. Blade said that after he took the money from the boxing arena, he had to do things for the arena itself, and he admired the boy, but that didn't mean Blade would allow him to leave. Heading towards the protagonist again, this time Sankian finally decided to act, and when he finally approached the Blade, he struck with his feet, causing the Blade to be thrown a relatively long distance. The two from before were stunned to see this, as he was forced to back off by Sankian, and Sankian asked if what he had said earlier really still counted. Leaving this time, Blade 12 told the referee that he didn't want any more money from that match, and the referee said that the boxing arena was very strict and he couldn't just leave like that. Just pushing the referee, Blade asked him if he would like the big man to break his promise, and it would be better if he just got out of there. And from the outside, we see that the young protagonist really had a hard time in the previous fight. Now that things were calmer, Mo Young asked him if he really needed to go to hospital, and he said it was fine, and to let Lin Young take him home right away. As soon as Sankian got into the car, Mo Young commented that Blade 12 was reliable, but if he wanted to continue fighting, he would be a nuisance to the protagonist 
last. Sankian said that if the giant still wanted to fight, he himself would end up miserably underground. And when Mo Yang asked what would happen to Blade 12, he replied by saying that the big man would become disabled. In the young protagonist's house again, he felt how hard it was to have fought against Blade 12, as he really did seem to have copper skin and iron bones, so much so that his hands were completely scrapped. The moment he went to lie down, he realized that his futon was no longer on the floor, and Yingxia reminded him of when she said that as long as he helped her solve the problems of the weak water company, she would let him sleep in bed. I think someone has truly forgotten whose house it really is. But even so, the trained puppy was happy with just that, and was clearly stopped immediately by his wife afterwards. She said that his position was beyond that red line on the blanket, and finally he asked when exactly that red line would disappear, and she said that it depends a lot on his performance. But when the question was what if she crossed that line, she tried to disguise it by saying that there was no chance of that happening, and he thought to himself that Yingxir really wasn't honest in her sleep. The next morning, our protagonist was dreaming of some kind of steam bun pressing down on him, but in fact it was his wife who had crossed the line that she herself had told him he couldn't cross. After waking up, she realized that she had crossed the blanket line, but luckily for her, Sankian hadn't woken up, otherwise it would have been very embarrassing for her. While she was getting ready, she asked her husband if he wasn't too comfortable, asking if he wasn't going to run that day, and Sankian asked if he could take the day off. Grabbing her husband's arm, the young woman said that she wasn't used to going out without him, and from his trembling. You could tell that he was suffering just from this little act on his wife's part. As they ran, he wondered why his hands still hurt so much, since it had been a day since the fight, until they decided to stop for a rest. Yingxia thanked him for allowing them to qualify for a view of the City of Clouds from that spot, and he replied that it was a shame that the scenery wasn't beautiful enough. It's not pretty here, so where is it pretty? Yingxia asked, pointing to another place. Sankian said, right over there, there's a town called Yenching which is the most beautiful. She then mentioned that the young boy's heart was indeed big, and Yenching is a capital of power, so much so that the Su family wants to go to Yenching to develop, and asked how she could be qualified, perhaps referring to the Su family. Immediately after hearing this, Sankian said that one day he would take them there to see different scenarios, and she believed him, since he was able to buy that entire villa that cost 100 million. As it was getting late, she pulled the protagonist up, and despite the pain he was feeling, his happiness was also enormous which made him endure the pain. A while later, Yingxia asked, Sankian, what's wrong with you today? Why don't you drive? Yingxia, actually, my hand is hurt and I can't drive. Hurt? But I was holding your hand just now, isn't that serious? It's not too serious, but if I drive, I won't feel comfortable, said Sankian. She then said that he didn't need to say anything to her, and now they should go to the hospital immediately. But according to him, he didn't really need to. He was just going to take two days off. But that turned his wife into the bad guy, and she practically forced him to go to the hospital whether he wanted to or not, and even claimed that she was the one who really had the final say. At the hospital itself, the doctor was completely freaked out by what he was seeing, and asked what the young boy had experienced with his own hands. This was because, with the exception of the thumb, all the fractures were intertwined, and she wondered why he hadn't told her, since she had been holding his hand a short while ago, asking if he hadn't hurt himself even more with it. In response, he said that it was the first time she had taken the initiative to hold his hand, so there was no way he could reject it or feel any pain from it. With that said, she started to argue with him, since she had squeezed the young protagonist's hand a lot, but he still wouldn't let go of hers. To calm his wife down, Sankian told Yingxia that every time they held hands, the mountains were worthy of his affection, until they were interrupted by the doctor. Basically, this was a doctor's office, not a place for people to flirt, and he asked if they would still like to heal the young protagonist's hand causing the two to immediately apologize for what had happened. The young man's hand was seriously injured and needed to be plastered, and he couldn't do any heavy lifting during the recovery period, which would last 40 days, during which time she would have to look after him. Looking at his hands, Sankian commented to the doctor that it wouldn't take 40 days, and in fact, as he used to get injured a lot in the past, a week would be enough for him to really recover. This time it wasn't just Yingxia who argued with him, but also the doctor, who said that it was definitely impossible for him 
to recover in less than 40 days, at least not according to the decades of experience the doctor had. After these two fighting with him, he had no more arguments to use against both of them, and in a different location, the young man was completely bored. Looking at her husband, Yingxia said that during this time, he must follow her to work every day, otherwise she wouldn't be able to look after him. Suddenly, someone arrived carrying the young Yingxia's lunch, and I guess that was all he wanted, since now his wife was even feeding him. In his thoughts, he recognized that this was a good thing too, until it was time for the young protagonist to go and relieve himself a little. But let's just say that when he was at the urinal, he realized that it wasn't going to be that easy, and then he became desperate. A while later, in a different place this time, we see that Mo Yang can't stop laughing at the young protagonist's face, and it seems he's never laughed so much in his life. The young Mo Yang ended up taking the opportunity to make fun of what had recently happened to the young protagonist, making him angry and ordering his friend to give him something straight away. Changing the subject, Mo Yang said, I've heard that Yifei is sending people to investigate news about you. It's best that you keep a low profile during this time. Having Yifei as a person, if he finds out it's you, but can't be used by him, he's likely to find ways to finish you off. Sankian replied, Don't worry, I can't be found. And when Mo Yang asked how that was possible, he finally remembered something. He said that Sankian was known as a good for nothing in Cloud City, and no one suspected him. And he really was invincible in disguise. He also commented that Blade 12 was really very useful, and he had found a way to bring the big man over to their side, and Mo Young said he would send someone to take care of it. That's because with Blade 12's character, it was impossible to be like that under Yi Fei's banner, and there must be some reason behind it for sure. Back at the Su family mansion, Sankian asked why she was going to the old mummy's house that night, and Yingxia said that the company was in big trouble, so the old scum called everyone to discuss a solution. He then asked what the problem was, and she said that unfortunately Unfortunately, cooperation on the Chengxi project was very difficult for the Su family, and the funds can't be returned, but the building materials have to be delivered continuously. Yingxia expected the Su family to have financial difficulties, but didn't expect the meeting to happen so soon, and he commented that they seemed to be raising funds from various companies, but that it wasn't a long-term solution. A while later, the old mummy said that she had called everyone there because she wanted them to make suggestions for the Su family, and the pig manure said said that currently, to deal with the Chengxi project, the company book was already empty. To deal with the project in the west of the city, she can only find a way to get a bank loan, and the rest of the wash said she had already spoken to someone about it. However, no bank was willing to make a loan, suspecting that someone is causing problems in this matter, and there were people jealous of the Su family's success in getting the city project further west. The toxic snake asked the old mummy if the bank loan didn't work, what they should do then. But the walking mule said he just hoped they could sell all the houses in their hands and valuables, thus helping the family. Those on the Sankey side clearly didn't like what the old scum said, and another asked how this could work, because after selling the house, he asked where they were going to live. Having said that, she asked if he wouldn't be able to rent a house temporarily, and also asked her son if he felt that what she said was nonsense. Apparently no one is man enough to go against this broken down old woman, and he said he only meant that. Even if she sold the house, the money was just a drop in the bucket above all else, and would have no effect. The treacherous viper added that their house could be worth a few million if it was sold, and she quickly threw the problem back at Yingxia, saying that if she sold the villa on the mountain, the money would be worth more than if they all sold their houses. While Yingxia was surprised by what they were doing, the other people completely agreed with the viper's suggestion, and by the look on the protagonist's face, he was actually enjoying their conversation. Again, the mule spoke up, saying that the old man had left the money to Yingxia to buy the villa, and now it would be used to help the company overcome its difficulties, asking if she would disagree with that. The old woman then said that last time, the Han family gave her bride price, and she also planned to use that amount as a pawn to pay the company's bills. Now the toxic snake went against what the old woman said, saying that that amount was hers in the future, and asked if the Han family wouldn't be angry if they found out about it, saying that he didn't agree with it afterwards. But the walking mummy asked if that viper was sure that it was really her they were looking for, and she said yes, because no one else in the Su family really had that qualification, and they weren't as beautiful as her. Yingxia then asked her what the reason for this was, since her villa could even be sold, but the broken old woman couldn't use the viper's dowry. In response, the viper said, the reason is simple, because this is my opportunity to marry into a wealthy family, and it's also an opportunity for the Su family to get in touch with a wealthy family. 
and his villa is the money left to him by his grandfather, and it's only natural to sell it to solve a crisis in his family. And upon hearing this, Sankian said something in Yingxia's ear, and she asked him if he was really sure about it, making him just ask her to trust him. Yingxia said that she had a way of getting a loan from the bank for the Su family, but she had one condition, and when the mummy asked what that condition was, she said that she would take care of the company's finances from now on. Apparently some people there didn't like what Yingxia said at all, and the viper commented that he hadn't expected her to be so ambitious, asking if she wanted to take over the whole company for herself. Yingxia then asked how she was going to take over the entire company, and whether she had ever taken a penny that she shouldn't have. On the contrary, what about the viper who had embezzled money from the company for all those years, and no one had said anything about it? The old woman then asked if Yingxia really had a way of getting a loan, and the sick pig remnant told the old mummy not to believe her as it wouldn't make sense for her to actually get such a loan. He went on to say that even if she got a million or two, it was pointless, because Yingxia was only trying to get ownership of the company. The old woman then said that if she really wanted to manage the company's finances, it was first for Yingxia to tell her how much of a loan she could really take out. Sankian then decided to speak up, and said that it was a billion, and when the rest of the feces asked if Sankian had the right to speak there, the old woman ordered the protagonist to shut up. Yingxia then said that Sankian wasn't kidding, and she could take out a loan of a billion, but only if she really controlled the company's finances as well. Some people commented that even with the market value of the Su family's company, there was no way a bank would be willing to lend that much money, and asked how she would be able to borrow a billion. Although the old woman remained silent for a while, she said that if Yingxia really could take out a billion loan, she could promise her granddaughter that the finances would be controlled by Yingxia. Leaving, she asked Sankian if he really believed that she would be able to take out a billion loan, and the Finnish jellyfish told her son-in-law that if it didn't work, their village would simply disappear. Although she continued to spout her toxic nonsense as usual, he calmly told them not to worry, as there would be no problem. In a different scene, we see the young lady from the bank before talking to the president of the company, and she said that the Su family wanted a loan, which was guaranteed by an esteemed client, and asked if he had time to meet them. The bank president then asked if they weren't responsible for the project to the west of the city, and was their director supposed to tell them that he had simply disappeared and didn't really have time for them. The esteemed client said that if they didn't give the loan to Sue's family, he would transfer all the money in the bank elsewhere, and the president told her to let him do it, asking how much he really had. When the director told him that he had 10 billion in assets, the manager was quickly at a loss as to where to put his surprised face, and told them to quickly make the preparations and formalities and contract, making an appointment for the next day. Although he had promised some companies not to grant a loan to the Sioux family, he couldn't believe that a client with 10 billion could come forward to guarantee it, and no one could afford to mess with such a client. At the Sioux family villa, Sankian said that he had gotten an appointment with the bank president for Yingxia, and they were going to meet him the next day, leaving his dear wife surprised by this news. After that, she asked how she could thank him after such a feat, and he, being too much of a cattle prod, said that she was his wife, so he didn't need benefits to really help her. The guy is not only a cattle, but he's also a fool and an idiot, so much so that even Yingxia got angry with him for being a man with no value and no attitude. As she lay disgusted with the protagonist, she thought that he was just an idiot by the looks of it, still wondering if he intended not to cross the red line of the blanket for the rest of his life. I said, the guy is literally a chicken when it comes to taking action. The young man with no attitude just wondered why she was nervous again, even more so for no reason. And surely a woman turns faster than turning a page and indeed they are mysterious creatures. The next morning, the protagonist was being fed by his wife, and the toxic snake said that since Sankian's hands were injured, he should just stay at home. However, Yingxia said that Sankian should go to the company with her. Furthermore, she asked who would look after him if it wasn't for her, and as Yingxia had to go to the bank to negotiate, the snake said that it wasn't convenient to take Sankian with her. As they had Auntie at home, she didn't need to worry, and Sankian said she could go ahead, as he would also like to rest for a while at home. With that, she did indeed do as her husband had asked, and Toxicity himself asked when he would put Yingxia's name on the village. He only said that the villa could even be passed on to her, as long as she wanted, and it didn't really matter. But in his thoughts, he complimented her by calling her an old fox, and she just wanted him to stay at home to talk about it. Immediately upon hearing this, the jellyfish told them to hurry up and find a time to resolve 
resolve this matter, and he said that if he is really expelled from the Sioux family, the toxic snake might bitterly regret it. Disgusted, she asked him if his money was almost gone and how long he intended to be so arrogant. He said that the money was really running out, and he could only buy at least 10 of those villages if he wanted to. And the snake said that his competence hadn't improved, but his ability to brag was getting better and better. She went on to say that even if he had money, she didn't care one bit, and he asked if a woman as self-interested as her really didn't care how much money he had. This made the self-interested jellyfish completely disgusted with what he said, and seriously this time. He said that if she tried to destroy his relationship with Yingxia, he would make her regret being born. Leaving the place this time, the viper remembered Sankian's mother's warning, and it was the same words and the same tone and expression, too, and then became completely frightened. Now, she thought it must be just an illusion wondering how such a powerful woman could have any connection with the young protagonist. But ignoring this fact, she told herself that when Sankian gave the village to Yingxia, she would settle the score with him once and for all. At the bank itself, the bank president asked if Yingxia had gone there alone, and she said yes, because she was now in charge of the project to the west of the city, so she would speak to them on behalf of the Sioux family. The president asked if the young lady was aware of the current situation, as all the banks were refusing to give them a real loan. She then said that she knew what he meant by that, but was pleased to make him believe it, as Sioux family was absolutely capable of paying back the loan, and he must be well aware of the value of the project to the west of the city. Responding, he said, as far as the Sioux family is concerned, it's really difficult for me to lend a billion, but for the sake of your friend's reputation, I agree to this amount. I hope Miss Sue can introduce me to your friend one day, because I'd like to meet him. She agreed, but then began to think that this friend the president was talking about was probably Sankian, and then wondered if his reputation was worth a billion. It even seems that since the Crystal Restaurant incident, Sankian has become increasingly complex. Or in other words, he was never an ordinary person, he just hadn't shown himself before. She then asked the president if her friend's reputation was worth that much money, and he just said that if she had any doubts, she should ask her friend directly, as he couldn't reveal anything. Leaving there, the president commented to his director that, unfortunately, many companies would be dissatisfied with him that time, and she said that they had a big client on their hands now. In addition, the Su family was cooperating with the Yanjing Han family on the project to the west of the city. The future development was inexcusable, and he asked who exactly this client was, and if there was such a rich person in their city. She said his name was Han Sankian, and asked if she should investigate him, and he was surprised since he was the Su family's useless son-in-law. Even the principal was surprised, as Sankian was known as a loser, and the president said that perhaps it was a different person with the same name. After all, the Sioux family never paid any attention to that useless son-in-law. If it really was the same person, he wondered how Sankian could help the Sioux family, and humiliated and belittled him during the three years he was married. Arriving at her house again, the Viper was already asking why her daughter had taken so long, and Yingxia was asking where Sankian was, and she made up an excuse saying that Sankian wanted to pass the village on to Yingixa. She should then hurry up and take some time to resolve this matter with him, and the young lady asked if that was precisely why she had asked Sankian to stay at home that day, and she said yes. But immediately Yingxia said she didn't want that house, and her mother started talking nonsense after that that she was doing it for their own good and so on, and if she didn't want it, it was no longer for Yingxia to call her mother. Since she put it that way, then it would be just like that, and it wasn't for that disposable viper to think that Yingxia didn't know what she was really thinking. If she carried on with her nonsense, she would have to leave that house in no time, and the finished Medusa even tried to retort, but to no avail. When she met her husband, he asked how her day had been, and she just asked if the viper had bothered him again. But everything was fine, and it was no big deal, it was just passing the village on to her. She, crying this time, asked him if he didn't know why her mother was doing this, and asked him how he could agree with her. Answering, he said, of course I know what she's up to, but you're the only one who can decide this matter, aren't you? I don't trust her, but how can I not trust you? This left the young Yingxia completely unmoved after hearing what Sankian had said, and she finally rewarded him with a kiss and thanked him too. He then asked for just a little time so that he could prepare himself psychologically before he actually had a chance to respond. That said, she said that the loan issue had been resolved and the president was willing to pay the Sioux family because of Sankian's reputation, and she asked if his reputation was worth a billion. 
He then said that for her kiss, a billion was worth nothing. But I completely disagree. When a guy is cattle, he's professional cattle. And this one even deserved to have his work permit signed as profession supreme cattle. She shouted at him saying that he was gallant and that the president would like to meet him, asking her to present Sankian to him. And hugging his wife, he said he would make time to meet him. If she and the Su family want better development in Yun City, these connections are special. And she commented that he still hadn't answered her question. He then said that his net worth was in the tens of billions, and it was more than clear that the president would respect him. And she just said that he was bragging again, so he could forget about it if he didn't want to tell the truth. He clearly said that he was telling her the truth, but it was she who didn't want to believe it. But she would rather believe in ghosts than actually believe that he had a net worth of tens of billions. At the hospital itself, the doctor found it incredible that he had managed to recover completely in just one week, and then asked him if he was Superman or something. But for him it was no big deal, and he asked if he could leave now, and since everything was fine, the doctor just asked him to remember not to lift heavy objects with his hands for a month. Leaving there, he was happy to have finally gotten rid of the troublesome plaster, however, he was really going to miss that heavenly life of Yingxia feeding him every day. Sankian immediately made a call, asking if the bank president would like to see him, and his secretary said that Sankian would be at the bank in a few minutes. At the bank itself, he said that he hoped the president would be able to take care of Yingxia in the future, and the president just asked the young man not to worry. But apparently the president had already realized that he really was the son-in-law of the Su family. Then the president said, Mr. Sankian, I'm curious, but I don't know if I should ask you that. Interrupting, Sakian said, I know what you want to ask. Yes, I'm the son-in-law of the Su family, Han Sankian. Apart from that, I'm not at liberty to say much more. In the president's thoughts, he said that it was indeed true. But he wondered how a person with tens of billions in wealth could enter the Su family only to suffer such humiliation. He told the president that as long as he was willing to help his wife, he owed him a favor, and in the future, if he needed any help from the protagonist, all he had to do was ask. The chairman just thanked him and said that he would do his best to help him, and as the director had also helped a lot with this, he had allowed her to handle a financial product for him just for fun. She thanked him immediately, and asked him to take a look at the papers, as these were some wealth management products recently launched by their bank. But in her mind, she thought it was a great way for the Sankian to thank her, and if that kind of rich man would just buy a product, she could get a lot of commission. When choosing a product, he told her to take 100 million in commission just for fun, leaving both the director and the president surprised. They were supposed to take care of it now, and he had to run to pick up his wife from work. And as he walked down the street, he noticed someone calling out to him, and it was precisely Yingxia's friend, who had humiliated Sankian in the past as well. She quickly asked where the young protagonist's car was, and he asked if she was being chased by anyone, and she quickly jumped towards him asking him to carry her, but it didn't work out. Crying, she asked why he was avoiding her, and some people suddenly appeared, and this young woman asked Sankian if he was the bastard who was helping her, and was told to get out of the way if she didn't want any trouble. But he said he didn't even know her, and she fought with him straight away, saying that she was his wife's best friend, and he couldn't leave her there just to go from bad to worse. Since he had nothing to do with her, the young woman asked him to leave and not delay her work, and he asked what would happen if he refused to do so. In response, she simply said that if he wanted to be beaten up, all he had to do was stand there, and she quickly ordered her guards to finish off the young protagonist. The guards even tried to lower the protagonist's morale, calling him a tampon and other diminutive things too, and the toxic friend said that if he went to hospital, she would find the best doctor for him. However, he told her to hide, and by the way, they were the ones who would need a good hospital when he was finished. And as soon as the guards went after Sankian, he easily managed to finish them all off. Even the shrew wondered how the protagonist could fight so well, and he asked the young woman if she could now tell him what was going on. Although the young viper remained silent, it was the girl from before who decided to speak up, and she said that the viper had tried on some clothes in the store, grabbed them and simply ran off, and that it was wrong to take other people's things and leave without paying. As she cried, Sankian was completely at a loss as to how to deal with it, and immediately apologized for what had happened, asking how much the damage had cost, and he would pay for it, and the medical expenses of the security guards would also be included. Leaving, the pink viper thanked the Sankian and said she would pay him the money later, but he said she wouldn't always be so lucky. After that, the young woman asked the protagonist if he was going to take part in the alumni reunion that year, and he just said that Yingxia had returned and didn't say anything about it. We used to attend the summer welcome every year, but she hasn't shown up since she married you. 
Didn't you know? Former classmates make fun of Yingxia now, and in the past, Yingxia had a very high status in the circle of classmates. Many of the boys in our class chased after her in order to be the first to invite her to the summer welcome. But since she married you, especially the guys who fought over her before, have started making fun of her at class meetings, said the pink viper. Sankian just listened in silence. But these young people were just losers who couldn't accept that the young Yingxia would never belong to any of them, and so they ended up insulting her behind her back. The toxic young woman said that there was a certain someone who had been holding a grudge since they were at school, and now she had also been forced into marriage, and she couldn't wait to see Yingxia's words pay off. He then asked who that person was, who had the name of Rong Momo, and she said that her name was actually Rong Liu, and she was an unruly woman, and she was unpleasant, so she called her Rong Momo. She went on to tell Sankian that Yingxia had suffered many humiliations because of him, and he should help her let go of that anger now. Awkwardly this time, he just said that he would remember that, and now, if there was nothing else that young woman wanted to talk about, he would go and pick up Yingxia from work, and finally he was free to go. But as he was leaving, this young woman gave me a look that left me wondering if it was one of psyche, or sadness, but she said the following phrase, a summer welcome. You'll never know how much I envy you. As soon as Sankian met up with Yingxia, she asked why he was there, and if she hadn't left him to rest at home, and he was happily surprised, saying that he didn't need any more rest. Angry with him this time, she asked when he'd had the plaster removed, and the doctor had said it would take 40 days for him to recover, wondering if he really wanted to be without his hands. He just said he was fine, and the doctor had released him, and if she didn't believe him, he could take her to the hospital to confirm it. Really? You're not lying to me, are you? Yingxia asked. How could I lie to you? Give me the car keys, I'm driving today while we go home, Sankian replied. In the case itself, she wanted to know if the doctor really believed in her husband's miraculous recovery, and he said yes, because he had completely recovered and was able to move his hands again quickly, and everyone in the hospital was stunned. Yingxia ended up commenting on some things that I didn't understand, and perhaps this was a translation error, or it was just me who didn't understand the context properly. But then she pressed him in the face, asking him what he was thinking, and it was nothing according to him. He had just met her friend on the way from the hospital to the company. She then said that Yeayo hadn't spoken to her for a long time, and asked what she wanted to talk to Sankian about, but he said that she had stolen clothes from a store and had been chased down the street by several guards. He even got involved in the situation, and ended up fighting with the guys, and outraged this time. Yingxia asked how he could just hit someone out of the blue, and what would happen to him if he got hurt even more. From now on, he was forbidden to fight with anyone without asking her permission, and he said that he would only hit anyone she actually authorized. Anyway, Shen Lingao also told me about the alumni reunion and wants us to take part, said Sankian. But Yingxia didn't want to go to such a reunion. He promised he would take Yingxia, and she asked why he thought they should really go, and he could even go with her friend if he wanted, and even hold hands. Speaking of which, why are you so happy? Do you want me to do this for both of you? Yao has been lusting after you for a long time anyway, said the jealous young lady. And in disguise, fearing that he would meet his death in person, he said that he was a very well-married man. So he refused to go with Yao alone. You may not be aware, but my colleagues treat me like a joke now, said Yingxia. All the more reason to go. You're in charge of the Chengxi project now, and you live in a village in the mountains, and it's you who has the right to laugh here, Sankian replied. She even kept trying to come up with more excuses not to go, but the protagonist stopped her, and as long as she didn't treat him like an idiot, no one in that world had the right to treat him like that. When she said she wouldn't do that to him, he simply decided to go to the party, and he had never been to a classmate's reunion, so it would be nice to get to know the world itself. In the company that Yingxia was probably in charge of, we see the insect relaxing, and he says that a week has passed, but Su Yingxia's loan has not yet been negotiated, and now that she had bought a house in a mountain village, he just wanted to see how it would really turn out, and soon the viper appeared asking if he had heard the news. She had just heard from the finance department that the loan had been credited to the company, leaving the scum simply incredulous about it, and he didn't believe it was really possible. She said that the entire finance department knew about it, and the total amount was a billion, and he said that he really didn't expect Yingxia to do that, and called the viper for them to go to the finance department next. But there was no need for that, and she was there to take him to the conference room for a meeting, because the old finished mummy has called everyone to this meeting, so it must be a serious problem. 
In the meeting room, the walking mummy said that Yingxia had helped the company overcome its difficulties with a loan of 1 billion yuan, and in the future she would be solely responsible for the finances, as previously promised. Besides, she had one more thing to announce that day, and Pig Manure wondered what else she was going to announce, and whether she was going to give the position of company president to Yingxia. People immediately said that she had to think it through, and that this was a big decision for the company, and shouldn't be treated as a joke. She said that considering the burden of hosting Yingxia is so heavy, she wanted someone to help share some of that weight. And Hei Chao, from now on, was the company's deputy director, fully assisting Su Yingxia with the West City project. And that was literally all the human scum project would want to hear. Looking at Yingxia, he said to himself, but as if he were talking to her, that the old mummy had given him the position of deputy director, so that meant he had half the power in his hands. The old woman had said it glibly, but she clearly didn't believe in Yingxia yet, and no matter how much she did, in the mummy's head, she'd never be as good as the Beetle Project. The zombie project even had the audacity to congratulate Yingxia on this, and in the end, the mummy said that the next thing she would leave to them, and they had a lot to discuss about the company's next steps. Leaving the room completely, the manure said that apparently, no matter what Yingxia did, the old woman would never take her seriously, and Yingxia's position in the old woman's eyes could never be compared to his. Outraged, she said that from that day on, she would review all the company's accounts, and in the past she didn't care how he made money in the company. But from now on, if she lost a single penny, he could clearly explain to her why. While she was leaving, the Beetle Project told his father that even the old lady didn't care about such things, and his father was apparently just like his son, not even worth what I'd just left in the bathroom, practically. He then told the others not to worry, and now that Dung was deputy director of the company, Yingxia wouldn't dare make things difficult for them from now on. This throwaway fly project then said that the loan was for a billion, and if they can't pocket a sum for them, it would simply change its name, I. E. It wants to divert the company's money to them. He didn't even care about the Sioux family ancestors, and it wasn't for them to worry, because he was going to protect the rest of the scum, and if Yingxia dared to embarrass them, he'd like to see her really try. People were counting on the manure, since everyone in this family was nothing more than intoxicated rats. And returning to Yingxia this time, she told Sankian that her friend had asked her to tell him that she was grateful for his help the other day. What's more, she even invited them to dinner at her house, and he was the one who was going to drive, and she was just going to show him the way, and as the bank had already lent her the money, he asked why she was still unhappy. She then said that the old mummy had given Pig Manure the position of deputy director to help her share the pressure, and also asked her to discuss everything with Pig Manure in the future. I expected the old mummy to find a way to control her actions in the company, I just didn't expect her to do it so blatantly, said Sankian. She said that the old woman had told her before that she would be fully responsible for the West City project and the company's finances, and wondered when that aged snake would recognize who the pig manure really was. Sankian asked if it wasn't plain to see, and she simply didn't want Yingxia to gain too much prominence in the company and affect her beloved grandson. After all, he was the candidate for president. But this made the young woman even angrier, wondering if the mummy wasn't afraid that she would leave the company. And the cooperation between the city and the West, the bank loan, all of this was thanks to Yingxia's work. If she didn't care about the company, how long would the Sioux family last? Yingxia asked. Sankian asked if his wife knew, which was why the old woman dared to do this, because she simply used the young lady to grow the company at all costs, but didn't give her due credit. As they arrived at the place where the students' reunion would take place, Yingxia asked Yao if it wasn't difficult to book the Fying Resort, and who was so generous. In response, she said that it was Momo Rong's husband, and she had heard that the owner of the resort was her husband's uncle. On hearing this, Sankian commented that Yang Kai was a very powerful man, and he had strong connections in Yun City, and even various bosses needed to flatter him. Han Sankian, why did you start talking about his prestige? Yayao asked. Yang Kai would be nothing if he hadn't hit the jackpot three years ago. How could he afford to open a resort? Great luck. Where did you get that from? The young cattleman asked back. He went on to say that he had heard rumors that he was just a bricklayer and didn't have much money, and that he only made his fortune after winning the lottery three years ago, opening a resort and making friends with various bosses. With that said, Yao only said that if he hadn't won the lottery, he would still be beating Lage to this day. 
The young cattle eventually remembered something that had happened relatively recently, and he had said that this was only an initial investment for his guards, and he would like them to make connections around the city. He even thought that this was how Yan Kai used his money, and soon we got a cut to a couple who were worthless, and Dung was bragging about the car he picked up for his girlfriend. Some of the girls there even started to get a little jealous of the shrew, and others wondered where they could get a husband as rich as hers. In response, she had the audacity to say that he wasn't as good as the girls thought and she had to think about it for a long time before actually getting with him. Besides, if the young man had not given her that diamond ring, she herself said, she would never have stayed with him. This is definitely going to be one more guy who gets dumped by his wife and left with nothing as soon as she gets the chance. And this rattlesnake was just trying to show off more and more to his friends. Although the Supreme Cattle had heard all this, he still said that he had a surprise for her, and that he only intended to tell her about it on her birthday. But since her friends were there, he revealed that he had ordered ordered her a customized ring from the doctor. The lovebirds were happily married, and this doctor is so skilled and famous that he only allows you to order one customized ring in your entire life with him. They soon realized that Yingxia had finally arrived, and even though she had been the little princess of the room in the past, she had never shown up for the reunion. They even commented that they hadn't expected her to still be beautiful after all this time, but then assumed that it made total sense, since she was the little princess in the room. While the protagonist's young wife was completely fawned over by her classmates, the treacherous viper died of envy, saying that even at school, those people couldn't see that she was better than Yingxia. With a look on his face like he was breaking down from intestinal colic, the viper appeared saying completely unnecessary things to Yingxia, just to try and shake her up. Since the unloved thing didn't even love her own life, she asked if Yingxia wasn't using cheap perfume, and also what Yingxia thought about her sending her some perfumes. As her boyfriend's cattle were always giving her a new perfume every month, she wouldn't be able to afford to use them all anyway. Yao ended up taking her friend's pains, and just told the snake that her friend didn't need the crumbs it was offering. Having said that, the jellyfish began to boast about the luxuries she currently has, thanks to the pig who has no self-worth, until he finally showed up saying that they were colleagues, and it wasn't for his girlfriend to be so mean to her colleagues. I don't know who it was that was saying something here, but it said that the suit Dung was wearing was similar to the one Sankian was wearing in the video, wondering if it was just a coincidence really. Soon, Yingxia formally introduced her husband, and some comments began to roll in about the young protagonist, and the pig manure even tried to say something to humiliate the young protagonist, and he asked the cattle if his uncle hadn't ordered him not to draw attention to himself. The spoiled child then didn't expect Sankian to meet his uncle, and said that his uncle was a high society person and taught him that he shouldn't be so discreet. Sankian then said that since that was the case, he wouldn't mind teaching the supreme cattle how to be discreet on his uncle's behalf. But Yingxia broke up the future quarrel by calling her husband to come in. The rest of the wash told his girlfriend not to worry, because it was still early, and they would have plenty of opportunities to eliminate the young man along with Yingxia, and she didn't need to rush into it. Inside the hall itself, some girls were commenting on the video of the Piano Prince, which was a real hit on the internet a while back, and even several women were saying that they would like to marry him. Others said it was just an agency advertisement, but they hadn't heard from the Piano Prince for a long time, and he was probably someone who was just passing by. Yeo told Sankian to go up and put on a show for them, since the Piano Prince was right there and was Yingxia's husband, and the girls would die of envy when they found out. But he refused to do so at first, saying that he was there that day just to be a green leaf, and she asked why he didn't help Yingxia fight for her life, and if he could stand to see the dung humiliating his wife. Speaking of the manure, he went straight for the piano, and some people thought he was the piano prince from the video, completely deluding themselves, as the guy was just a complete failure. Not even the three of them really liked what they were seeing, and Yaya wondered since when the donkey fly had become the prince of the piano. The worst thing about all this is that the scum of humanity has further compounded the lie, saying that the last time her boyfriend was in the shopping center, his hands were itching to touch, but he didn't expect to cause such a big stir. Once again, the girls began to be envious of the snake crawling on fly droppings, saying that many people would like to marry the piano prince, and the viper really had a lot of luck in his life. The theater here was great, and she told him not to boast about his abilities, but he never listened to her, while the rest of the wash said he couldn't control himself every time he saw a piano. Outraged this time, Yeo decided to interrupt them immediately, and said in no uncertain terms that the fly from before would never be the prince of the piano. 
In the rattlesnake's thoughts, she said that she had taken every care to make her husband pretend to be the piano prince, and again Ye Ayao was ruining her plans. But anyway, no one knew who the real prince was. Screaming this time, the viper told Ye Ayao not to think that just because they were classmates, she could rub her boyfriend's nose in it, and asked how he wasn't the real piano prince. Answering back, the young friend of the protagonist's wife said that just to make her colleagues envy her, the viper was making up a bunch of lies, and even asked what the real point of it all was. She then showed the video to the people who were there, and although the piano prince didn't show his face, apart from his clothes, there was no resemblance between the back and the side of the face of the pig manure he had just played. The girls there began to agree with what the young Yaayao had said, and the face was indeed completely different, causing the viper to look at her trained puppy without knowing how to react in this situation. She made up an excuse that it was only because of the phone's camera, and that Ye Ayao was apparently just jealous, and that she hadn't seen the prince yet either. But in the end she managed to boast about it, because she really did know who the real piano prince was. But the viper didn't believe her, so she asked who the real piano prince was. The girls started telling Ye Ayao not to assume things wrongly, and asked how Ye Ayao could know who the real prince was. They had heard that many rich ladies had no information about the piano prince, so there was no way of really knowing, and so some even believed that the viper's boyfriend was the real prince himself. When the intoxicated Naja said that Ye Ayao had been Yingxia's little dog for so many years, asking what she had gotten out of it, Yingxia spoke up, saying that she wouldn't let the viper insult her sister like that. That said, since they put it that way, Ye Ayao said that if they really wanted to know who the real piano prince was, then she would tell them, and asked Sankian to come up and play the song, showing them who the real prince was. The two stooges were initially unresponsive, but soon burst into laughter, calling Sankian the loser of the Su family, and even telling Yingxia not to embarrass herself by taking her husband there. When the young protagonist heard those insults, he finally found the perfect opportunity to make the insects shut up. And the moment he started playing, people realized that the song was exactly the same as the one in the video. Finally, the real piano prince was revealed, and people came to believe that Yingxia's husband was the real piano prince. The two dung heaps had nowhere to put their faces now, and people were completely enchanted by the protagonist. And the viper told her boyfriend to do something, since they were being embarrassed in public there. He just told Naja not to worry, as he would personally ask his uncle to take care of the protagonist. And when Sankian finished playing, the girls began to admire the young master even more. Gael said to the viper, Now do you know who the piano prince is? How does it feel to be hit in the face? Does it hurt? But the rattlesnake only said that it was enough to act like one. And even Sankian could only be pretending to be the piano prince. And Yaya said that she had heard that she too was pretending. So she admitted that her boyfriend was only pretending. Or saddle, she went to all the trouble just to enjoy the envy of her colleagues. Which in itself was a low blow. And I confess that I'm now starting to like Yingxia's friend. And she said that the viper was a vain woman who repulsed even the heart. This made the two insects completely angry, and the cattle said they were going to borrow some men from their uncle so that they could help them. The viper went on to say that she wanted Yingxia and her husband to be humiliated right there in front of her, and she couldn't believe that they had actually dared to provoke her. Unfortunately, we got a cut to the scum's uncle, who was disgusted by what had happened to his niece, and the young cattle totally played the victim, asking for his uncle's help. This was Yan Kai, and he said that he would send someone to help his nephew and his girlfriend later. And returning to the celebration itself, Sankian made the excuse that he was going to the bathroom. In his thoughts, he said, if we look at someone like Yan Wen, who is the cattle humiliated recently with his girlfriend, he will never forget what happened before, and we will ask Yan Kai to resolve this matter. Yi Fei is asking for information about me, so I can't make too much noise at the moment. Three years ago, Ling Yang was put in charge of the Grey Zone. Yan Kai, on the other hand, is there to make contacts for me and Yun Cheng in case I need them. This is your office, isn't it? It seems like I haven't been here long, and suddenly someone opened the private room with force, cutting to another scene this time. They said that this was the room reserved for the brothers, and everyone should leave immediately. And the viper asked her boyfriend if he could make those people take care of her Yingxia. But he didn't think he should do that, as she was still Sue's family. But the snake was outraged, saying that there was nothing wrong with that, and she would like Yingxia never to raise her head in front of her again. She even dared to call Dung an idiot, saying that his wife was being bullied, and asked if he would really get hit in the face and be like Sankian's loser. A wise woman elevates her husband, but a foolish woman, like this viper, will simply make him meet his death as soon as possible. When he heard this, the rest of the flies got up the courage to talk to the guys who had just arrived, 
and went to ask them if there had been any misunderstandings. The big man was completely disgusted by the fly, and he told them about the two girls in the corner, asking them to finish them off, but he very nearly got caught too. Clearly they quickly took an interest in both of them, as they were both visually attractive, and someone even tried to get back at the guys, but quickly suffered the worst consequences. This young man even told the snake that she didn't need to make things such a big deal just out of pride, but she didn't care and wasn't the least bit worried about what would happen to the two of them. Yingxia asked if they didn't already have enough problems, and asked why she was doing something like this, and the viper took the opportunity to gloat and humiliate Yingxia even more. The dung flies took the opportunity to play the viper's game from before, pretending to really know Yingxia, but she ended up pushing the dung away, saying she had no idea who he was. This left him completely disgusted with life, and he even assaulted the protagonist's young wife. This guy is definitely signing his death warrant with this blow, and her friend said she would call the police if he dared to hit anyone there so she could arrest him, but calling the police on him was simply nothing, and he would end up in prison every now and then, but would soon be released, so it was as if it was even their home. However, if she got her friends in there when they left, she wouldn't have a good life, and asked if she would like to taste the sensation of someone breaking down the door when she goes home every day. Yingxia asked Nadja if she had to go that far, and the viper's hatred of her was no more than the boys she liked who liked Yingxia, asking if she needed to find someone to really deal with her. When she said this, the snake threw a drink in Yingxia's face, and said that those people had nothing to do with her, and if she got into trouble on her own, it wasn't for Yingxia to blame her. She went on to say that everyone knew that Yingxia pretended to be innocent, but her private life was a complete mess, along with other unnecessary things too. Yaya wondered if she wasn't talking about herself, since Yingxia had never even fallen in love at school, while the Viper, on the other hand, was always changing fiancés, and everyone already knew that. This time it was even Yeayao, and the rest of Mosca swore that he would make them both pay for their recent words. But the standoff started to get bigger and bigger, and they both went against the viper. Manure asked what the insects were doing, and the two of them were beating his wife, and against men, they couldn't compete in terms of strength, unfortunately. As the intoxicated jellyfish couldn't attack them on its own, it asked for the help of the dumb. And while they were immobilized, it took the opportunity to attack Yingxia. As she beat the wife of the most powerful man in Manhua, she said that Yingxia would never leave if she didn't get down on her knees and ask for forgiveness for what had happened that day. Yaya was completely saddened to see her friend in that situation, but it was up to her too, and it was precisely the coward who had no love for his own life who struck the blow. While the two were going through this ordeal, let's take a look at just where the protagonist was, and Yan Kai asked why the young protagonist was there that day. In reply, he said that he had gone to see him that day while he was accompanying his wife to the class reunion, and it had been three years since they had seen each other, so much so that Sankian feared Yan Kai had forgotten about him. But he immediately said that he could never forget the young protagonist, and even if he forgot his own name, it would be impossible for him to forget how kind the protagonist had been to him. Sankian then said, Yan Kai, what I can give you, I can also get back, you know that, don't you? Brother Sankian, yes. Is there anything I've done wrong? I'll fix it. Tell me what it is and I'll fix it right away, said the dung. But Sankian didn't want anything. He just wanted to remind him, and he didn't want to spend three years planting the seed and then have to destroy it with his own hands. He didn't need to worry, because the young protagonist would never complain about anything. And speaking of which, he asked him if he had a nephew called Yan Wen, and told him to have a good look at his nephew. It's true that Yan Wen is my nephew, but I treat him like my own son. In the future, he'll have to take over, since I can't have children. Brother Sankian, has something happened? Answering, Sankian said, Your nephew's wife has a problem with my wife. It's not a big deal, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. Completely floored, the uncle of the Supreme Manure said that his nephew had told him to call someone so that he could deal fairly with Yingxia. When Sankian asked if anything had happened, he called the young protagonist into a private room to have a look, because just recently, his nephew had asked him to send some people into the private room, which was where Yingxia was. Hearing this, worry was evident on Sankian's face, and as he left, he said that Manure had better start praying that his wife was well, or he would bury his whole family with him. Returning to the young wife, both Yingxia and Yaya were completely finished, and some people wondered why the protagonist's loser hadn't returned yet, and if he were there, 
he could help his wife. Others thought that he had even run away, because he was a notorious loser, and even if he were there, he would be unable to deal with this issue. The viper continued to demand that Yingxia kneel before her, but the young lady still refused to do so, and by saying so, she was planning to make Yingxia have the worst experience of her life right there. This left the young woman completely frightened, as she feared what might happen to her. But with an aura of someone who had charged the evil one in her body, Sankian shouted and ordered them to release his wife immediately. Apparently, they were so scared at that time that there was no Wi-Fi signal, and he quickly moved towards all the scum, finally freeing his dear wife. When he took her in his arms, he asked her how she was, and if it hurt much, but she said she was fine, and Sankian put her down to rest. Two insects even dared to try to attack the young Sigma cattle, and he swore that he would end the life of every one of them who did this to his wife. He quickly finished one of them off, and with just a glance, the other one started to shit himself. But he was never going to get away with it either, but Sankian wasn't happy about that. So he picked up a chair that was lying around too, and smashed it completely over the back of the washing up. When people saw how Sankian fought, they simply didn't react. They were just amazed and couldn't believe that he was actually able to finish them all off. Dung's uncle even showed up to see what had really happened, and when he saw the guys lying there on the ground, he simply saw his soul leave his body, saying that it was all over now. As the manure spouted various nonsense at the young protagonist, who was no longer seeing or hearing anything, only thirsting for red juice, he quickly received a good blow, and Sankian didn't even care whose territory it was. Even the snake decided to go after the protagonist, saying it would end his life, but holding it by the head, he said he had never hit a woman. With a look possessed by the little guy with the horn trident. He said that that day was a complete exception, and threw the intoxicated Naja completely to the ground. People commented that he had even beaten up Rong Liu and Yan Wen, and they said that if things went too far, Sankian would never be able to save Yingxia. Yingxia even called for her husband to leave, but he said it was fine, and she should sit down and rest, as he would take care of everything. Dung said that Sankian would pay dearly for this, and he would make him pay a dear price for it, saying that his uncle would end the young protagonist's life. Smiling this time, he asked if the manure was talking about Yan Kai, and ordered him to go over there immediately, which the uncle of the manure did. As soon as he saw his uncle, he asked for his help, along with the viper who had been bragging until recently. And when Dung said that Sankian had beaten him and his girlfriend, his uncle ordered him to disappear, completely on his knees this time, and people were completely surprised by this, wondering if Sankian was even more powerful than Yan Kai. His nephew tried to raise his uncle, asking why he had knelt before the protagonist, and was he supposed to help him delete Sankian and take revenge on him. But the one who hit the scum now was his own uncle, and he swore he would hit his nephew so hard until he crossed over to the other side. Even the viper got beaten up too, and he said that she was nothing more than a mule who only served to cause trouble, and was nothing more than a throwaway in society, and if it wasn't for him, she would never be living so comfortably. While she was being beaten, he wondered where she got this superiority complex, and how she dared to ask Miss Sutanil before her. He put them both on their knees immediately afterwards, and ordered them both to apologize to Yingxia, and when they practically refused to do so, again the insect caught on, and was no longer Yan Kai's relative from that day on. The people there didn't understand what was going on, since Yan Kai had always treated Dung as his son, but now he was simply breaking his ties with him. Again, he began to beg for the protagonist's forgiveness, precisely because of his nephew's actions, and if Sankian wanted to take his life that day, he would never complain about it. The two looked at the young protagonist with admiration, and couldn't believe that Yan Kai was speaking to the young protagonist with such respect. I think someone just tried to kill my wife, said Sankian. Yan Kai got the message, and told a character outside the story there that the Viper was now his wife, and he could end her life or do whatever he wanted. He was even unresponsive at first, but after receiving a scolding, the treacherous snake was finally being taken away, asking for the help of the supreme cattle. His nephew was on his knees before him, saying that he couldn't do that because she was his niece by marriage, but he said that even if his wife had offended the protagonist, her end would be the same too. Besides, it was his fault that that Viper was so arrogant and ignorant too, and he swore to Sankian that he wouldn't forgive him, and would take revenge for that day. But he asked who it was who said that an ant had the right to want to take revenge for something, and even if it was given the chance, it will die in the end. Yingxia then said that he would like to go to the hospital, and he finally went to his wife's rescue, and while Yaya was taking her away, 
he told Yan Kai that if there was a single small bruise on his wife's face, he would dig his own grave. This left the uncle of the manure completely frightened, and after that, it seemed that a few days had passed, and the toxicity of the Su family was at the site of the works that were taking place. The unusable being in the story asked where Yingxia was, and if she wasn't at the construction site, she was supposed to go to the gate where they were. This broken down old woman still had the nerve to say the following words, how dare she not go to work at the company for a week and say she's supervising the construction site. I think she probably ran away to play during the week. But to make the walking mummy stay silent, Yingxia herself appeared next, asking the mummy to go and rest, since in that hot sun, it wouldn't be long before it turned to dust. Manure even tried to complicate matters further for Yingxia, and the old woman said that she hadn't been to the office for a week, and asked what she had been doing all this time, and was she supposed to explain clearly. For some reason, they were completely paralyzed there, and the old woman quickly changed the way she treated Yingxia, and trying to disguise it. She said that since the owner of the low water real estate developer was there, she couldn't disappoint him. So that must be why this old snake's pose of superiority quickly ended, and Yingxia was still polite, and asked the rest of the mummy not to worry, as she would do her best. However, there were still many things at the company that she had to take care of, and there might not be a way for her to be at the construction site every day. After that, the old woman said that now her son would be going to the construction site every day, and he asked how his mother could let him do that kind of thing. But shouting at the unusable man, she asked if Yingxia could do it, because he, who was a man, could not. If he wasn't feeling well, he was supposed to go home and rest that very day, and he wasn't supposed to go to the office at any time either, causing the manure to quickly find finally recognize its place. Inside the protagonist's car, Yingxia said that her husband was absolutely right, and if he hadn't asked her to go there two days earlier, Hei Chao would have caught her red-handed this time. She had been away for a week precisely because she was recovering from her injuries, and the pig manure would definitely take advantage of this opportunity to try to bring his wife down. Fortunately, the injuries to her face had recovered, and she was still a great beauty, and she didn't seem to like his comment very much, and asked if, with the facial injury that week, he thought she was ugly. But he said that wasn't what he had said, and he then apologized to her, and would never let her suffer any more harm like she had in the future. Suddenly, Yingxia asked her husband a question, Sankian, if there was a single scar on my face, would you completely destroy Yan Kai? Answering, he said, it's not about Yan Kai, but the whole family will be destroyed. Changing the subject this time, she asked her husband to go back to the company, as she wanted to talk to the malnourished mummy about the problems with the financial accounts that week. She wanted to cut them off financially so that in the future they wouldn't be able to embezzle from the company. After all, that billion loan was from Sankian, and it wasn't easy for him to get it for Yingixa. He even asked her if she really meant it, and told his dear wife not to expect the old woman to punish them too much, because she would always keep her grandson's dung completely unpunished. Yingxia ended up being upset by what he said, because deep down she knew he was absolutely right, and he said that for her sake, he wouldn't mind becoming the enemy of the whole country, then asked her what she was afraid of. In a different location this time, Yingxia said that in one week alone, more than $4 million in cash had inexplicably been lost from her accounts, and she hoped they would give her an explanation for this. The toxic people there simply began to completely disguise and ignore what Yingxia had said, and even the old woman had told Yingxia to drop the subject. She said that everyone works in the company, and there was no exception, and in Yingxia's thoughts, she was saying that she had a billion dollars in loans, and if she couldn't recover it, who could save the Su family? But the malnourished mummy didn't even care about the safety of the Su family itself, only to protect the rest of her grandson's washing. And Yingxia asked the old woman if she was saying that they should let others continue to embezzle money in the future. More than four million a week, she asked how long the old woman thought a billion would last, and although the West Project has already started pre-sales. If it isn't officially completed, the developer won't give them the money. She even asked the old woman what she was going to do to make up for the losses when a new crisis hit again, and we got a cut for a different scenario again. Sankian said that he had never thought that the number one boxer in the Yancheng underground boxing ring lived in such a rundown place. Young Mo Young said that Blade 12 was a native of Yuncheng, with a daughter and no wife, and he used to be a professional athlete, but after retiring from sport, he found a job as a security guard. Later, his daughter became seriously ill and recovered, and she was cured, but he owed several million dollars in debts, and he was forced to leave his low-paid job to earn money fighting in the underground boxing ring of Yifei. 
However, it seems that he still hasn't fully paid his debts. Even if he were to pay his debts later, with the Fei's merciless style, he will still have to pay his debts, and will still use his daughter to threaten him and keep him working for him. Sankian then said that Blade 12's daughter would be just the thing for their advancement, and he could help him pay off his debts if he kept his daughter safe. When they got out of the car to talk to Blade 12, they noticed a lot of movement right where he was, and people were asking him when he was going to pay the money he owed. As his daughter had just paid her tuition, he didn't have any money, so he told them that he would pay them back for sure. But apparently people didn't want to hear about it, as he had already said it many times, and they wouldn't leave until they had the money. They also said that when his daughter came home, people should show her that her father owed money and didn't want to pay, and that he was just a shameless man. Furious this time, he held the guy aloft with only one hand very easily, and he asked the blade what he was trying to do, and if he wanted them to tell his daughter why he owed money. They had already called the police, and he would be charged with non-payment, executed by the court and imprisoned, and it wasn't to be regretted if he was actually arrested. If they arrested him, there would be no one to look after his daughter, and Sankian suddenly appeared asking how much he owed the insects, and would he pay his debt. As soon as they told him how much he still owed, he gave them 20,000 to divide among themselves and used the rest to pay off the debt. Sankian thought to himself that he would never have imagined that someone with such skill would never be able to raise such a small amount of money to pay off his debts. As the guys left, he asked who the protagonist was and why he was helping him, and he just said that he couldn't imagine that the King of the Ring would owe the villagers money, even though it was so little. The Blade then said that the young protagonist didn't need to worry about his business, so he should just say what he wanted straight away. With a menacing aura this time, Sankian said he would get straight to the point then, and in a nutshell, he admired and wanted to ask Blade 12 to do something for him. When he heard the word admiration from the protagonist's mouth, he wondered if that wasn't the first time they had met, and there was nothing better than striking a blow to remind the airhead where they had actually met before. As soon as Blade 12 held off the young protagonist's blow, he finally remembered that he was precisely the masked man he had fought in the ring earlier. Sankian then said that if he worked for him, the young master would have help him pay off his debts and give him and his daughter a good life. He just replied back saying that there were things he just didn't understand, and if there was nothing else for him to do there, he should leave, because soon his daughter would be back and he didn't want her to see strangers in the house. The young master then asked if he didn't fear that Yifei would target his daughter, which was why he was willing to stay with him even if Yifei took advantage of his salary in every match. This left Blade 12 completely silent, and Sankian again offered his help to him, making Blade 12 recognize that he was a good fighter, but Yifei wasn't so easy to deal with on his own but he didn't have to worry about that, according to the protagonist, because Yifei was going to end up seven feet underground that very night. In a different location this time, we see our protagonist preparing to carry out a very elaborate execution, and Mo Yang asked if he was really going to end Yifei's life on his own, answering. He said yes, and if he didn't manage to take the lives of the scum, he would simply end up with the protagonist sooner or later, and even Yingxia was in danger too. Besides, if Sankian finished him off now, he could take two swords and kill two birds with one stone. Han Sankian, you don't know Yifei, do you? Mo Yang asked. He's the head of the boxing camp, and his bodyguards have mastered the art of boxing. Plus he always takes them wherever he goes. I say it's not impossible to kill him, but if it's too noisy and everyone finds out, I won't get involved. Sankian then decided to speak up too, asking how Mo Yan would know if he didn't at least try. And he found out that Yifei was going to Jinkao City Shopping Center that night. So this was a great opportunity to be able to end his life, and Mo Yang then asked what the young protagonist was intending to do, and how they could help him too. However, all they had to do was wait for a signal from the young protagonist, and when the time came, they were supposed to help the boy escape, and apparently they didn't like that very much. Shortly afterwards, we see the young protagonist getting out of a cab, finally arriving at his destination. But in the background, we see the young friend of the protagonist's wife, wondering if that wasn't just Han Sankian. Once inside, a receptionist came up to him and asked him where he would like to go specifically, and he said he would like to go to the third floor. Guiding him to the place, he was in a private room, and according to her, that was the best room they had at his disposal, and he said that for the moment he was very tired, so he would rest a bit first and then call her again. With the amount of money she was seeing in front of her, it was clear that she was excited to be able to attend to the protagonist, but he quickly disguised it and went somewhere else nearby. According to him, there were no security cameras on that floor, so he thought it was to protect the privacy of rich people who came there frequently, which would have saved him a lot of trouble too. 
too. One of the guards said that all the rooms in that direction were already occupied, and the boy was supposed to just leave. And to disguise it, he pretended that he had made a mistake, even apologizing to them. However, he quickly took out a small knife from the sleeve of his blazer and ended the life of the first guard, making him not even see where the scythe that took his life came from. When the other even tried to take out a knife so that he could go against the protagonist too, in a matter of seconds he was completely annihilated, and after finishing them both off, he moved on to his main objective. We then see precisely the scum that the young protagonist went to delete from the story, commenting that he was tired of waiting to be attended to, and when the protagonist appeared there, he asked who the boy was and said that he hadn't called for him. Responding, Sankian said that he was deaf, but apparently this didn't intimidate Ife, since he had some guards with him who were even quite skilled. When the young man was completely surrounded by Ife's henchmen, he challenged Sankian to actually try to erase him from history, and the moment one of the guards went for the protagonist, he managed to dodge with ease. In addition, he struck the scum as well, and as much as the guards were going to finish off the protagonist, Sankian was completely insane this time, and in a matter of a few seconds, he managed to finish off every one of the guards there. Now Yifei was shaking all over, and even started begging for his life, asking Sankian to pulp him, saying he had money and anything else he really wanted. But the boy only apologized to him, since Sankian was only there for Yifei's life, and although he tried to keep begging, unfortunately for him, he couldn't survive to tell the story of that day. A few other guards also appeared, shouting that someone had just committed a file burning in Jinkiao City. When Sankian saw the others coming, he quickly jumped out of the window on the third floor where he was, and even the guards couldn't believe what they had just seen, because he ran off normally after jumping from the third floor. When he finally arrived home, he realized that the living room light was on, and that Yingxia was still waiting for him even though it was so late at night. However, as soon as he arrived he was happy to talk to his wife, and she told him that the whole apartment was rented by him that day, and he was going to sleep on the floor that day. Besides, she wasn't going to work the next day, so he wasn't supposed to sleep in the same bed as her, and that made the cattle wonder what he had done to her to make her treat him like that. Inside the car this time, Sankian's henchman said that Yifei was dead, and asked if there was anything he really couldn't do. He said it was more than clear that Jinkao City would hide this fact, and they say it's not easy to start an illegal boxing zone, causing Mo Yang to speak out as well. According to Mo Yang, everything depended on Blade 12, and although his boxing area isn't popular, Blade 12's strength was recognized by everyone, and no one would want to get into trouble with him. A while later, they arrived at the school where Blade 12's daughter was studying, and Mo Yang suddenly had an idea. In the principal's office, the Blade asked why he had expelled his daughter, and he said that his daughter kept fighting at school and never paid attention in class, and that was precisely why he had expelled her. Outraged this time, he said that his daughter was a normal child, then asked how she could be able to fight, but the director said that there was no way of reasoning with Blade 12, either as a father or as a son. Anyway, his daughter couldn't study there, and if he wanted to end the principal's life, he could go ahead and do whatever he wanted. But all he did was strike a single blow on the table, even breaking it, swearing that they would pay for it. And when he left, he found his daughter playing with Sankian and Mo Yang. He then asked what the young protagonist was doing there, and the little girl asked her dear father if she wasn't going to study anymore, but he told her not to worry, because her father would find another school for her. Soon after hearing this, the young girl ended up crying, saying that there was only one school in that town, and Sankian said that as long as he worked for him, he could help him find an even better school for his daughter. Furthermore, he said that Yifei had been completely erased from history by now, so he asked what the young protagonist would like him to do. However, in Blade 12's thoughts, he said that Yifei had several bodyguards, and even though it was midnight, he ended his life without anyone knowing. The only thing Sankian asked of him for the time being was that he continue to lead the boxing zone and help the protagonist finish off all his enemies, and of course Blade 12 would agree to this plan. The next morning, the young master woke up fully rested, and the toxic viper said that Yingxia had packed his belongings, since she wanted to sleep away from him. She even asked him why he wasn't leaving the house so as not to make things worse, but he decided to remind that useless snake that the house was his. Yingxia then said that if he didn't want them to stay there, they could move immediately, and he asked if she could tell him what had happened, and even if the worst came to the worst, he wanted to understand it all. 
Already in his thoughts, he was saying that for three torturous long years, Yingxia had never been satisfied with him, and yet they were still sleeping in the same room, making him wonder what was going to happen that day. Holding out her cell phone for him to take, she asked him to explain what it was and if it wasn't a photo of him going to Jingkiao City. As soon as he picked up his cell phone, he was simply amazed at what he was seeing, as the girl who had been of no use to him so far, took the opportunity to ruin the protagonist's life even more by photographing him on his way to his goal. He began to explain that it wasn't what she was really thinking, and he couldn't just say that he had gone there to take someone's life. Even the snake decided to interfere, as always, saying that she knew Jin Kao's city well, and that he should stop wasting his time with his daughter and divorce her right away. Sankian said that he hadn't done anything that would make her regret it, and asked if she could say anything about it, apart from that he would tell her later what really happened. For her, that was a great phrase, and she asked him what he thought about them going back to his room so that he could tell her everything. But it was more than clear that there were things that couldn't be said, and he had to find a way to resolve this. Or in the next few years, they could simply be sleeping in separate beds. If I were this guy, after all the humiliation he's been through because of this useless wife, I would have simply dumped her, and only then would I have shown her what she's really lost by never doing anything to protect and defend her husband. In a Kincheng prison, we see this old woman finished off, but she was from the Kin family, and this was the protagonist's grandmother from what I understand, as she had the same surname as his. The guard said that Han Jun was waiting for her, and finally she asked him to take her to her grandson, and we see a being in the background very similar to the protagonist. As soon as she arrived in the room, we saw that this was Sankian's twin, and he was asking his grandmother when she was going to get him out of there, because he couldn't bear to stay there for another day. But she said she also wanted to get him out of there, and he said that without her by his side, he simply couldn't go to sleep without a cup of tea. Grandma, didn't you say I should swap places with Han Sankian? I look a lot like him, and no one will find out, said the pig manure. But that made the mummy think about it, and he played the victim here, saying that he didn't know why he treated her in the best possible way, when she always defended the protagonist of the story. And he did some great theater here, banging his head on the table and saying that there was no point in him continuing to live in that world. But she asked him not to, even asking him how he expected her to live if something bad happened to him. He then said that he didn't want to end the lives of those people, and he didn't want to be beaten there anymore. But the easily fooled mummy told her grandson not to worry, because she would do her best to get him out of there. And from the look on his face, it was more than clear that this was exactly what he wanted. And I know some people personally who do this same theater in order to take advantage of people. In a kind of hospital, we see the protagonist's mother, or at least I think she is his mother, but she told her husband that Sankian was very promising, and sometimes she doubted whether the decision she had just made was good or bad. Incredibly, the person who appeared in the room was precisely the old woman who deserves to have her life taken by this man Hua too. And she said that Sankian wasn't capable of replacing Han Jun, and even offended the protagonist in a way that I'd rather not say. The old woman even told her daughter to take Sankian to her, and she would convince him to do something, and the daughter asked what the rest of the mummy was doing right there. Besides, Sankian was also her grandson, and she knew that the old woman valued Han Jun highly, but several people were looking at their family now, and it wouldn't do for them to see the scum of society hanging around. But the viper added that Sankian wasn't even worthy of being her grandson, and the daughter began to ask her mother for a little more time, and if she couldn't achieve her goal, then the old woman could do as she she pleased. The only thing this scum could say was that his daughter should act soon, otherwise she would intervene and act differently. In a different place this time, more specifically in a kind of martial arts house, we see some people training, and the one who arrived there was precisely our protagonist. He told himself that the master of the Tian family was addicted to martial arts, and as long as he could be his friend, he could take on all the underground forces of Jiang Yun City. A while later, the protagonist noticed someone referring to him, and we see this beautiful young lady asking him if he was the expert her grandfather talked about so much. This was the eldest daughter of the Tian family, Tian Linger, and he wondered where that girl had come from, and if she had fallen in love with him at first sight. Suddenly, someone appeared to apologize to the protagonist, and it was the leader of the Tian family, Tian Chengcheng. He said that his old friend had told him that that very day, an expert was coming to compete at their martial arts school. 
What's more, his granddaughter was also into martial arts, so she was very excited. And right after he says this, we see someone suddenly laughing. This being was called Luo Bin, leader of the Luo family, and he asked if the master of that dojo remembered the bet they had made the last time they met. We see that the heir of the Luo family was interested in the beautiful young lady, and his father said that if he lost, the Luo family's properties in the city of Dongshan would be his. But if he won, his grandson and his rival's granddaughter would be united in marriage. And the old man said that his grandson was nothing but useless, asking if he really thought that the useless man deserved to have his granddaughter as his wife. When the manure said that Linger's grandfather was a trapped turtle, the girl got relatively angry with the scum of society. She told her grandfather that they had specialists, and they shouldn't be afraid of those scum. And after thinking about it for a while, Linger's grandfather finally decided to accept what she had said. Facing each other this time, the scum told one of their fighters to go into combat, and Sankian said that Luo Bin's pupils looked weak, but they possessed explosive power, and the experts didn't pay much attention to that. Besides, Aunt Cheng Cheng was afraid of losing her granddaughter, so she asked what Sankian thought was so funny, and he said that it looked like she was going to have to marry someone, so he was smiling so he could bless her. But she didn't like what he said, and commented that he had a rotten mouth, asking how her grandfather would lose, and Sankian was just talking nonsense. She also commented that her grandfather led strong people, and she was sure that they could teach the young protagonist a lesson, and he just ignored what she said, but if she wanted to learn something, he would appreciate if she called him. The fighters finally greeted each other, and within a matter of seconds of the fight starting, the Cheng Sheng fighter was quickly struggling. Sankian commented that that student only focused on getting stronger, and forgot that speed and agility are also important. However, his strength alone was enough to beat all of Cheng Sheng. The fighter in blue was thrown against the wall, and then completely blacked out, and not even Cheng Sheng himself could believe what he had just witnessed. His rival was clearly gloating, saying that it looked like Cheng Sheng's student wasn't well trained, and he couldn't even withstand a single blow. But he said he still had other martial arts experts, and one after the other, they all fell before him, and his granddaughter was beginning to despair as yet another expert ended up kissing the ground. She even asked her grandfather to call in the real experts, and he revealed that the two who had been defeated were the strongest in the school, leaving the girl completely freaked out straight away. Looking at the protagonist, she asked if he could help her at that moment, and he said that he only needed a single blow to be able to finish off their rival fighter. Cheng Cheng told Sankian to stop showing off, and if he really won, half of the Luo family estate would be his, and retreating to the side of the fight, he asked if the old man had seen him fight before. Stretching, the young lady told her grandfather that it would be simply awful to see Sankian erased from history there, and he said that the boy wasn't trustworthy, but she needn't worry, as he wouldn't let her marry that guy. The fighter in front of Sankian then said that he had never seen anyone as arrogant as him, and from now on, he would only serve as dumb. As soon as he went towards the young master, just as his fist was about to hit him, Sankian quickly disappeared, making the insect fighter wonder what had just happened there. But Sankian was already about to finish off the insect, and with just one blow, causing the other dung to wonder what had just happened there. After finally finishing the guy off, Sankian said that he had told her he would only need a single blow to finish him off, and the young lady was thrilled to realize that she wouldn't have to marry a guy who was worthless. The old man then referred to Liu Bin, saying that half of his property now belonged to Cheng Shen, but he refused to accept this, saying that the young man didn't even belong to his martial arts school. Cheng Sheng asked if Luo Bin didn't think they were already too old for him not to accept defeat, and finally we see them leaving the scene. Luo Bin burst out laughing after that, and when they had finally left, he quickly went towards the protagonist, thanking him for it, and even if his opponent didn't keep his promise, he could give Sankian whatever he wanted. But he said that he himself would get what he always wanted, and soon he would take over the Luo family estates, and he would never hear from them again. In the old man's thoughts, he said that Sankian had an aura that was simply chilling, and Yun City had never heard of that handsome young man before. Cheng Sheng also said that he knew it was the first time they had met, but he would like to know the young master's name, so he told them. As the protagonist left the dojo, the young lady told herself that she found him very attractive, until she finally realized that his name was Han Sankian, and realized that he looked a lot like the piano prince. Her grandfather then asked if there was something wrong with her, and she wondered if there wasn't a boy with the same name in Yun City, and she wondered why such a powerful man would join the Su family. 
she said she would like to become his friend, and he told his granddaughter that her future was limitless, and even if she became his second wife, he would still give her his blessing. Now in a different location, we see the young protagonist in front of the place where Yingxia worked, and he only remembered now that she had told him not to go and get her. The problem wasn't solved quickly, and he didn't think Yingxia would forgive him easily, and soon someone appeared blocking the protagonist's view, asking who he thought he was. Clearly he got it right the first time, and she asked how he recognized her, and said that her grandfather had told her to go to him, to thank him in some way, so she cooked something and was inviting the young master over for dinner. Slowly getting out of there, he asked her if she really knew how to cook, and if she wanted to poison him. She was supposed to just tell him directly, but she ended up jumping in front of the bike immediately after hearing that. She told him he had to accept, because it was yes or yes, otherwise she would never let him leave. And he finally gave in and told her to take him to her place. Once at her house, she told them to sit down while she cooked, and the old man asked if the young protagonist would like to play a game with him. Sankian was polite, and said that he wasn't very good at Chinese chess, but the old man said that he would take pity on the boy. And as they played, the old man said that he was grateful that he had come there, because it wasn't easy to eat the exquisite linger spice alone. Ten minutes later, dinner was ready, and the old man was completely unresponsive, because the young man had said that he wasn't good at playing. But from the protagonist's attitude, you could see that he managed to beat the old man quickly. Afterwards, he kindly thanked the old man for the opportunity to play, and he said that he was actually an expert in Chinese chess, and it was a shame he couldn't show you his secrets. The old man then said that his birthday was coming up, and a friend who represented the country was coming too, and he hoped that Sankian would go and join in the fun too, and he would tell his friend not to take pity on Sankian. The young master was looking forward to it, and the old man was confident that he would definitely lose, and he would regret it if it really happened. The beautiful young lady asked what they were talking about, and it was for them to go and eat soon before the food got cold. And during the dinner itself, Sankian thought that Aunt Linger was talking too much, but her food was really very good. He then asked her why she was staring at him, and she said that she had invited him to eat at her house that day, which she had prepared for him. Now, to return the favor, she asked if he could play the piano, and he said that it would be a pleasure for him to play the piano to thank her for the great meal, and you could already tell that she was interested to see if he was the piano prince. As soon as the young protagonist got into position, he began to play the piano gracefully, and she realized that he really was the much acclaimed prince of the piano, and that god had given her the opportunity to meet him. At the Sankian house itself, we see someone arriving in a red car, and the one who went to welcome this young gentleman was precisely the viper who deserves to be deleted from history. She was even rude to him, asking who he was to park his car right outside her house, as if she really had something there, and someone needs to remind her that she's living in her son-in-law's house. The guy simply ignored the snake and went towards Yingxia, asking if Sankian was there, until he finally decided to speak up, asking what the gentleman would like. The young man said that the car was a gift from the beautiful young lady, and he wondered if it was from Tian Linger. But the viper decided to speak up to disrupt the protagonist's life even more. She said that again he was dating other women behind her daughter's back, and Yingxia was still sad with him, and she couldn't even tell right from wrong. But the young gentleman told the dung heap to be careful what he said, because the beautiful young lady was not that kind of woman, and she asked him back how he could respect her if she was getting involved with a married man. She even said something completely unnecessary after that, and the young man said that the savage she was referring to was precisely the youngest daughter of the Tan family. He was going to tell her everything that Viper had said, and she was going to suffer the consequences for not knowing how to respect it, causing the snake to become completely frightened afterwards. That's because offending the Tian family was the same as offending the King of Hell, and she had offended Miss Tian by calling her a savage. As she had recently said, the Viper quickly changed his attitude, telling Sankian that that woman had given him a car, and they must be great friends, asking her to please forgive what the dung scum had just said. But he completely ignored what she said, wondering if she thought the Tan family would really forgive her like that. After that, Yingxia passed Sankian's side on her way home, and he even tried to talk to her, but she said he didn't need to say any more, and from now on she didn't want to hear from him. Frankly, I'd have thrown that useless Sukiri out of the house by now, since it's been practically useless this man he was so far, and he definitely deserved someone better in his life. In his thoughts, he was saying that Tian Linger's gift was the limit for Yingxia, and in the Slag's residence, the old stranded mummy was saying that the Tian family master's birthday banquet would soon take place. In Yun City, it was everyone's obligation to have a good relationship with them, and she told Dung to visit the Tian family one of these days to find out if they would be invited. 
He immediately disguised it by saying that he had been very busy with the company recently, and it was better to get Yingxia to go, and she was the person in charge of the Chengxi project, and if she went, they could get the invitation. She told the old mummy that she could go, but she wasn't sure if she would really be able to achieve that goal, and she told her granddaughter to do her best. After all, they had always refused to give an invitation to the Su family. Sankian then asked them what they thought about him taking care of it, and the washed-up remains asked if Sankian had hit the nail on the head, if he really thought they would let an idiot like him go there. They didn't even consider him part of the Sioux family, and yet he wanted them to lose faith in themselves, and if he did happen to know that he would make fools of them if he did. And once again, Yingixa didn't even move a straw to defend her husband, and the worst thing is that the cattle still stay with a person who doesn't even really love them. But he said that after being personally invited by them, he asked them to invite him too, and the scum asked who Sankian really thought he was. Suddenly, someone came in saying that the old mummy had visitors, and it was the Tian family, leaving her completely surprised by what she had just heard. A person then entered the place where the toxic Sioux family was, and this gentleman said that his master had asked him to send that invitation, so that they could attend his birthday, and then asked if they would go. The finished old mummy only thanked him, asking him to also thank the Tian family for this opportunity, and he told her to read the invitation carefully, as it contained the requirements for attending the banquet. Leaving the place, the old woman couldn't contain her happiness, thinking that they would take a great leap forward now with this opportunity, and she said that now the Sioux family was only one step away from becoming an aristocratic family. The insolent insect then told the old mummy that with the Chengxi project in their hands, the new urban area would be theirs in the future, asking how the Tian family hadn't been able to invite them before. While the toxic people celebrated, the young protagonist just looked on, saying to himself that he never thought Tian Chengcheng would bother to bring the invitation to his house because of their relationship. That's because they didn't have to lift a finger if they wanted to, and the pig manure realized that the young protagonist was watching them, and started bragging that he hadn't been invited. But he said that Cheng Cheng himself had invited him, so he didn't need an invitation. But that was enough to make the rest of the swill make fun of the young Sankian. He even said that if Sankian could set foot on that birthday, he would swear that he would kneel before Sankian and bark like a dog throughout the party. The guy is literally asking to be humiliated, and Sankian only commented to himself that he was surprised at the insect's level of stupidity, hoping that he wouldn't die himself after suffering such humiliation. As we head towards the party itself, we see them stopping right at the gate, and he wonders what's going on, as the vehicles have already been registered, unless the property department has made a mistake. But let's just say that when he saw Tian linger, he realized that Jiang Lan's words from the day before had reached his ears, and that day was going to be a bad one, at least for his mother-in-law. Sankian could even do something to save the viper's skin, but as she has too loose a mouth, he decided to let the beautiful young lady do as she pleased. Speaking of the viper herself, there she was again causing trouble, and the protagonist's useless wife just watched in silence, as usual. In a matter of seconds, a path was formed by the guards precisely in the direction of the finished Medusa, and who appeared was the very lady who had been offended by this self-absorbed Naja. When the piece of dung was about to say something, she had already been slapped in the face to learn how to be a person, but even with that she hadn't learned yet, and she still dared to try to raise her hand against the beautiful young lady, offending her again. But soon she was completely immobilized by the beautiful lady's guards, and she asked the rest of the insect if she hadn't said the day before that she was worthless and went out with several men. Now the treacherous snake began to see life passing before her eyes, and apologized, saying that she didn't know who she was really talking about, and that she was only joking, but that her joke should cost her her life at the very least as payment. The one who said something about apologizing was the disposable Yingxia, saying that they apologized to her a thousand times, and they would do whatever she wanted to apologize. Since it was put that way, Linger said that she should divorce Sankian since that was the case, as she had treated him so badly lately, and asked why she was still married to him at all. Finally someone has put this useless girl in her place, and she's probably only still with the protagonist because of the amount of money he has, and the luxuries he's provided for her. Confused by what the beautiful young lady had said, the non-recyclable waste began to wonder why she was talking about her husband Han Sankian. The beautiful lady disguised herself by asking Yingxia not to take it badly, but in her thoughts, she said that if Han Sankian wanted to separate from Yingxia, he would never regret it. 
After that, she turned her attention back to the mother of the unusable girl and said that after the previous day, she wouldn't be satisfied with just a slap in the face. So she spoke precisely to the viper's husband, saying that she was his wife, so he didn't really teach her how to behave, and she just wanted him to discipline her, otherwise her guards would do it for him. While the snake was being washed for the slaughterhouse, she told herself that between being beaten by a security guard, she would rather be killed than go through such an experience. She then ordered the rest of the wash to beat her with all their might, and if he let her be beaten a second time, she swore he would never be able to live in peace again. The guy is so lacking in attitude that he even refused to do what his wife had asked him to do. But when she called him a waste, he gave this viper a good slap in the face, causing her to be thrown away. And gentlemen, what a beautiful scene to behold. I even grabbed some popcorn so I could enjoy this work of art from the front row. After the viper is completely on the ground, we cut to the party itself, and we see the toxic family completely gathered around a table, and someone was wondering what time Elder Tian was going to show up, because it had been a long time and it hadn't happened yet. Deng said that it didn't matter if Cheng Cheng wasn't there, and the best thing was that Sankian wasn't with them, and he didn't even want to eat, referring to Sankian as a dog, he just wanted to see him kneel before him. As usual, Yingxia didn't even say anything, and the snake from before told him that Sankian was very naive to accept the bet, since he would have to kneel before the Deng every time he met it. As soon as it was announced that the elder Tian was at the party, we saw him with the beautiful young lady, who deserves to be called the first lady, and our protagonist, who definitely deserves Deserves someone better by his side. The insect from before simply didn't know where to put his face after witnessing Sankian standing right next to the party elder, not believing what he was seeing. When Sankian was at the table with the elder and his granddaughter, someone would ask who the young protagonist was, and one day he saw the elder enter the arena, asking if he would be the future son-in-law of the Tian family. The lady said she hoped this gentleman was right, and he had his four cards right and was a good match for the young Tian Linger. The rest of the toxicity just thought to themselves that it was simply ironic to think that the Tian family liked Han Sankian more than the Su family themselves, and they never paid any attention to them. I think that's still too little for what you deserve, Yingxia, and I hope that Sankian really does leave you for the young Tian Linger, because she does deserve to be the divine lady, since she has already done for the protagonist what you never did as a wife. The old woman ended up banging on the table to get her granddaughter's attention, and she told her granddaughter to offer a toast to the old man, and since Sankian was near him, she should let people know that the Su family appreciated them too. But she said it wouldn't do them any good, and the Tian family didn't treat the Su family seriously, and even they didn't care about the Chengxi project. She even asked how they were really going to treat them any differently, since they were just suppliers, and they only invited the Su family because they were Sankian's current family. But the rest of the mummy told her not to think too much about it, and unless he made their family better off, he would ruin Yingxia's future himself. Suddenly, this useless old woman realized that the daughter of the Tian family was approaching them, and she asked which of them was Su Heichao, who was precisely the pig manure from before. She said that she had come there just for him, because it was his turn to perform, and they ended up getting confused, and he asked her why she was looking for him. When she realized who it was she was looking for, she said she had never seen a person act like a dog, and asked if he would teach them how to bark too. Trying to disguise it, he said he was only joking with Sankian about this bet, but she said that if he didn't keep his promise, his whole family would suffer the consequences. Immediately upon hearing this, the enveloped mummy told him to keep his promise and become a man, and in her thoughts, she said that she was sorry to her beloved grandson, but the Tian family shouldn't be offended like that. Not knowing how to act this time, the only thing he could really do was comply with what he had told Sankian, and just as he was about to kneel down, the beautiful lady told him to wait a bit. She then said the following words, Attention everyone here. Right now, there's going to be a performance you've never seen before, and I hope you enjoy it and die of laughter. The attention of all the guests quickly turned to the beautiful young lady, and she apologized for making the insect wait so long, and now he could get on with doing what he really had to do. The only thing he knew how to do, apart from shaking, was to tell himself that this wasn't included in the bet, and completely on his knees, he plucked up courage from where he didn't have any, and started barking like a puppy with that thin, delicate bark. A total silence overtook the place at that very moment, and people started laughing non-stop afterwards, saying that apparently that dog was hungry. 
completely humiliated this time. He told Sankian and his thoughts to watch his back, and one day he would pay back and suffer three times as much. Someone asked the beautiful lady who that insect was, and she said who he was, and hoped that for another lost bet, he could bark like a real dog. Some people said it made her day, and they would always laugh if that guy turned up, so she'd better always warn them if he did. The mummy's soul was about to leave her body, and she thought that now was the end, and not only could they make friends anymore, but they had also become the laughing stock of the whole town. The old man then introduced a friend of his to the young protagonist, saying that he was the president of the Yuncheng Association, and he was also the National Go Champion, which is an abstract strategy board game for two players. He also said that after he had finished, he might agree to play a game with the young protagonist, and the gentleman said that he had heard that he was not only good at chess, but also good at Go. As it happens, this gentleman's name is Wang Mao, but I'm sure I'll forget his name in a few minutes. The young man was modest enough to say that he had only learned a few tricks, and then asked what you thought of playing and giving the young man some tips. Besides, he was the champion, so he would have to treat him as such, and in the president's office, we see them just getting ready to play, and the lord's servant asked if that young man was the one who had challenged him to play Go. Besides, he was very young at first glance, and asked if he was really sure he would like to play against the young boy, but he told his servant not to be so arrogant. He then told the protagonist that he would show no mercy to someone of his age, and would play as if it were a final, and that was exactly what the young Sankian expected the gentleman to do. As they frantically played this game that I don't even understand how it works, you thought you would never say it. But the young protagonist had it in his hands, and the boy was definitely not easy to beat. Even the elder wondered if that boy was really that powerful, and the master's servant said that this game was completely unfavorable to his master, and if it continued, the master's winning streak would be destroyed by that child. But swearing that this wouldn't happen while his faithful student was still alive, he quickly slapped the board, completely ending their game, and said that his teacher was very tired, asking what he thought about playing another day. But his attitude made his master completely angry with him, saying that it didn't matter whether he lost or not, asking if he wanted them to see his master as an unworthy person. The elder referred to him as well, saying that he should never interrupt a game of Go, and that was an important rule, but something as basic as that he wasn't even able to fulfill. It was the first time he had been so enthusiastic about a game of Go, however, he simply ruined everything, and the young man quickly began to apologize to the elder, saying that he had only seen his master very tired and that was why he had acted that way. The old man quickly made a call, telling them to call the Zai family, which was the family of the meddling young man, and he got down on his knees and begged for their forgiveness, saying that it wasn't necessary to call his whole family. He even begged for his master's forgiveness, but he said that the young man must have been one of his most talented students, but he never thought that he would behave in such a dishonorable way, and from that moment on, he was no longer one of his students. Someone suddenly appeared and called the young man a slag, slapped him across the face and asked him what he had just done. The elder immediately said that from that moment on, he would end all the Tian family's support for the Xi family, and they were to leave, and he didn't want to see any members of the Xi family in Yun City. The boy just wondered why this was happening to him, since what he did wasn't that important, and the gentleman asked the protagonist what he thought about playing another round. But Sankian apologized a thousand times to Mr. Wang, but it seemed unfair to play again after that terrible embarrassing situation, since he wouldn't really be concentrating. Put that way, he asked how you felt about him visiting you another day when he was free for them to play, and he was looking forward to that day. In a completely different location this time, we see the protagonist with his henchmen, and Mo Yang says that Fang Peng had told him he was going to move his chips, and asks if Sankian has done his bit too. In reply, he said that he had established a good relationship with the Tan family, and he didn't care what the other young man did, until he suddenly received a call from Xi Jing. Attending, he was short and to the point, asking her what she wanted, and she said that her father was in his last days, and she hoped he could go to Yanjing to at least see him. Understand Understanding the message, he thought that the Han family had long treated him like a deserter, and they certainly wouldn't give him a warm welcome. We then go back a little into the young protagonist's past, and the toxic old woman of the Han family would like to know what the old man thinks of her grandchildren. 
he said that his eldest grandson, Han Jun, was the image of the emperor and the Han family would depend on him, and a prosperous future awaited him with an immense fortune. On the other hand, her second grandson, Han Sank Yin, was cursed, and he would bring misfortune to the Han family. And only because of what an old man said did she literally discard the protagonist. When Sank Yin told her that he would like to play, she was completely rude, saying that she wished she could. But it was better for Sank Yin to stay at home, and if he went out, people would be embarrassed just to see him. On a night when a storm was raging, the protagonist was dumped when he was 18, and the old woman told him to leave, saying that she didn't want to see him in Yanjing from now on, and he no longer belonged to the Han family. And as he admired his drink, he wondered why the toxic old woman had let him go back to the Han family if she had been so determined with him that day unless she wanted to make him look like Han Jun to take his place in prison. And if that was really the case, she couldn't blame him for not thinking about his blood brother. The young Mo Yang ended up waking up the young protagonist, asking him what was wrong with him. And he said that now that he no longer had a place in that world, he should be the emperor of the underworld. And that was one of his favorite lines from a poem. If Mo Yang ever felt that he wasn't the same, he should let him know and let him fulfill the second part of the verse on his own. Seeing if the protagonist had a fever or something, he asked what Sank Yin was talking about. But it was only for Mo Yang to remember what he had just said, as it could be useful in the future. At the protagonist's house, we saw the finished mummy in his mansion, and he asked what miracle it was that she was there alone. But the viper wasn't even kind, and said that that day, without lifting a finger, he had not only let her insect grandson be humiliated, but the whole family, and it was better that he helped them regain their honor. Help? What are you going to ask me for this time, walking mummy? Sank Yin asked. Go to old Tian and tell him that the Su family is the best and ask him to let us go back to Yun Cheng. And it's better to cooperate with us, replied the old woman who was already one foot in the grave. Grandma, this is natural for me, but is this your way of asking for my help? Be careful what you wish for, young man. Don't think that when Su Yingxia becomes the project leader, you won't see me anymore, because I can take over the position at any time. Answering the remaining tick, Sank Yin only said that the old woman could do as she pleased, and outraged, she told her daughter-in-law the way her beloved son-in-law behaved. And she said that she was going to ask Yingxia to talk to him, and the old mummy said that he would only give her three days to sort things out, and if she didn't, they couldn't count on her in the future. At the Sioux family mansion, the pig manure was welcoming his grandmother, and she asked what he was doing there, and he quickly began to play the victim, saying that she couldn't let Sank Yin continue to mock them. Since Su Yingxia has a big job, he starts doing what he wants, and he asks the old woman to just let him lead the project so that he can put an end to Sank Yin's pride and arrogance so that he can take his revenge. But the old woman said that this was simply impossible, and he went on to say that he had prepared himself well enough to be a great leader, and asked why he couldn't be one now. But she responded by saying that if she saw him in a good light, and with a promising future, she would have given him this position a long time ago, and he realized that his grandmother saw him as a nobody, at least in his thoughts. The old woman added that it was better for him to improve his knowledge so soon, otherwise, if he wanted to take on that position, he would have to wait until the day she passed away. In the insect's thoughts, he said that the old woman would regret having given him this idea, meaning that he himself would take his own grandmother's life just for the sake of money and pride. In a different setting, still in the mansion, the old woman said that her grandson still needed to hone his skills to become a great leader, asking what his secretary thought. She said she thought they should give him a job underground, as there was a position available at the moment, and suddenly the daughter of the Tan family was there. The beautiful young lady did indeed appear there, and the old mummy asked what had brought the lady there, and so that she wouldn't say it was her legs, she said that when the river flows, it's because it carries the stones. The old woman ended up not quite understanding what she had meant by that, and she said that that morning, Sank Yin went to visit his grandfather and asked him to recognize the Sioux family again, and they were such a small family that they sounded big. The old woman then replied, Miss Tian, since old Tian didn't want to, why did you have to come all this way? Do you want to humiliate me? In her thoughts, she said, You're a coward, Sankian. Not only did you not help me, you sent your girl to humiliate me. But the lady said that the old woman could think whatever she wanted, and Grandpa saw Sankian's worried face and promised to offer him someone from the Tian Company to cooperate with the Su family. The surprise was so great that the mummy with the cane ended up dropping it on the floor, and with her body trembling. She asked if what the young lady had said was really true, and Miss Tian asked if the old lady thought she was a clown by any chance. Immediately afterwards, she thanked the young lady immensely, and she vowed that the Su family would take advantage of this opportunity to make the old man proud of them for future business. 
but the beautiful lady was completely rude to the old woman, because that's the least this mummy deserved, and said that she was just a messenger, and the one she should be thanking like this was Sankian. Leaving there, the unfinished rattlesnake asked her secretary to call her grandson, and ask him to come over immediately. Little did she know that her life would be ended by her own grandson. In her office this time, the pig manure finally arrived, asking what she would like from him, and she told him to take a look, as they had won a contract with the Tian family. Thanks to this, their family would once again become first class, and the insect was excited about this. And just as he was about to say something, the old woman said that cooperation with the Tian family is very important, and he would oversee it. As long as he did a great job, she would give him the job of president immediately, and he promised that he wouldn't let the supreme mummy down. Out of kindness, he asked her if she'd like him to get her a glass of water, so he left happy. But while he was getting the water, I could tell by the look on his face that he wasn't going to do well. He then added some sugar to sweeten the old woman's life, if you know what I mean, and quickly gave the drink to the old woman. But as soon as she drank it, she began to feel a severe headache, and it was only now that she realized that her own grandson had poisoned her. But as she lost consciousness, he told her that for her grandson's sake, it was time for her to move on and move on from this to a worse one, until finally the old mummy got the end she had deserved since the beginning of the manhua. In a different setting this time, the pig insect pretended to be in mourning, and I know some people who should learn to act like this guy, as he can do it very well. People wondered how the old woman had died, because she was old enough, but the mummy was a tough nut to crack, and he accused Sankian, saying that it was all his fault that the old woman had left the world. The young protagonist wondered if he had a screw loose, and asked what it had to do with the death of the mummy who was already in the grave. He then said that if he didn't go for Sankian, why then did Tian Linger go to their house, and she must have gone there to curse the rotting old woman's long existence. The unusable woman asked her husband what was going on there, and he said he was talking to Tian Chengsheng. So Tian Linger went to the Su mansion to give her the good news that the old man was going to collaborate with the Su family again. On the side of the scum, he asked if the Tian family were really so kind that they wanted to cooperate with them again, and because Sankian couldn't stand the old woman any longer, he sent Tian Linger to tell her a lie. So Sankian asked him why he kept talking and calling the police, causing the insect to shut its mouth immediately after hearing this. In his thoughts, he was saying that he should definitely not call the police, and if the authorities got in the way, he would be their first suspect. He then said that the Tian family was so powerful in Yuncheng that it would be useless to call the police, because by controlling them, they would erase all the evidence, so the old man could send Tian Linger again to end their lives. He even had the audacity to say that Sankian was playing dirty not only with his grandmother, but with practically everyone there, and people began to agree with what the insect said, asking Sankian to leave. Just giving a debauched smile, he found the toxic family's attitude simply ridiculous, and if there was one thing that this whole family deserved, without discarding a single one of them, it was to end up seven feet under the ground. As Sankian left, Yingxia just watched in silence, as always. This protagonist should definitely use the power he had to take the lives of everyone in this family of toxins, including his current one, and go stay with the beautiful young lady, Tian Linger. Dung then said that from now on, he would fulfill his grandmother's last wish, and asked if anyone was against him as their new president, and people were not against this idea. He then thanked them for their trust, and the Su family would never cooperate with the Tian family. However, as their new president, he promised that they would surpass the Tian family in the very near future. And he had also found enough evidence to incriminate Tian Linger so that his grandmother could rest in peace. And so we have a cut to the side of Yuncheng City. Sankian said to himself that the Dung had apparently been preparing for this spectacle for a long time, and perhaps the old Su had died because of it. He wondered why someone would go to such lengths, but in any case, no one would believe his defense, and a gentleman appeared saying that it had been three years since they had seen each other, and Sankian had grown a lot. This was the protagonist's grandfather, and Sankian said that he had always been that size, but he told himself that in the Han family, the only one who treated him well in his childhood was his grandfather Yan who thanks to his teachings and advice, he was there. Sankian then asked what his grandfather was doing there in Yuncheng, and if he had come there to pick him up to go to the Han, and he said that he would be the master, but he still had to follow someone else's orders, that of the toxic old woman. Sankian said he would go without hesitation, but he must have done something that would disappoint his grandfather, and he hoped that the old man would believe him, and surprised by what his grandson said, he called him a fool. 
That's because no matter what Sankian did, his grandfather would never be disappointed in him, and he'd better get back and pack his things soon so they could leave. Already in Yanjing, with the Han family, Sankian hoped that they wouldn't receive him badly, and finally he was inside the Han mansion. He met up with the toxic old woman from the Han family, and he said something that I didn't quite understand, and it was more precisely this, Nangong Kyanku, don't take this the wrong way, but forgive me for not showing any signs of life. The old woman said he couldn't call her grandma, and that was clear, as Han Jun was in jail, he would never have returned to that place, calling him a deserter afterwards. However, it was precisely this viper who expelled him from the Su family, and in response, they said that Han Chang was in his last days, and he asked if she needed him so that she could put him out of his misery. With that said, he ended up being hit by the toxic old woman, who also deserves to have her life taken, and she said that despite everything, he was still Sankian's father, and if it hadn't been for him, he wouldn't have stayed alive, asking how he could talk like that. But as Sankian took the cane that the old woman was using to support herself off him, he said that Han Jun, who was his older brother, would never be alive if it weren't for himself, asking if the old woman had ended her theater by chance. However, this left the piece of dung completely disgusted, and she said that Sankian was nothing but a waste, and her older brother was the only heir the Han family really had. She said that Han Jun missed her little brother and would like to see him, and that was the only reason she would let him visit, and I think there was some mistranslation. That's because the person he went to visit wasn't his father, but his older brother, and finally the useless old woman said she would accompany the young protagonist to the Kincheng prison. In the Kin city itself, we see the young protagonist going to visit his brother, and his dung of a brother, on seeing the protagonist, said that he should be very happy to know that he was in that prison, and apparently he was only there so that he could insult him. But Sankian asked what he was going to insult his brother about, and Dung told him not to worry, asking if he hadn't smelled something different when he entered that place. By the time he realized what his brother was talking about, it was too late, and the gas he was breathing at that moment was extremely toxic. And again he referred to someone called Nangong Kyanku, saying that he really hadn't let him down, and finally lost consciousness. The pig manure of the protagonist's brother said that Sankian really was a bastard, and it was all his fault for making him suffer, and wait for so long in that jail. And from now on, Sankian will endure everything he has ever felt, and as soon as the protagonist woke up, he realized that he was in prison, and some prisoners appeared ordering Han Jun to clean their bathroom, but that was Sankian. He said that it looked like Han Jun had lived a miserable life in that prison, to the point of bringing him to this point. And he said that from that day on, water from the well would become water from the river, and he advised the guys not to play with him anymore. But apparently they completely ignored the young protagonist's warning and were prepared to teach him a lesson. But let's just say that it was the protagonist who taught him a lesson here. That's because he quickly began to finish off every one of them who dared to challenge him, even causing them to bang their heads against each other. Another prisoner wondered when Han Jun, who had never been able to fight back, had become so strong, and Sankian asked if he was the boss. But he quickly said no, and that it was Sankian who was the boss now, and the protagonist said that from now on, they would have to do as he said. On the toxic mummy's side, her favorite grandson was finally outside the prison, and she wondered if he really thought his grandmother couldn't walk on her own. But he said he just missed her very much and was worried if anything happened to her, and from now on, he would serve his grandmother as best he could. She then said that he had apparently suffered a lot inside that place, and he said that he had been in prison for a long time, and asked if she could let him go to Yuncheng to play. Yuncheng, what do you want to go there for? The toxic old woman asked. Grandma, Han Sankian has humiliated the Han family for so long, and now it's time for me to help the Han family. Incredibly, the unusable old woman still had the audacity to visit the young protagonist in prison, and he commented that he hadn't expected her to actually visit him. But she said that she had only gone there to say that Han Jun was currently going to Yuncheng, and he would live there and take his place there, and the protagonist was completely disgusted by what she said. He then said that if Han Jun dared to cause trouble in Yuncheng, he would end his brother's life with his own hands. But the old woman challenged him, asking how he thought he could really get out of there. Now I understand everything, and Nangon Kyanku is precisely this disposable old woman, and he said that it was precisely she who forced him to reach this point, and he would make her completely regret what she had done. In the countryside, still in Kincheng prison, Sankian said to himself that Han Jun went to Yuncheng, and with his character, he would definitely do something less than a beast. He had to get out of that place as quickly as possible, and suddenly someone appeared calling for the protagonist, and it was precisely this young man, and he asked how he could get out of that prison, and any way would do. 
but he said that this was Ken Cheng, and whoever went in there would definitely not come out easily. But from the look on the protagonist's face, the guy quickly changed his behavior. He told Sankian not to worry, as he would definitely make a perfect plan and make sure that he would be out of there in just three days. Finally, Insect Manure was putting his plan into action, and he was saying that although it wasn't as good as Yanjing, that city wasn't bad either. He was still saying that he wasn't as handsome as he used to be, and maybe there weren't any women who really liked him anymore, and the one who showed up was Yingxia's friend, who asked what he was doing there alone. But the Dung asked who she was, saying he didn't know her, and he told himself that it seemed that young woman liked Sankian, which wasn't a bad thing, since she was kind of pretty. She complained, asking if he was still angry with her, and could she take him out for dinner, asking if he could forget about the debt that time. So he said he would try her food, and finally we see her preparing their dinner, and she said that even if she couldn't be with Han Sankian, it was good to be with him. But she wondered why he kept staring at her, wondering if he was finally no longer resisting her charms. The insect manure said that her cooking skills were a bit clumsy, and gave her the idea of teaching her. But let's just say that he said something that made her totally distrust him, because normally the protagonist would never say something like that. She quickly turned away from him and asked how he could say such a thing, and she admitted that she liked him, but Yingxia was her best friend, and she could never hurt her feelings if she did something like that behind her back. Hearing Yingxia's name, he wondered if that wasn't the name of that unusable woman, and since he didn't want to reveal his identity so quickly, he would let Yingxia's friend go for now and she told him to get out of there, and she didn't want Yingxia to know what had happened that day, but if he did anything wrong to her, she would never let him get away with it. Then, as he was leaving, she told herself that he had forgotten her feelings for so long, and wondered how he had suddenly changed his mind about her. Picking up her cell phone this time, she said that she had to ask her friend about it, otherwise their relationship would be broken very soon. She then asked how Yingxia's relationship with Sankian had been recently, and she said that there had been a slight misunderstanding a while ago, and suddenly he had left Yuncheng. He had just sent her a message and told her not to worry too much, and asked if her friend had met him somewhere. In a place that seems to be the Sioux Construction Company, we saw Yingxia in a waiting room, and with her she said that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, none of the building materials manufacturers with whom they had made an appointment had shown up yet. After a long time of waiting, someone finally showed up, and this insect even apologized for the delay, because according to him, there had been a lot of contracts recently, so he hadn't been able to leave on time, but it was all a lie. Yingxia was understanding, and only thanked him for going to meet her, and she had taken the contract for him to look at. But Dung immediately said that if she didn't raise the price, the contract would definitely not be signed by them. President Kang, after so many years of collaboration with the Su family, wouldn't you consider showing a little consideration. Yingxia asked, since Mrs. Su has passed away, there is no longer any need to keep up appearances, said the scum. With that said, Yingxia ended up staying silent for a while, until he said something she didn't like at all, and threw the drink that was on the table in the face of the leftover swill. Disgusted by what she had done, he quickly punished Yingxia, and he asked her to think carefully about his recent proposal, but she only rejected the pig's offer once again. With that, she was thrown to the ground, and he then said that in any case, he didn't intend to cooperate with the Sioux family again. And leaving there, Yingxia said that she didn't believe he would find better cooperation than that in the whole of Yuncheng city. A day later, she said that unbelievably, all the companies in Yuncheng had already joined Kang Ling, and the only option now was to look for opportunities elsewhere. Suddenly, someone entered where Yingxia was, and it was just the scum from before, who said that from the look on her face, the negotiations had failed. I tried my best, but they're all conspiring to raise the price, said Yingxia. What's that? But Kang Ling told me that you poured tea on your face. It looks like you're intentionally damaging the company, doesn't it? Said the insect. Yingxia wondered if he had any idea what that raving pig had done to her, and from her thoughts, she still wondered how he had the audacity to play the victim and complain first. The rest of the scum just completely supported the manure from before, and said that as long as she could help the company, a little sacrifice wouldn't hurt. She just said that she would consider other options, but that sort of thing she would never do, and he said that it was no longer necessary, as he had already promised the manure from before that he would personally take her to the Peninsula Hotel that night. Pig manure, it seems you want to force me to resign from my own company. Fine, I'll go, Yingxia said. She went on to say that from now on, she would no longer be responsible for Chengxi's projects, and when she left, we saw that this was exactly what he wanted her to do. 
He went on to say that from now on, the Su family will be completely under his control. And finally we have a cut back to the well-paid cattle house. Now that he had finally taken care of all the Han family's unfinished business, he thought he could now get some rest. And as soon as he entered, his mother-in-law asked what it was he had done to Yingxia, and he was supposed to apologize to her. But he said he hadn't done anything, and she revealed that Yingxia had come home and locked herself in her room. And with that said, he thought it best to check for himself. Arriving at his and Yingxia's room, he asked what had happened, and she just said that she was fine, and that from that day on, she would no longer be working for the company. Was it the pig manure again? What did it do to you? Sankian asked. It wasn't him. I decided to leave the company myself. The manufacturers of the Chengxi project. I couldn't collaborate with them. So I ended up leaving the company. Sankian tried to comfort his wife, saying that it was no problem. And since she was no longer responsible for the Chengxi project, she could continue to be the president of the Su family. Again at the Su Construction Company, the manure from before said that Su Yingxia was officially no longer part of the Su group. So he would take her place and look after the Chengxi project from now on, and asked if anyone had an opposing view. His father then asked what they would do if Ryo Shui decided to end their cooperation, and others said that he needed to carefully consider the consequences, as this risk is too great to take. But he told them not to worry, and if the Ryo Shui company stopped cooperating with them, the construction period would be delayed by at least half a year, and the losses would also be enormous for them. So he said that Ryo Shui would definitely not end the cooperation just because of Yingxia's absence, and suddenly someone appeared in the room wanting to talk to the insect. The young man said that Mr. Zhang was there, who, if you don't remember, is the one who works for the protagonist, and the manure wondered if he had gone to the construction company for some special reason. We soon saw him with two other people, and the insect went to welcome him, asking why he hadn't seen that he was going to stop by the construction company. Responding, young Zhang said that he had taken some friends with him so that he could get to know them, and he would be dealing with them over the next few years from now on. Incredibly, the scum thought that this was a good move by Young Zhang, and even thought that the project was now even more guaranteed, so they wouldn't have to worry about the contract being cancelled. Zhang then said that they were actually lawyers, and Deng asked if they weren't part of the Ryo Shui company, and if they were there to deal with legal issues relating to the project itself. The lawyer said that she was there representing the Ryo Shui company to inform them that the contract had been cancelled, and they no longer needed a corporate bond and would no longer be collaborating with them. If there was any discontent, he could feel free to tell them directly so that they could sort it out together, and that was her calling card. When he finally realized the seriousness of the problem himself, he told himself that without the cooperation of the Ryo Shui company, he believed they would never be able to establish contracts for more than 8 or 10 years. In other words, the Su family definitely couldn't handle it, and he asked Young Zhang if he had done something that upset him, and if by any chance he could give them another chance. But Zhang only replied to the disposable scum that he had given plenty of chances before, and that leftover swill would only come in handy when death was near for him. Completely floored this time. He wondered how it had gotten to this level, but he had apparently forgotten all the humiliation he had put the young protagonist's wife through. The people in the company immediately started charging him, saying, washed up, look what you've done, what a stupid action. Yingxia's position is something that can't be moved. With Ryo Shui's track record, who else in Yun Cheng would have the courage to cooperate with us? The most important question now is how we're going to pay back the bank loans we took out earlier. Getting up, he asked if he was to blame for everything that had happened, and he said that it was definitely Su Yingxia's doing, who had whispered in Zhang's ear, and she wanted to harm the whole Su family. Since she wanted to harm them, she wouldn't have a single day's peace then, according to this rest of the wash, and soon we have a cut to an unknown residence this time. The rest of the scum couldn't wait for Yingixia to be his too, and suddenly someone burst into the house, and it was Sankian's men. Quickly, the scum asked what they were doing there, and it definitely had to be some kind of misunderstanding or something. And Mo Yang ordered his men to make sure that the scum learned not to mess with those who shouldn't be messed with. With that said, the pig manure began to be beaten non-stop, and he simply had to put up with it, until it was the cattle protagonist who decided to show his face. The scum asked who he was, and he was sure he had never offended the young protagonist before, then asked why he was doing it. But in his thoughts, he said that the person in front of him must be quite extraordinary, since even Mo Yang was acting on his orders. Responding to the dung, Sankian introduced himself, and the insect asked if he was Yingxia's worthless husband, and Sankian just held the leftover washing by the scruff of the neck, asking what he had done to Yingxia. 
The insect then apologized to the protagonist, saying that he shouldn't have hit her, and he would definitely cooperate with the Sue family in the future. But from the look on the protagonist's face, it was too late for that now. Squeezing even harder, Sankian told him that those who dared to touch a single strand of his wife's hair would have their lives cut short. At the entrance to the mountain where the protagonist lived, we see the scum approaching, and he tells Su Yingxia to wait for him, because he's going to show her how he's going to settle the score with her. The guard immediately blocked his entrance, saying that unauthorized people were not allowed in, and he shouted telling the guard to open the gate immediately, as he had a meeting with a member of Su's family. But the guard told him that there was no owner with the surname Sue on the mountain, and that he should leave immediately before the guard decided to act. Suddenly, he realized that the protagonist was approaching, and he went to talk to the protagonist, telling him to make Yingxia leave, and she was also a member of the Sue family, and then asking why she was harming the family. However, Sankian said that she had now left the company, and no longer had any connection with the company's affairs. The scum even had the audacity to act like she shouldn't have, and said that if it hadn't been for her talking nonsense in front of Zhang Lei, Ruo Shui would never have been able to stop cooperating with the Su family. He even asked the protagonist if he didn't realize he was being betrayed. But upon hearing this, Sankian then said that if he didn't want to return in a wheelchair, he should be more cautious when speaking. Now, in Dung's thoughts, he was saying that he had forgotten how strong the young protagonist was, and he couldn't be careless in front of him. When Sankian approached, the Dung probably saw his life flash before his eyes, but Sankian ignored him completely and continued on his way home. Outraged, the scum said that when he came back, he would make sure that they all regretted having messed with him. And again we went back to the Sioux Construction Company. But the next day, someone told him that due to the loss of the Chengxi project, they had lost the ability to continue making payments and the bank had given them three days to settle the loan. He just said that it was literally as if a wall collapsed on him and everyone fell on top of it too. And suddenly someone appeared asking where to find Mr. Su. This was the bank manager of Yuncheng, Hongdu, and the insect asked if the bank manager couldn't give them a longer deadline, and he said yes, and that they all asked for the same thing, but were still never able to pay. However, there was actually good news, and someone was willing to buy his company in that chaotic state, and all the current employees would be able to keep their jobs. The rest of the wash said that it was his family's company, and it was like an inheritance for him, so he would never hand it over to anyone. However, we soon see the employees revolting against him, saying that if he was condemned to death, he could die alone and it would be better if he didn't drag them to their deaths with him. This was an incredible opportunity, and if they didn't take advantage of it, the Sioux family would simply go bang bankrupt, and if he continued to run the company, he would only bring them even more problems. He said that the company was still under his command, ordering them to stay put, and with him he said that he had fought hard to win that position, and he definitely wasn't going to hand it over like that, until he had an idea and said that his cousin was actually an expert at winning people over, and he wondered if she would be able to make Zhang Liang fall in love with her. After that, he called her, and a while later, we saw his cousin again, asking why he was so anxious to meet her, and she was getting ready to attend a party where only rich boys went. He then said that he needed her to help him in a situation, and he told her to go and accompany Zhang Liang, and when he was happy, he would certainly be willing to help the company with the loan. She wondered if he had gone mad, and she was probably going to marry a rich man, and if her future husband's family found out, she would be completely ruined. Unless the Sioux family becomes a first-class family, you'll never be able to marry a real tycoon, so help me, said the scum. That said, the young fly finally agreed to go, and more neatly this time, she told herself that fortunately, Zhang Liang was quite clever, and if she joined him, it wouldn't be a bad deal for her either. Knocking on his door, she asked if he was home, and he asked if she needed any Anything. And when she answered, he quickly pushed her out, and then said that women like her were simply disgusting. With that, she's completely out of sorts, and in a different setting again, we see the bank manager and Mr. Zhang in front of the protagonist. The manager said that the next day, the insect from before would probably sell the construction company Su, and asked if he planned to deal with it himself, but he said that the manager could take care of it for him, and the name of the new president could be his wife's. With that said, the manager said he could take care of it for the protagonist, and Sankian's phone ended up ringing, and it was his mother-in-law. As soon as he answered the phone, she shouted that they had been in the Bin City for a few days, and asked how much longer he would make them wait until he came to them, and if he would wait until the end of the Dragon Boat Festival. 
He then apologized, saying that he had just finished some business and would be there soon. And with that said, she forgave him, saying that they had already been mistreated these days, and he had to help her save her reputation. After that, in the Bin City itself, we see this young man looking for someone. And it turns out his name is Tang Zong. And he was the biggest businessman in that city itself, and was still known as a legendary young man who started from scratch. He ended up being happy out of the blue, and we see that it was because he ended up meeting the protagonist, and he welcomed him warmly, asking how he could help the young Sankian that day. The young master hadn't expected him to be doing so well, and now he would be driving a Rolls Royce. But the young man said that he would never forget what Sankian had done for him in the past. Speaking of the past, we see precisely this young man's past, and he said that if it hadn't been for the protagonist's investment at the time, he would never have known where he was wandering now. Placing a suitcase full of money in front of the boy, Sankian said that he was very skilled, and if Binxian wasn't enough for him, he could go to Yuncheng to meet Sankian, who would have thought that his tear-streaked face would turn into that of a successful businessman, and he said that he would be willing to go to hell for the protagonist. Sankian then asked where his wife was, and if the boy could take him to her as she and her friends must have been very anxious for him to arrive. Speaking of her, we soon saw her with her mother, and apparently with another cousin too, and she said that her boyfriend was waiting for her nearby. When she finally met him, she introduced him and said that he had his own company and earned hundreds of thousands a year, and asked if her aunt didn't think he was better than Sankian. But the aunt replied that it wasn't quite as she had said, asking him back since when he was better than her useless son-in-law, and her niece that she really knew how to make jokes, since everyone knew that Sankian Sankian wasn't useful at all, but the old woman said that Sankian would be arriving soon, and when he did, she would be able to see for herself that her aunt wasn't wrong. In a handbag store itself, the girl showed interest in those bags immediately, but as that bag cost more than 30,000, Yingxia gave them the idea of looking elsewhere. However, the cattle quickly said that as long as she liked it, he would buy it for her, and my friends, how there are cattle in this world who don't value their precious money. Yingxia, you're with Han Sankian, what high-level gift did he bring you? I'm happy today, would you like me to ask Jilin to buy you something in thanks? Yingxia's cousin asked. As it was put this way, Yingxia said that she would end up accepting her ceremony, but in her thoughts, she told herself that she would choose something that was simply expensive. As soon as she picked up the bag, her cousin asked her if she had suddenly gone mad, because that bag cost around 300,000 euros, but Yingxia told her not to worry, as she didn't have to give it away if she thought it was too expensive. Sankian then suddenly appeared, saying that since that was the chosen bag, he would make the payment, and she shouldn't worry, as he hadn't been very late, and even asked if she wanted him to buy all the bags at once. Yingxia's cousin asked how an unusable being like him could afford the whole store, and why he was saying nonsensical things and suddenly he asked how much all the bags in the store would cost. Even the clerk asked him if he really meant it, until she said that all the bags, including those in the showcase, cost 5 million, and he simply swiped his card, buying every bag in the store. Han Sankian, what a wonderful show. If it were me, I'd never appear in public again. Their expressions really made me laugh, said the protagonist's mother-in-law. Suddenly, she realized that all their luggage was outside, and Yingxia's cousin said that if she had that much money, they could just buy a house on their own. The two looked at each other in complete silence, and Sankian told them not to worry, as he had a friend who owned an empty villa in Binxian, and they could stay there for the time being. Speaking of the village, we cut to this beautiful house, and we see Yingxia's mother trying to reach her parents, but they weren't answering her calls, so they've gone somewhere. However, Sankian said that, in fact, her number had been blocked, and she asked if they didn't know about all these conflicts they've been through, and why they would block her. She then wondered if this could be the work of the Jiang family, who are acting from the shadows, and don't ask me who the Jiang family is, because I don't remember either. Yes, mother, Sankian already suspected that something like this might happen last night, and he also found out that the Dragon Boat Festival will be held tomorrow at the Zonghuang Hotel, said Yingxia. Mother-in-law, don't you want to preserve your reputation? I've already booked the whole hotel, and when the time comes, they'll need your approval to get in, said the protagonist. With that said, the old rattlesnake said that her son-in-law had an excellent idea, and in a different place, we see some people gathered there, commenting on the Jiang Lan family. A while later, Yingxia's cousin arrived with her boyfriend or husband in his sports car, and in the end we saw just the two lovebirds, and now I understand, and Jiang, in fact, was just her, his girlfriend. 
This gentleman said that Jiji, who is the rich young man, was really an exceptional talent, and he and Jiang Zian made a perfect couple, literally made in heaven. His uncles tried to take advantage of their kinship to push their sons to work with him too, and as they headed towards the entrance, some men appeared asking if they were Mr. Sankian's guests. The young man immediately said that he had booked a place there for him, but they said that the whole hotel had been booked in advance and only guests of Mr. Sankian could enter. The young man ended up being surprised by this, and he referred to their superior, saying that his gatekeepers were blind, because they were preventing the rich young man from passing through. However, the superior apologized and told him that he had misunderstood the situation, asking if he hadn't heard what his doorman had just said. This was because the hotel was booked for a private event, and if he didn't agree, he should simply go to their manager. The people there started telling Jiji to do something, and someone ordered the people there to just shut up, and we see this old gentleman with his life partner. He told Jiji not to be too discreet discreet, and to quickly bring the boss there to him so that they could talk, and in his thoughts, he said that the Zhongwang Hotel was owned by the Tang Zong, and they couldn't offend such influential people. Jiji simply thought it best to get out of there, and the old man from before was apparently the type who liked a mess, and the young man from before commented that the Jiang family was really funny. He even told them to ask the Jiji if he dared offend Tang Zong, and the old troublemaker said that he shouldn't underestimate the Jiang family, or he might end up regretting it. Suddenly, he spots his boss's car and tells the Jiji to get out of the way, and finally we see the protagonist helping his useless wife out of the car. When they finally arrived on the scene, the toxic old woman's father asked when his daughter had returned, and she said that she had arrived a few days ago and was staying at Jiang Yu's house, but unfortunately she had been kicked out. Now it all makes sense, and it's more than explained why this mummy is so arrogant and petty, and apparently she's totally taken after her father. The girl from before also said that she didn't want them to get into trouble, and even blocked her aunt's phone number on her grandfather's phone in hiding, so that she wouldn't get in touch with him. The old troublemaker called his granddaughter ungrateful, and said that they were all related, asking her how she had dared to do that, and that she should apologize to her aunt, and the others. But she asked why he was meddling in her life, and she was going to marry Jim and from now on she was part of the Liu family. However, in the young man's thoughts, he said that they all got off Tang Zong's car together, so it seemed that their relationship with Tang Zong was very deep. He then said that she had really overreacted in that situation, and that she should go and apologize, and she asked him if he was going mad, because she was his wife, and why he wasn't supporting her. Apparently, some women think that just because they have a man by their side, they should support them even when they're wrong, but that's not really how things work. But he simply ignored her completely and said that if she continued to make a fuss, she couldn't blame him for breaking up with her, and she finally realized that she couldn't lose him, otherwise she'd lose all the luxuries she'd had until then. After that, she finally apologized and said that it was all her fault, and now that the problems had been solved, the old troublemaker told them to forget about it and get something to eat soon. But let's say that when they were about to enter, Sankian asked who it was who had told them that they were allowed to eat there. Sankian, if it weren't for Yingxia taking the lead, would you have the authority to stand before me? You have no right to speak here. But Yingxia said that, in fact, the hotel had nothing to do with her, and it had all been paid for by the young protagonist. He commented to Yingxia that things really did change when you had money, and now she wasn't even helping her relatives, and people like her definitely didn't deserve to be part of the Jiang family. The old man then shouted telling them not to think that he really cared about that destroyed hotel. But as soon as he said that, someone suddenly appeared asking who it was that had said that hotel was a destroyed place. That was Binxian's number one, Tang Zong, and the old man told him that they had made a reservation at that hotel that very day. But when they arrived they were turned away, and asked if that was how the young man conducted his business. But he told the old troublemaker, who was just like his toxic daughter, that his word in Binxian was law, and asked if he had any objections to that. What's more, he had invited important people to eat that very day, and he wondered since when the old man had any qualifications to be allowed in there. He and his bodyguards apologized to the protagonist for being late, and the young man from before wondered how this could be happening. He also wondered what kind of position Sankian held for Tang Zong to have to bow down and humiliate himself like that, and he was thankful that he hadn't offended the young protagonist, otherwise he'd be dead. Even Yingxia's mother wondered when the young protagonist had become so influential, but her daughter said that he had never been useless, and it was only they who hadn't known about his influence before. Some people were blocking the way again, and finally, they began to clear space for the main people to pass, and as they entered the hotel, we see the old man, in the background, completely indignant at what had just happened. 
Inside the hotel itself, Sankian was enjoying himself with his friend, until he noticed a message on his phone, telling him to meet this person on the terrace. He then quickly took out his cell phone and told people to wait for him, as he had some urgent matters to attend to. Leaving there, we see him heading towards the terrace itself, and there was a person unknown to him until then. As soon as Sankian got there, he commented that even the Kencheng prison couldn't hold him, and it seemed that there was nowhere else in the world where this gentleman couldn't escape. He replied by saying that there was still one place that perhaps even he couldn't escape, and he was looking for the protagonist this time to ask him to help him enter just that place. That place was Dixon Prison, where only the most terrible criminals with no chance of redemption were held, and there were still many file erasers who couldn't die and were imprisoned there, away from the public. He went on to say that if the protagonist's grandfather hadn't died, he could also have been one of those detained inside, which left the young protagonist at a loss to understand what he meant. A while later, Sankian told himself that sending a person to Dixon prison was extremely difficult, and it was necessary to find the exact location and also to have suitable cellmates. The young master noticed someone standing there, and it was a Taoist who was calling him to measure his heavenly destiny, pointing out the lost path in the vast world. As the boy had said he knew everything, the protagonist then asked him if he could predict where he would like to go, and Sankian recognized that his clothing was very similar to that of the person in the photo he had seen earlier. The boy then said, if you think of playing with destiny, you'll lose your way, but Buddha is above everything. The mystery of heaven cannot be guessed. However, Sankian wondered what Buddha had to do with it, and he really was just a charlatan who pretended to be a spiritist and only played tricks. He even asked himself what he was really doing, because he was really hoping that a charlatan like this would know the location of the Dixon prison. The Taoist even said that he hadn't finished saying everything yet, and then commented that as long as Sankian paid more money, everything could be solved, but the protagonist ignored him completely again. We then found out that the boy's master had said that Sankian should simply end up seven feet under, but it was a real shame, because now he couldn't be Sankian's opponent, so he could just watch helplessly. Back at the protagonist's house itself, the viper was comfortable to finally be home, and she said that if it hadn't been for Sankian arriving on time, they would simply have been snubbed. Because of him, they were able to join the dragon boat, but she said that Yingxia shouldn't really have resigned her position and abandoned her responsibilities in the Su company, and asked if she didn't do it just to fulfill Hei Chao's wish. But Yingxia said that now there was no point in her mother talking about such things, and the young master said that, in fact, he had already bought the company from her, and now she was the new CEO. The two were completely surprised by such news, but he added that Zhang Liang would cause problems for the company the next day, and it seemed that they wouldn't be able to recover the project from the west of the city. In other words, she would have to face this crisis alone, and she told the young protagonist that she would never let him down, and the cattle just said that it was nothing, and as long as he could make her happy, he was willing to do anything for her. In her thoughts, the unusable young woman said that perhaps it was time she could give the young protagonist a reward, and in their bedroom itself, he asked why she wasn't asleep yet, as it was very late. She replied by saying that the red thread was very uncomfortable, and she was about to undo it, and he said that the next day he would buy her a good quality red thread, and she was to let him take care of it for her. As he made the cutout himself, she wondered how he could be so stupid and not realize what she really meant, and I wondered the same thing. The guy is not only a fool and a cattle, he's also slow. Sankian asked what the problem was and what was bothering her, but she simply turned her back and told him to keep undoing that red line, as she was going to bed first. She was simply indignant that she had given him so many obvious hints, but he still hadn't understood a thing, and still wondered how someone like him had managed to have a wife like her. However, Yingxia, I think it's the other way around here, and the question that should really be asked is how someone like you got a husband like him, who does everything for you even though you don't deserve it. At Su's construction company, people told the pig manure why he was still sitting there, and that he should get out of there, and asked what he would do if the new CEO wasn't happy with him there. Disgusted, he tells them that all the benefits they got when he was there apparently didn't help them at all. And in the background we see the young Zhang entering the place. As soon as the young man saw him, he thought that things were finally going to get better and luck was on his side. But Zhang said that the damage from that stoppage would be their responsibility, and asked if he really thought Zhang would pay for it. Minyur soon realized that this was much worse than simply throwing fuel on the fire, and finally the new CEO had shown up. This was exactly who we already know, and the Minyur asked who it was that had allowed someone like her in there. Yingxia then asked what his position was in the company at the moment, and whether he was a cleaner or an assistant, but as he no longer had any authority there, he should just shut up and behave himself. 
He immediately offended the young director of the company, and even said that they were ruined because of her, and that she should just get out of there immediately. Do you want me to leave? Yingxia asked. In that case, how will you conduct the meeting without the president? Some people there didn't believe what they were really seeing, because she had previously resigned her position and had now bought the whole company. But others didn't doubt it, because even the bank manager was on her side. Incredibly, the insect was still angry about this, and went up to Yingxia in an attempt to attack her, but he was quickly stopped by his guard and consequently immobilized. He even told the insect that if it didn't want to lose an arm or simply leave this world, it was better for it to stay calm, making the rest of the dung apologize for what it had just done. With that said, he was quickly kicked again, and Yingxia said that she was already aware of the compensation issue and wouldn't go into too much detail, and Mr. Hong said that since she put it that way, he wouldn't delay their meeting any longer. Su Yingxia, do you really think it's amazing? I want to see when all your money runs out, I wonder how long the company can last, said the rest of the wash. But she said that if they took it to court, it would only lead to even more losses, and the most important thing now was to stabilize the company and maintain its current operations. That sounded good, but he was anxious to see how she would cope without a project, and would also like to see how she would raise the money to keep the company going. The guards then told him that he didn't need to worry about that, as he was no longer an employee of the Sioux company, and he could leave on his own or in the worst possible way. It was his choice. As it turned out, he chose the worst way, and in a matter of seconds he he was being completely kicked out of the room, and finally he was left behind talking to himself. In a different location, more precisely in the temple of the fake Taoist from before, we see this couple commenting on something about him, and he's disgusted by those people staring at him. Leaving to go to a different place, he wondered why his master was still training there, and finally opened the door to say that he had found the Sankian he had said before, and he was nothing special, according to the fake Taoist. Seal said that if he tied up the young protagonist, he would kneel before him in just three movements and beg for mercy, but his master immediately reprimanded him, asking if he had done something else stupid. But he answered his master by saying that he hadn't really done anything and hadn't said anything either. And taking a kind of circle out of his clothes, the master told him to put it away carefully. It was an extremely important object. Even though he was dying, he wasn't going to give it to anyone, and the young Taoist told his master to rest assured that he would never give it to anyone else. His master instructed him to go down the mountain and then meet Sankian and become friends with him, and the young man asked if he would like him to spy on the protagonist secretly. The master then said that he knew he had a lot of doubts, but for safety's sake, he wasn't supposed to investigate anything and let things happen naturally, and he wasn't supposed to show up anymore after he came down the mountain. So he decided to do exactly as his master had asked him to do, and off he went, commenting that he still had to fulfill his duty to look after his master in his last moments, and wondering who would look after his master when he wasn't there. Suddenly, he heard a strange noise, right from where he had just left, and went to check if everything was alright with his master, but suddenly he fell completely to the ground. Desperate this time, he realized that he had cut his own meridians, and began to wonder who it was that had forced his master to die himself, and no matter who it was, he he would make sure that these people paid with their lives. In the city itself, we see just Sankian, and he said that Dixon Prison was a highly secretive place, whose location was unknown, and the search for information about its location involved risks and discreet investigations in areas of illegal activity. An interested girl quickly appeared trying to keep Sankian company, and he told her not to think too much, as he was just a driver. As he put it, she quickly lost interest in him completely, and he said that these self-interested women were everywhere these days and I have to agree with him completely. The young Taoist appeared, saying that he had missed a great opportunity, and wondered why he couldn't get an advantage like that. But let's say he ended up pretending to be surprised at meeting the young protagonist there. After the Taoist met Sankian, he began to wonder what a person like him was doing in the red zone, while the protagonist wondered if this wasn't just the lying Taoist he had met. According to the young man, he was only there to have a look at the girls, because there was a beautiful view beyond, according to the Taoist, and although the landscape was beautiful, his hunger still remained. Hugging the protagonist, he gave them the idea of going for a bite to eat together, as he knew there was a store famous for its tasty food in the very street they were in. Now in a different location, but still in the same area, he was placing his order, and even ordered a little of every dish on the menu, and finally he introduced himself to the protagonist, and his name was King Yun. When the food finally arrived, the young man said that it had been a long time since he had eaten such a good meal, and now he could finally afford to do so. As for the protagonist, he said that the guy was so poor that he couldn't even afford a meal, but he still had the courage to go to a restaurant like that. 
Don't say that, said the young Taoist. I have money, I just don't like spending it. Besides, a lot of the money I make is reading people's fortunes. Leaving the place, Sankian said that that meal could even be on his account, but it seemed that their journey would end right there. But even so, the Taoist still had some unfinished business with Sankian, since he was still following him. He thanked him for the meal and said that from that moment on, Sankian had officially become his older brother. And since he was no longer a Taoist, from now on he would follow him until the day he died. Although Sankian said he didn't want a brother and ordered the guy to get away from him, the Taoist insisted on following the young protagonist, saying that he definitely needed someone to serve him. Disgusted this time, the young master told the Taoist that if he continued to follow him, Sankian would definitely make him throw out everything he had just eaten. To try to avoid the beating, the boy revealed that he had been weak since he was a child and was also sick, asking the protagonist not to hit him. If he happened to hit the young boy, Sankian would still have to call an ambulance for him too, until he managed to convince the young master to say that he could accompany him from now on. Great. What would you like me to call you, big brother? What can I do for you from now on? Asked the annoying guy, who even made the young protagonist wonder how he had gotten an annoying guy like that on his side. Then the same annoying guy decided to try to strike up a conversation with some of the ladies who were around, and he was practically trying to get a girl for our protagonist. When one of them was about to take action and actually go with the young master, her friend immediately interrupted her, telling her not to believe that young man, because the protagonist was just a driver and nothing more. She went on to say that she was sure the Taoist was just a liar, and that he wasn't a nice person either, but he told the red-haired girl that she was only jealous because Sankian didn't want to be with her. Do you think my master would stay with a woman with plastic surgery and a fake belly? Don't insist and go after someone else, you freak, said the Taoist troublemaker. Clearly this made her angry, and she threatened him by telling him to take it back, otherwise he might regret the day he was born. The protagonist was the one who put a stop to it, and with him he said that this young man really knows how to make a good mess, while the viper was disgusted by what the Taoist had done to her. In an alley this time, the same troublesome guy was telling Sankian that he really was the best master, because he got him out of there before anything happened to him. Tired this time, he told the young man that he could follow him, but if he betrayed Sankian or caused any trouble, the consequences would only be that he would have his life taken. But with you, he said, this guy could be erratic, but his cultivation base was extremely stable, and his previous performance was hiding his true power, and perhaps it was better to leave him by his side and see how things really turned out. Don't worry, I'm someone who's easily satisfied with food and good company, so I'll have nothing to complain about. Big brother, I know there's a good place nearby, how about I take you for a good look? The young Taoist asked. Ten minutes later, they were in front of some kind of establishment, and Sankian asked that if he was a Taoist priest before, how come he knew all the good spots in that red area? But he said he wasn't 100% saintly, and Sankian knew he was a cheat before that, and he also said that this place was definitely a great place to be able to talk to girls, and surely he could find a woman suitable for him. As unbelievable as it may seem, the Taoist ended up meeting someone he didn't like there, and it was precisely the redhead from before that he almost got into a fight with because of her unnecessary comment. She told the guy with her that he was the one who had been bullying her before, and he needed to take revenge for her, and as there are always a few good cattle who obey their girls, he ordered his henchmen to finish off the guy in front of him. When the guys were approaching to finish off the Taoist, Sankian asked what they were thinking, and the cattle told them to kneel down and apologize to his wife, and that day he would allow them to leave unharmed. The viper quickly looked at the Taoist, and asked if he knew he had provoked her anger, but in a matter of seconds, there was the Taoist completely kneeling just as the guy from before had asked. He even belittled himself in order to boost the ego of the disposable viper from before, and said that she was as beautiful as a goddess, and certainly shouldn't care about someone like him, who is insignificant. Even the young protagonist was surprised that he had such an attitude, and when the cattle from before asked what the protagonist was waiting for to answering, Sankian said, you're Mr. Ning, right. I advise you to stop while you're ahead, otherwise the consequences won't be something you can bear. The insect even thought it could actually face Sankian, but apparently he was so angry inside that he couldn't help himself, and attacked the protagonist with a claw from some drink that was nearby. But to his surprise, Sankian knew how to defend himself very well, and he easily managed to disarm the insect in front of him, and consequently finish it off as well. 
While their boss was completely on the ground, the slags just looked at the scene, and he charged his henchmen, asking why they were stalling so long and why they had to go ahead and take the protagonist's life. The moment they acted as their boss had asked, we could only hear the beatings taking place, and soon we see all of them completely collapsed on the ground, while the Taoists praised the protagonist. The Fly Dung then said that this was Brother Dao's territory, and asked how he dared to attack them, and apparently this Brother Dao was someone Sankian knew. Dung even said that Brother Dao was an almost divine presence within the Grey Power faction in Yuncheng, an existence like that of a death god, and no matter who he was, Sankian was completely finished. Brother Dao finally showed up, and it was precisely Blade 12, and when the scum tried to pick a fight with the protagonist, it was he who ended up getting hit, and only with a slap was he thrown away. Blade 12 then asked how that guy could be so stupid as to have the nerve to offend his boss, and soon he was on his knees in front of the protagonist, saying that it was his fault for not educating those slags properly. How to deal with them was up to the protagonist, and not even the rest of the washed up people from before were believing what they were seeing, because even the strongest guy in Yu Cheng was showing that much respect for that young master. He immediately asked the walking mummy what she had done to offend the protagonist, and she said she didn't know either, because to her, he was just a simple driver. Throwing her aside this time, he was completely on his knees too, begging forgiveness and saying that he was a fool for believing empty words and not recognizing his own incompetence, and he was completely wrong. Sankian ended up being merciful to these insects, and the blade ordered them to get out of there, so they did, and returning to the main ones, Sankian asked if he knew the Dixon prison, and even the blade was surprised that Sankian knew this place. He said he had a friend who finds fun in prison escapes, and he wants to try to get into Dixon prison. I've already been in touch with people from Dixon prison, and they only care about money, a billion dollars per person to get in. But I advise your friend to give up on that idea, no one can get out, said Blade 12. After hearing what his friend had said, Sankian asked if he could help him get in touch with these people, and money wasn't the problem, as he needed to do this no matter what. At the home of the young lady who truly deserved to be with the protagonist, we see the young lady extremely angry at the protagonist for blocking her phone number again. Even her grandfather asked who had upset her, and asked if she would like him to help her get revenge, but she only asked for his cell phone. When she handed it over, he asked why she needed that old cell phone, and wasn't sure if it could really help her with anything, but she said he didn't need to worry about that for now. When she made the call herself, she was thrilled that she had finally managed to call Sankian, and tried again with her cell phone, but when she tried, it said that the user she was trying to call was currently busy. The girl apparently has a very spoiled disposition, and began to complain that he had actually managed to fool her, and when her grandfather asked who it was that had the courage to fool her, she said that it was the the young protagonist. Besides, her grandfather had to help her take revenge, but he refused to do so, and even said that Sankian was his master, so seeking revenge against him would simply be unacceptable. Disgusted, she said that she didn't care, and if he showed up there, she would definitely beat him up and curse him until the last days of her life, but her grandfather told her not to blame Sankian because of her frustration. Suddenly, she heard a very familiar voice asking her if she would like to beat him until the last days of her life. This was precisely the young protagonist, and she quickly ran out of there, saying that he had come there so that he could take revenge, and it was for her grandfather to protect her. Professor, you finally arrived. There's a Go tournament awaiting your participation. Shang Yun specifically asked for your presence so as not to embarrass you. Wang Mao has already signed up for you, said the spoiled girl's grandfather. However, Sankian said he wouldn't go, and the old man asked him if he wasn't afraid that these people would try to defame him or turn him into a joke in the world of Go. A joke. For most people in Yuncheng, I'm already like that, aren't I? Even so, I never cared. Why do you think I'm going to care now? The issues you've caused, resolve them yourself, said Sankian. At the Sioux Construction Company itself, Yingxia was saying to herself that, in order to rebuild the company, it was necessary to establish new partnerships, and suddenly someone showed up saying that something had gone wrong, and she asked what was going on. The secretary said that the parents of several business owners would like to see Yingxia, and they were furious, and not even the most useless girl and the man who understood what was going on there. Gentlemen, I don't know why you came to me with such determination, what's the reason? Asked the unusable one in the story. They started complaining that she knew who they were, and she dared to take advantage of being the daughter of the Sioux family and not take them seriously, and they even said that the protagonist dared to offend them in some way. Yingxia said she didn't know how her husband had offended those gentlemen, and if there had been any misunderstanding, she herself would apologize for it. 
but they told her to go back and ask the young protagonist herself, and she was supposed to tell him that the next day, he had to agree to their demands, otherwise they wouldn't be kind to the Sioux family business. Finally, the old men were leaving, and three hours later, there was the supreme cattle that had no value at all, and she mentioned the gentleman who had gone to look for her, and said that he had offended them, then asked what he had done now. In response, he said that those gentlemen were members of the Go Association in Yuncheng, and they were forcing him to take part in the tournament. And even Yingxia asked if her husband knew how to play Go. He started boasting that he was one of, if not the only, better player. But she didn't believe what her husband had told her, and asked if they really expected him to win the championship. In the future, when he was supposed to brag, it was only for him to be more realistic, and he probably had no idea of the position of Shanguan in the world of Go. But clearly the young protagonist didn't like what his wife said to him, because she didn't really take him seriously. He mentioned that he might need to show her his talents, but let's just say she wasn't interested. The unusable girl also said that she had a friend who was also very fond of Go, and if he managed to beat her, Yingxia would believe him, and he asked what he would get if he won. Responding to the young master, she said that she would kiss him if he won, which, frankly, she was supposed to do naturally during their day, since they were a couple. Some time had passed, and it was just Yingxia's two friends, and she said that 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 was the friend she had mentioned before, called Wai Yiyun, and she had won several awards in Go Championships. When the protagonist introduced himself, Wai Yiyun said that he had heard a lot about Sankian, but he was abroad and couldn't attend his friend's wedding, and then apologized. He said it was no problem, and asked when their match would finally start, and even Yingxia's other friend asked why he was in such a hurry, and if he was afraid of losing. Ah, sorry for my impatience. Come on in and let's talk. It's lunchtime now, let me prepare something for you to try, said Sankian. Once inside his house, they were about to start the game of Go, and the pink-haired friend told Wai Yian not to take it easy on the protagonist, and she finally made her first move. As Yingxia savored her appetizer, she told Sankian that Yian was there for a Go tournament, and if he wanted to go, it might be a good opportunity to hone his skills. A while had passed, and even Yingxia's other friend was bored, apparently, and she said that Yian's expression didn't look good, and asked if perhaps Sankian was really about to win. Even Yian was surprised that Sankian was that good, and when he made his move, she said that she hadn't expected his Go skills to be that good, and hoped that she wouldn't have to face him in the first round of the competition. While the pink-haired girl said that he was just lucky, and that it was also her fault that she hadn't taken him seriously, Sankian said that if it hadn't been for Yingxia, he wouldn't even have entered that competition. Now that he had won that competition, he asked if his wife remembered their agreement, and Yingxia's friend asked what he was thinking. She quickly pulled her two friends aside, telling them that they would now have a private conversation, and that he shouldn't interrupt them, until he noticed a call on her cell phone. When he answered, he asked why such and such a person had contacted him at such and such a time of day, and asked if the person on the other end was out of money again. This was precisely Mo Yang, and he said that Blade 12 had been injured and was now in hospital, asking if the young master could go to them so that he could help them. At the hospital itself, we see the young protagonist arriving, and he asks what happened to the Blade, because with his skills, he shouldn't have been in that situation. Even he didn't know what really happened, and one guy won around 500,000 the night before in the ring, and to cheer up the crowd, he organized a challenge, and if anyone beat him, they would win a 500,000 prize. Not even the protagonist believed this, and he didn't even know how Blade 12 hadn't gone bankrupt with his business, and Mo Young said that with Blade 12 injured, there was no one in charge of the boxing ring, so no one could go except Sankian. Sankian then told him to rest while he went to check the situation himself, and soon we see him in the place where the fights were taking place, and that guy was precisely the manager, who was at the protagonist's service if he needed him. Initially, he intended to just watch, and the manager was supposed to show up in case that guy who defeated Blade 12 showed up again. The young master ended up overhearing these two guys talking, and they were complaining about why the guy from the day before who won Blade 12 hadn't shown up yet. As he didn't have a high prize this time, the mohawked man thought it would be better to go home and watch TV than to stay in that place. Sankian then said that he had heard that spectators won extra prizes, and asked why they didn't try their luck. Referring to the protagonist, they asked if he was crazy, if he really thought they could fight everyone in the ring, and if he was thinking about fighting. 
It was just as they said, and he really was thinking of fighting, and we soon see the young master preparing to enter the arena. The announcer of the fights had already said that there was a new competition to be held there, and everyone was invited to get up on stage, and the last one standing would receive a prize of $100,000. Sankian quickly appeared to win the prize, and then his rival, who it turned out was precisely the guy who had won it from the protagonist's friend earlier. Although his physique wasn't very big, this guy clearly looked very dangerous, and the one who was challenging the protagonist asked if he was there just so he could get revenge on Blade 12. Sankian quickly thanked him for the obvious question, and they decided not to waste any more time on it then. And while their fight was going on, the guy seemed to be holding his own against the protagonist. Just as he was about to be hit, apparently he managed to dodge easily and threw a string of punches at the young master, causing him to have to be on the defensive this time. Even he didn't believe that this guy was that strong because it was very difficult to resist his blows, and the bald man was already thinking that the fight was no longer worth it for him. With one last blow, he managed to throw the young protagonist away, and thanks to this, people were completely freaked out by this fight, and the one before asked if anyone else would like to compete for the 100,000. Ten minutes later, we see Sankian resting, and the manager of the place tells his master that after the strange guy took the money, he just left the place quickly. Did you send someone to track him down? A specialist like him? We can't leave him free, said the protagonist. The manager said that they had even sent someone, but he was great at hiding, and they would continue their search, and the young master hoped that person wasn't going after them, otherwise they would certainly be in trouble. In a completely different location this time, we see through the window a woman referring to the bald man from before, telling him that this guy, Han Sankian, looked really interesting, and asked if he could find out any more information about him. The bald man said he'd seen him before, but he was no big deal, and this beautiful maiden, who, frankly, is identical to Yingxia's friend, asked if he'd done anything with Sankian, but she hoped not. He said he'd only been to the rink and ended up meeting him by chance, and it seems he had some connection with the place itself, and she mentioned the fact that he'd spent three years as a good-for-nothing, but suddenly bought a house in the hills. What's more, he was also connected with the underground ring, arousing the interest of this beautiful maiden, and when the bald man from before said that that type of person wasn't even fit to be with his master, he ended up getting a good slap. She asked if he thought he was worthy of her, and referring to his mistress again, he said that he knew she needed a pawn, and he was sure he was more skilled than the young protagonist. I'm sure that young lady is just Yeon, she said to her henchman, asking if he had any other skills besides fighting, and if he thought he could run a family in the future. She added that Sankian was very important to her, and he shouldn't dare make trouble with him, otherwise she would end his life with her own hands. Clearly the bald man had followed his mistress's orders, and three days had passed, and there was was the beautiful lady again, with the protagonist. The old man from before said that the hotel was already booked waiting for the protagonist to enter, and the young master asked if he could personally take care of these little things. But as long as the young protagonist could bring glory to the Yunchengo Association, he was willing to do anything for it. When the old man asked who the beautiful princess next to him was, Sankian said that she was a friend of his and had also come to take part in the chess tournament. The beautiful maiden spoke kindly to Mr. Wang, and he commented that there seemed to be quite a few talented young people in Yunche, and then he asked them to get into the car, as he was going to take them to the best restaurant in Fiang as a welcome. Sankian asked Mr. Wang if Mr. Shang was going to take part in the tournament, and Mr. Wang said that he was a prominent figure in the world of Go, and it wasn't easy for people of his caliber to take part in competitions, asking if Sankian wanted to compete with him. He said that it was exactly that, and he had his reasons for going there that time to challenge him. And then he remembered Yingxia's promise, but this time a little more rewarding. At the venue where the competition was to take place, it was announced that the competition would soon begin, and the contestants were to enter the arena quickly. The beautiful young lady Yian commented that she was lucky not to be in the same area as the protagonist, otherwise she would probably have left early. After saying goodbye, the protagonist quickly went up to compete, and his first opponent was a girl too. But after a while of dueling, Yian commented that he lost in the semi-finals to the apprentice Shang Yuan Haibai. Apparently Sang Yin still had to continue, and the beautiful maiden wondered how such a strange competition system existed, because the guy who beat her was already in the final, and Sang Yin still had two more matches to play. 
Again at Sankian's turn, the old Wang commented that Sankian's opponents were going too slowly, and were clearly wasting his energy, thinking that the protagonist wouldn't be able to last until the final. Ian asked if he thought the person called Shang Yuan Haibai was doing anything suspicious, and when the protagonist finished his match, the announcer announced the winner, and he had finally managed to advance to the final round. However, he thought that so many games in one day really made him tired, and Mr. Wang told them to go back to the hotel and rest, because the next day's final would be against someone very difficult to play against. The announcer quickly said that a last-minute message had been given, and due to an unforeseen incident by the respected elder Shang Yuan, the organizing committee decided that the final would be brought forward and held immediately, so they wouldn't have to wait until the next day to have a new champion, and that same day they would witness the birth of the champion himself. Old Wang said that Sankian had played for 12 consecutive hours that same day, and asked on what basis they had decided to bring the final forward. The presenter replied that the final without the presence of the illustrious Shang Yuan was undoubtedly a flaw in that event, so it was a unanimous decision that they reached after a discussion between them. Despite the judges believing that no one would be able to beat the other guy in the final, the old man showed up saying that it was all their fault, because the next day he had important business to attend to. In other words, he had no choice but to do it, then apologize for it, and the presenter looked like a flower blooming in front of the old man himself. He also said that if he really thought it wasn't fair, then he would let Aoyang Ziyuji drop out of the competition the next day, and Sankian would take the title. However, clearly none of the organizers could allow this to really happen, and Sankian finally decided to move, saying that he had never really considered Aoyang Ziyuji as an opponent, because he wasn't up to it. The presenter immediately started trying to defend the elder's pupil, saying that he was an apprentice of the respected Shanguan, and Sankian asked if that was the only reason he deserved the title of champion. Sankian ended up agreeing to hold the final that same day, because if he beat the elder's pupil, the elder himself would have to compete with him too. As long as he could really beat the elder's apprentice, the elder agreed to let them compete together, and Sankian was sure that it wouldn't be difficult to beat his pupil. Finally, Sankian asked them to start the match, and the elder advised his apprentice again, saying that he would only be able to win if he managed to make the protagonist mentally tired. While they were getting ready to play, the old man decided to make a call, asking how things were going. And the person on the other end said that Yingxia had already been captured, and asked if he would like to make her shout so that the old man could hear. However, the old man only told his henchman to take care of her, and without his order, he wasn't supposed to hurt her. In his thoughts, he said that since Sankian was married, he wondered why he was trying to be the center of attention. So it wasn't for the young protagonist to blame him for what was about to happen. And while the two of them continued with their departure from Go, we saw Yingxia with her friend as well. The kidnapper was calm about the situation, and he commented that it really was a shame, as the two were beautiful maidens, and shortly afterwards, someone suddenly appeared there. He asked if he could have some fun with them, but of course this made the big man angry, and he threw the table at him, saying that if he hurt either of them, he would end up without his pay. He quickly began to apologize, because he had said it without thinking, and finally the big man told him to take care of those two, because he needed to go out so he could calm down a bit. When his boss finally left, he was alone with the two girls, and he removed the tape from both of their mouths and asked them to lick his feet. The unusable woman didn't quite understand his request, but she ended up taking a hit thanks to it. And Yingxia's friend asked why he was doing it, and if he wanted money, all he had to do was ask for it. The one who got hit this time was Yingxia's friend, who asked her who that guy was and what she had done to him. But he said she didn't have to worry about who he was, because he just didn't like her. This time it was his boss who showed up and said that he was completely ignoring what he had ordered, asking if the guy in front of him had lost the will to live by chance. He quickly apologized to the lady, as his younger companion didn't know how to behave. But let's just say that a knife ended up going through his chest, and the one from before thanked his boss for helping him in those days, but now he didn't need him anymore. After falling to the ground, the one who took the guy's life asked if Yingxia would like to know about his past, and taking off his mask, by the look on Yingxia's face, this was precisely Su Hei Chao, the supreme scum of society. Returning to the young protagonist's match, Sankian told his opponent that no matter how long he delayed, he was already predestined to lose, and the difference between them could not be leveled by those cheap tricks. The challenger told Sankian not to be so arrogant, as victory was not yet guaranteed, and people were surprised that he was actually able to beat the elder's apprentice. However, another told them not to worry,
story. Because looking at how calm the elder was, they certainly still had a trump card up their sleeve. The old man was just watching the match carefully, and suddenly Sankian received a phone call, and even he began to wonder how someone could send him a message just now. The message was a photo of Yingxia and her friend kidnapped, and our protagonist began to despair. After this message, the protagonist's performance in the game was clearly affected, and he wondered if it was the elder who had ordered them to kidnap Yingxia. The old man, on the other hand, didn't seem to mind the frightening look on the young protagonist's face at all, and finally Sankian said he needed to go to the bathroom. In the bathroom itself, he was on the phone, but apparently he couldn't get through to who he wanted, which was his wife, so he decided to call his mother-in-law, asking if Yingxia was at home. However, she said no, because she had arranged a dinner with her friend in Shen Lingyao, and after that, she went back to sleep as if nothing had happened. Sankian's game continued, and the situation had completely reversed, meaning that the protagonist was deliberately losing that game, and even Mr. Wang wondered what had happened to the protagonist. After that, Sankian had finally lost the competition, and the winner of that match was announced, and people said that the elder's apprentice was only making it easier for the protagonist. Yian asked why the protagonist had purposely missed the game, but he said that Yingxia and Yaoyao had been captured, leaving them both surprised by what had happened, and she was supposed to book the flight as soon as possible, as he was going back to Yuncheng. At the protagonist's nightclub, there were his henchmen waiting for him, and he asked if they had managed to find any news of his wife. Apparently, nothing has been discovered yet, and Mo Yang commented that they saw on the surveillance videos that they were taken by a car, and since then, they have lost track of the vehicle itself. The other guy, whose name I can't even remember anymore, said that they've already sent more than a thousand people to search during the night, but they still haven't found any clues. Sankian said to himself that if the elder was really behind this, he should have released Yingxia by now, and wondered why they hadn't heard from her until now. Finally, Sankian received a call from his beloved wife, and when he answered the phone, the person on the other end said they wanted a billion to be able to release Yingxia, and he accepted, but wanted to make sure she was safe now. As soon as Sankian heard something about Su Chao, he told the protagonist to get the money ready as soon as possible, and he would be in touch again very soon. Finally hanging up the phone, his henchmen asked what was going on, and out of the protagonist's anger, he squeezed his cell phone so hard that it broke, and told his servants that it was Su Chao, and they were supposed to find him for Sankian. Returning to the rest of the corpse, he told Yingxia that after they paid him a billion, the Su company would surely go bankrupt, and Yingxia said that for the company, a billion was only a small amount. Besides, even if he got the money, he wouldn't have the life to spend it, and he told her that even if Sankian helped her, she didn't need to exaggerate, because he would be no match for Hei Chao. But Yingxia only said that she hoped he wouldn't regret what he had just said, and he replied that it was only for her to wait, and she would see Sankian on his knees in front of him very soon. In the house of the insect we've just seen, we see the protagonist breaking into his home, and the father of the scum asks who did it. It was clearly the protagonist, who was dying to take the life of their son, and the same insect asked what the protagonist was doing. In reply, he was just wondering about Su Hei Chao's whereabouts, and he said that after Yingxia sat in the chair, the protagonist became even bolder, or something like that. Holding the scum by the collar, he still asked why the protagonist was still meddling in his family business, but he only asked once more where Su Hei Chao was, and the insect said that his son was certainly making money. Throwing him away, Sankian asked, making money, is there a ransom for kidnapping Yingxia? Kidnapping? How can you say such a thing? Asked the father of the supreme scum. I'll give you one last chance. If I find him, I'll prepare a coffin for him myself, until his wife finally decided to open her mouth, and said she had the location of his cell phone, and he could find it. In the Kincheng prison itself, we see the protagonist's brother having a hard time as usual, since he was worthless, until a guard showed up, saying that he had someone who had come to visit him. Leaving there, we see that this was precisely the grandfather of the two, and the grandfather asked if his grandson would like revenge, and the answer was clear, because Sankian ended up taking his grandmother's life, and he simply wished the worst for the protagonist. So his grandfather decided to help him in some way, and before he was released from that prison, he was going to find some chess pieces for him. In a different location, Sankian said that, according to the location of Su Hei Chao's cell phone, that place should be where he was, and completely breaking down the entrance door, the insect from before had already locked it so tightly that it couldn't even pass Wi-Fi. 
He asked how Sankian had managed to find him, and the useless woman was happy to see the protagonist. And the manure even had the audacity to say that he was warning the protagonist, but Sankian completely ignored him. With just one blow, he threw the insect away, and continued with his sequence of blows, causing it to lose even a few teeth. The protagonist ended up saying that he would deal with him later, and finally went to his wife's rescue. But she said that everything was fine, and knew that he would definitely go to her and save her. But he still apologized for not being able to protect her. Because of her uselessness so far and her lack of attitude towards acting like a real wife, I wouldn't even be with her yet if I were the protagonist of this story. The Aya was getting bored watching the two of them stand there clinging to each other, while she was still tied up, until Sankian told them to get out of there and rest first, as he had to dispose of some non-recyclable garbage that was there. Returning to his primary business, the rest of the wash challenged Sankian to take his life, and it wasn't long before he began to fulfill his wish. The young master said that he could insult him and even bully him, and Sankian would just treat the insect as if it really were one. But he should never have involved Yingxia in this. Now that he was seeing his life pass before his eyes, he told Sankian that taking lives was illegal, and he wasn't supposed to do anything he would regret in the future. Little did he know, however, that the only thing the protagonist would like right now is to see see this piece of insect dung completely erased from history and sent to the place where he really deserves to be, nine feet under. Chao wondered if Sankian was really going to take his life, but let's just say that someone ended up intervening, and dealt the protagonist a good blow, causing him to be thrown away. This was precisely the insect from before that helped the protagonist's brother, and the scum commented that they didn't expect the protagonist to still remember it. Clearly, Sankian would remember him, because just by touching his brother's toy, the mummy dung struck the protagonist a blow that broke his bone, and he had to walk on crutches for three months. He ordered the scum to go and beat up the protagonist, because as long as he was around, he would never try to do anything with the scum. Speaking of the scum, he was now motivated again, and grabbing a bottle that was nearby, he hit the protagonist, and the red juice began to flow rapidly. Sankian asked why that insect was helping a manure, and he had thought that the scum was with his twin brother. But he told Sankian that what he did or didn't do was none of the protagonist's business, and suddenly someone appeared saying that he had broken the rules by attacking Sankian. In this case, he no longer needed to keep his promise, and this was precisely the grandfather who had always been by the young protagonist's side, but the insect said that he wasn't the person who was hitting the protagonist. Since that was the case, Sankian could take his revenge as much as he liked, and if anyone dared to intervene, he would help the protagonist himself, and standing up this time, Dung said that he couldn't handle the protagonist, and the old man needed to help him, but soon he began to be beaten again, while the scum simply kept quiet, and as the insect's beating continued, he told Sankian that it was all his fault, and he should never have attacked him before. He was still offended and it wasn't for him to bother fighting with someone like him, and the old man from before asked the useless old man if he wasn't looking like someone useless they knew. He mentioned that Nangong Kyankyu only allowed himself to be influenced by the wrong people at that time, and the Dung told the Heichao insect to follow him, since it hasn't been killed yet. The protagonist's grandfather said that the insect was very fond of Nangong Kyankyu, but since the protagonist had caused her to take her own life, he would support the scum of society against the protagonist. But the protagonist told his grandfather not to worry, as the manure was no danger to him, and already in the hospital, Mo Yang was laughing at the protagonist for his situation saying that apparently they had entered the wrong room. He also asked if the nurse had confused the room, and if it wasn't him who was found inside the pyramid in Egypt a few days ago. If they had laughed enough, the protagonist asked them to help him think of a solution, and asked how he could hide it from Yingxia, as he wouldn't want to see her worrying about him. Mo Yang just said that if he didn't show up at home, it might make her even more worried, so she asked why he didn't just tell her the truth straight away. That's because in situations like this, honesty can be the best approach to avoid misunderstandings between the couple. However, Sankian said it was fine and they should go home, and they didn't need to pretend to be experts in feelings, and finally we see them leaving. When he received a call from his wife, he thought that what Mo Yang said really made total sense, and she immediately asked where he was, and why he hadn't returned home yet, until he said he was in hospital. 20 minutes later, there was the unusable young woman totally worried about Sankian, and she just said that the bandage was very tight, so apparently the injury must be serious, but he said it was no big deal, and he said it was a shame they'd missed the competition. Yingxia apologized to her husband, because if it hadn't been for her, he would never have lost, and he asked if there was compensation in this case, but the answer was clear, and there was nothing for him. 
However, she was his wife, so she asked him why he kept playing this game, and on hearing this, he asked her if this meant that he could exercise the rights of a real husband. Her answer was simply silence, and finally he took the plunge and kissed her of his own free will, since it took him 120 chapters just to be able to kiss his own wife. A message was left at the end of the morning, and apparently the author of the work left a letter thanking the public and informing them of the closure. In other words, we're still not going to see what happens to Yingxia's scumbag cousin and the protagonist's brother as well as other unfinished business. Do I recommend you see it? Definitely not. But it's a good thing I've brought you the summary, so you can avoid even greater frustration by following such a poorly finished work. Anyway, it's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you here with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best, and see you next time.